Right, hello and welcome back to another episode of Diplo Strats. I'm here once again with Ezio. Hey Ezio. Howdy, howdy. And today we're going to be covering a tournament we don't usually cover, um, although it is a very prestigious tournament. The reason for that, this is called the DBNI, the Diplomacy Broadcast Network Invitational. And as you may have gathered from the title, it's run by our friends over at the Diplomacy Broadcast Network. And they do tons of coverage for this. You can go over there and find, I think, like at least 20 hours of content for this particular uh, tournament. <laughs> and they've been over this board extensively. Um, so usually we just leave it to them to do and, you know, look at other tournaments ourselves. In this case, I saw this game while it was play being played and I was just like... This game is so good, we need to cover it on our channel as well. <laughs> so I reached out to them and asked them if they were good for us to cover it here, and uh, they were. So here we go. And this is the official DBN board. They were happy for us to use it. Um, we'll probably be going back to Backstabber next time. But for now, you can see the little advantage to it here. We can hover over any particular unit, and it will show you what order they put in. Which is very cool indeed. <laughs> Uh, this tournament, the way the DBNI works is basically DBN gathers up a list of everyone who played Diplomacy in any kind of tournament in the previous year. Um, they rank them all based on their performance across all of those tournaments. And if you're in the top 30 or so in that list, I think it's top 28 actually, they invite you to the DBNI. And then this year, the way the DBNI worked was all of the qualifying rounds, uh, only one person advanced from each of them, the person who topped that board. And that created a super interesting dynamic, because in these tournaments, usually you have people working together in the qualifying rounds and getting each other onto the top board. And in this one, they could not do that because only one person progressed from each board. So it was super cool, and it led to this incredibly competitive final with some incredibly good players. Uh, so, super excited to cover this. Um, as you can see on the right, these are the players, uh, and they are listed in order of what uh, of their country selections even. So, Riaz picked France first, Gnome picked England, and so on and so forth. As is usual in the Paris method, the player at the bottom of the list wins the tiebreak against anyone above them. So if this goes to the full time, which is 1916 uh, in this tournament, and say Nikola is tied with someone, Nikola in Austria, because he picked his country last, he will win the game. Uh, I think that's basically everything I have to cover as a, an intro bit. So Ezio, do you see anything interesting on this board? Uh, the only thing that I would say is interesting about this board is that it is absolutely perfectly standard. <laughs> Uh, all of these moves, I mean, normally on each board there's like one move that raises your eyebrows, but at this point I think these are all incredibly common openings. Like, yeah. Yes, I think that's very reasonable. The the uh, England opening is definitely the most common, same with the Russian. Uh, Turkish, they're holding in Smyrna, which is a little bit different to the usual, um, but it's actually quite common now, especially at high level. Right. Yeah. Because if you move That's to Constantinople, you block your fleet in. Uh, do you prefer this opening, or do you prefer uh, moving to Con with the army? This is the one that I'm using in almost all of my games nowadays. Right. Because you're not expecting to get into Bulgaria uh, with the second army? Yeah. Um, I expect Bulgaria to be bouncing. Um, I, it's Even if Russia or Austria offers support against the other. It rarely happens so quickly. Um, and Austria loves to fake support to support you in Romania, so you don't actually get there. Um, I just... I value getting my fleet out of Ankara. I've lost a lot of games by attacking Russia early, and so I just figure this is more committal but just more efficient. And since I work with Russia such a high percentage of the time anyways... It's just better to commit and have that alliance be, be effective. Yep. I I completely agree. I think I've had a lot more success with this opening than with opening the army to Constantinople as well. Um, and yeah, this, this opening is basically standard at high level now. Um, the only other thing I see that is maybe a little bit unusual is Marseille and Paris to Burgundy and Picardy. 
which actually isn't yep. that unusual, but it is. It, it means you can't claim both the Iberian senses in O one, right? Which is something you would usually want to do. Yeah, I think this might be the only opening that's not like the literal most popular for the respective country. Um, I think it's more common to do something like supporting Paris and the Burgundy, but this is still very common, very like top three, whatever. Yes, and it gives you a lot of pressure on uh, Belgium, which, I, uh, I mean, I suppose that's a good thing. Um, you are probably just going to get it conceded to you, right? I mean, yeah, when England when, when, when England does this opening, right, like, technically, England and Germany can work together, but, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I expect... Expect for him to get Belgium here, yes. Yeah, and hey, even if you, uh, even if England and Germany did collaborate to deny you Belgium, Germany does have to take the guess on whether to actually go with that or defend Munich because you're in Burgundy as well. Um, so yep. it would be a tough choice for them to actually deny you it. Uh, I think... Yeah, and then Germany like for goes Holland to just be hyper hyper annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... That would be amusing. But yes, yeah, uh, so very little unusual to talk about on this uh, this spring 1901. Is there anything you want to talk about here, or shall we just move straight on to the fall? Let's start seeing where things are going to go. Alright, fall 1901. And we do actually see that <laughs> the French try and make a cheeky snipe at Munich uh, here. And thankfully for Germany, they managed to deny it. But of course, France manages to get Belgium anyway, because there's no one opposing that. Uh, I do see a few <laughs> more unusual moves here. Well, one particularly unusual move, but I'll <laughs> leave it to you to choose what to talk about first. Um, yeah, I mean, the big one, I think, is Turkey just taking the Black Sea now. That is a very uh, big one. That wasn't actually what I was looking at, but yes, that is huge. Usually in these high-level games, you see them bouncing forever or just at least making an agreement for neither of them to go there, right? Yeah, and frequently Smyrna holds in the spring in order to open up Khan for Ankh to move into Khan in the fall into the Aegean next turn. So you normally you'd see the rotation, right? Smyrna to Ankh, Ankh to Khan, build a fleet and then get their fleets out pretty quickly into the med, but instead um, Turkey has sort of um, consolidated with the previous opening and now is in the Black Sea and Khan, so you might see some some tensions there. Yeah, it, and it seems, I think it's quite likely that Russia thought that they were going to push the fleet out, although they did uh, well, I'm not 100%. So Bulgaria went to Romania, right? Which echoes back to what you said earlier about Austria often uh, offering support that doesn't happen. <laughs> right? It seems quite likely that they may have done that here, given what's gone on. Uh, yes. Yeah. And Russia manages to counter the move by, to, by supporting themselves in, so manages to take the center here, but they've done it at the cost of Black Sea, which is a pretty big cost unless they manage to get Austria on the side. Yeah, it's a pretty significant cost. Thankfully for Russia, they did this while getting two builds. So Brand has can build in St. Pete and Moscow after capturing Sweden, which is important in positions like this, obviously. Yes. It, this would be a much worse position if they if uh, Russia had been bounced out of Sweden here. <laughs> Although yes. it's still a, an awkward position in the north just because of what's just happened with North Sea, right? Yes, I think that was the interesting move you were wanting to point out. That was indeed. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Um, I like it. I think it's... I, I, I like the strategy. Um, it works pretty well, pretty frequently. Um, very occasionally, you can get punished. I, this is not an opening that I advertise that I am doing to anyone. Right here, I keep these cards close to my vest. Um... And I, I don't say it, what's going on, because if Germany knows you are making this move, then I'm terrified of Germany coordinating with France, and I'm just dead. 
Yes. Because if Germany moves into the host seat, your game is just over. Um, and so I don't. I but I love it if you can do this and have the North Sea remain vacant, because you build a fleet and the North Sea is still safe. Right? No one can take it from you. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, England would definitely have preferred Sweden to get bounced in this scenario, <laughs> um, just because that that uh, build in Saint Petersburg could end up being annoying. But it it's still it's an excellent position to be advanced this far forward. It's just a huge risk at the same time if Germany does go for it. But of course, they didn't here. Um, very interesting thing to note here. The guy playing England, Noam Brown, is one of the researchers who created the Cicero bot um, that we've talked about quite a few times on this channel. And actually, the tournament Cicero won, it used this exact opening. So he did mention to me before this game, he was thinking of copying Cicero's approach to the game and seeing how well it worked like against top players so i think this was his uh, attempt at doing that just going hyper aggressive with the move into skagorek you know if he used cicero's approach in the qualifying rounds that got him here uh i don't think he did i think he saved it for the top board um or at least this Ooh. specific uh opening configuration Nice. But yeah. All right. Um, as we're continuing rotating clockwise or counterclockwise around the board, uh, we mentioned the bounce in Munich at the start, but France is just doing standard stuff, capturing Belgium and Portugal, not Spain. Um, I like it, obviously, if using the fleet to capture Spain, you want it to capture... If using your fleet to capture both, you want to capture Portugal first and then Spain, because Spain is better. Yes. I just noticed they don't... The site doesn't list the discrete coasts of Spain separately on the map. That is true, but Spain does have two coasts here. The uh, the downside to being on the north coast is so big that no one ever goes there, right? <laughs> um, unless they're forced to. Uh, the south coast of Spain is far better because it can reach anywhere except uh, Gascony that the north coast can reach. Um, plus a bunch more, Marseille, Gulf of Lyon, uh, western Mediterranean. Um, yes. So yeah, it all the other uh, provinces with coasts here. Uh, in case you've forgotten, or well, not you specifically, but viewers have forgotten. Bulgaria has two coasts: one on the Black Sea and one on the Aegean. And Saint Petersburg has two coasts: one on Barents and one on Bothnia. Um, but yeah, so uh, France takes Portugal first. Smart move. They can slide it along into Spain uh, south coast next turn and then have their fleet in a very flexible position. We've talked about it before. Spain has a great position to just sit and wait and then go in whichever direction you want to go. Not quite as good as sitting in middle Atlantic Ocean, but it, it's not quite as scary for your allies as, uh, as sitting in middle Atlantic Ocean is. Yeah, and it's also a dot. Yes, that's absolutely true. <laughs> uh, the only country we haven't really covered here, I think, is Italy. Um, do you want to talk about what they've done here? I mean, they took Trieste. That's pretty sweet. They absolutely did. They have walked into Trieste behind the Austrian. It should be noted that this is sometimes agreed, and sometimes it's just done. Um, I have a feeling in this instance, uh, given I, I know Nicola uh, a little, that this is probably not agreed. Um, Nicola is the kind of player who would bounce that. Um, especially if Brandon is not doing anything immediately in return. Because usually if you're taking Trieste, you would send Ionian into a GN or something similar to just get the advantage instead of just claiming a second supply center. Um, <laughs> but Brandon certainly made a move here to put himself towards the top of the table. Yeah. Um... We'll see if this works out. It, this generally works better if Turkey and Russia are at war, which might be the case here, um, because that way you have time to fight Austria and then consolidate that position and then be okay. Whereas if it's a juggernaut, they're going to gain much more from Austria than you will. So this might be a perfect timing for this attack to work. Yep. I mean, yeah, it's not very often you see 
the uh, the Turkish Russian aggression towards one another right at the start of a uh, of a top level game. Um, at least in these kind of tournaments, people tend to be a bit less committal right off the bat. That is something to note about this board, right? Spring was incredibly standard. Fall has been incredibly aggressive with this Burgundy attacking Munich, North Sea into Skagerrak, you know, Bulgaria going for Romania and, and Ankara managing to, to take the Black Sea, Venice in Trieste. <laughs> Everyone is just going for it right out of the gate. It's very yeah, fun. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to get a, a huge advantage early. Yes. Want to see builds? Yeah, let's go ahead to the builds of 1901. Uh, right, so we've got double army from uh, Chris Brand. I think that's very smart. <laughs> it's uh, quite useful to to have the flexibility there. Um, are there any builds that like stand out to you immediately? Uh, fleet Rome. Yes. So double fleet from Italy. That's very much a conciliatory build, I guess. Something saying to the Austrian, "Look, I took Trieste, but it's not." Anything against you is just something that I needed to do to to put more fleets on the board. Yeah, and it maybe even was agreed between Italy and Austria to say, yeah, I'll give you, um, you give me Trieste, I'll build two fleets, I can't attack you with them, let's be okay. Yeah, that's very possible. And it, it's possible that fleet will need to be used early because uh, Fleet Marseille is also on the board. That's a weird one. Um... It's a little bit weird, but also Portugal, the Mid-Atlantic Ocean, Marseille to Spain. Fleet Marseille is, is such an anti-English build, honestly. <laughs> like, <laughs> it looks so anti-Turkish, but I see it used against England, or sorry, anti-Italian, but I see it used against England more often. I'm serious. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I get that. That, <laughs> that is absolutely... I mean, those are probably the moves I would make, right? Portugal to Mid-Atlantic right? Ocean, Marseille to Spain. And, and then like... just Mid-Atlantic Ocean to Irish she... Spain to Port Spain to Mid Atlantic and England's cooked. Like, yep. <laughs> Fleet Marseille is always anti England, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I mean Fleet Brest is uh, is arguably more anti English, right? Arguably like... more, but honestly, this is where I'm I just love sending Brest to the Mid Atlantic Ocean and then into into the Western Matter North Africa because it's just so fast and it looks so not aggressive. Right, and so you you can just surprise people all the time with this nonsense. Yeah, I'm Crazy. actually super interested in whether if you took like the statistics from all the high level games, is it more often that it gets built on the in the center furthest away from the person the per, the player wants to attack? So Fleet Marseille would more often go up against England, and Fleet Brest would more often go against uh, Italy. <laughs> I, honestly, in high level games, I bet that's true. <laughs> Well, it's a very fun one. Um, probably not so fun for England if that does happen. Uh, and yeah, and again, because England is so committed, right, to the east, if England doesn't get a build this this year, uh, I'd be really scared. Yes, I mean, as England, I would be much more scared if they had built um, fleet breasts because you can't really bounce English Channel here, right, with the, your fleet in Skagerrak. Um, um, I would use Fleet Norwegian to bounce North Sea. Oh yeah, to come down to North and then London bounces English Channel. Yeah, that would work. And you can then support hold Norway with the uh, Skagerrak, I guess. It's... Yeah, I mean, yeah, you kind of have to. That doesn't. I wouldn't necessarily expect that to work. Yeah, um, but... actually, maybe Skagerrak into Sweden would be better. Um, yes, much. Yeah, much better. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm very worried in this position for England, um, even with the, f <laughs> the Southern Fleet build. I mean, more so with the Southern Fleet build now that I've talked through it with you, because now I've got in the mindset that that is definitely going north. Feels that way, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, maybe the saving grace for England here is going to be that second Italian fleet, because the second fleet in Rome feels like it's going in a Tyrrhenian Sea, 100%. And a fleet Tyrrhenian Sea is more annoying for France than a fleet than than not that fleet. Yes. Um, and so perhaps France is going to feel obligated to leave an extra fleet on the defensive in the south. Um, but maybe they're just going to leave an army in Gascony. and hope that army can hold down the fort. Yeah, I mean, I I guess we'll see. I 
Other uh, interesting build, Fleet Smyrna means that Turkey isn't dedicating entirely against Russia, which I think is smart here, right? <laughs> Especially with yep. Italy getting so many builds, you do not want to leave the uh, the Mediterranean open. Um, yeah, if there was no fleet defending the Eastern Med and Aegean, then I think Turkey would be dead in, in a few years, um, because Italy would just flood. Yes. And uh, I guess Fleet Kiel is the other one, but you, you kind of expect that, right? Germany could have built Fleet Berlin to like signal that they were very pro-English, but there's no reason to, really. They can go whichever way they like. Um... Yes. Right, shall we go ahead to the spring? Yep. Alright, spring 1902. And, uh, well, the French are doing exactly what you uh, remarked, but it looks like the Italians may have something to say about their plans moving into Tuscany and Tyrrhenian. So this is very, very uh, anti-French right here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Poor France. I mean, I wonder oh, if I want to that... kill him. I wonder if that was triggered by, like, the Italian response was triggered by Fleet Marseille, um, being built there. I think, I don't know, again, I, if I'm Italy, I'm so unconcerned by this. Here, I would just, I'm looking at the, the strategic board position here, and I'm concerned that if France gets the jump on England like this, France might just be too strong. That and then I don't, right... France might just be a board top for sure at that point, um, which is crazy to say in O2, but hey, that's how it goes sometimes. France is busted. Yes. I mean, this, is, so why, maybe... <laughs> this is why France yeah. gets selected first all the time, right? Yeah, and so maybe this was um, Brendan's reaction to seeing how strong this potential attack on England is, and he's saying, no, actually, you can't make this attack. I'm going to force you to stay back and... We'll see how the East goes. Maybe I get something from you. Maybe, whatever, whatever. But I would, I would think this is honestly more proactive rather than reacting to the build in in Marseille. That makes sense. Yeah. So he he's possibly going to see. I don't think he's actually going to gain anything if he goes against France. It will just be a, you know, I'm going to stall you for a while. Um, because you're only really going to gain anything if England and Germany work together here, and then not. If you look at what's happening in the north, Germany has just supported Sweden into Skagerrak and has moved uh, uh, Kiel into Heligoland Bight. So very anti-English moves right there. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's also this is simultaneous with Germany messing with France. Um, so it looks like just all three of them aren't exactly friends at the moment. Yeah. And the way that the tactics tend to work out in the south, if you can get into Western Med, Leon, and Piedmont, usually by convoying um, Tunis up there, you just need someone to tap Burgundy, usually, and you have um, you have guesses with Gascony over Spain and Marseille. And so if that continues happening, which we have absolutely no guarantees, then maybe Italy can get into a powerful position but also, France can just keep bouncing, go fully on the Western Med forever. And so. Yeah. yeah so that... I, I should also say, when you say none of them are on the same page in the North, we have just kind of leapt to the assumption that France was going to attack England. It is possible that those two are allied. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, but not really. <laughs> Por Portugal to Middle Atlantic Ocean does kind of say that France was at least considering jumping into North Atlantic Ocean here or into Irish Sea. Um, exactly. It was a consideration. And if France had the free space at this top board, I, I, I guarantee that, that there was going to be a stab coming, if not this year. Since we can see that England's not going to get an extra build, he could probably just wait an extra an extra year and then still make the even more punishing stab. Yeah. This is definitely true. In the north, right, I mean... Even build a... Yeah. Sorry, carry on. I was just trying to say, like, you can even make the most pro-England build possible, build Army Marseille, 
but you still just move Marseille into Gascony and then convoy it. And then <laughs> it's just quick. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so England did manage to get into Sweden as a result of these moves up here, but it, it seems like that unit is about to be blown up, um, given the... Well, it's a weird tactical position, right? Because you have three enemy units around Sweden now. You've got uh, the Russian units in Finland and Skagerrak, and the German units in Denmark. But you have Fleet Norway, which can't really support Sweden because it's always going to be cut by St. Petersburg. Um, you have the army in Sweden itself, but you also have uh, North Sea to tap things. And Yes, yeah, so if because there's a fleet in Norway... If Russia wants to guarantee the capture of Sweden um, and an army in Sweden, then Russia can use Finland to support Skagerrak into Sweden while St. Petersburg cuts Norway. And because of the way this works out, right, the fleet in Norway can't cut Finland and the army in Sweden can't attack into Skagerrak with support from the North Sea. Yes. Because it's just, there is actually no guesswork here, because fleets and armies don't quite interact in a useful way in this specific situation. And so you don't even need to use Denmark. And so I think it's likely that Denmark and Helgoland are going to be used to mess with the North Sea. I don't expect them to get anywhere with it, but I think they're going to try. Yeah, that makes sense. And the, uh, <laughs> even worse than that, if England does try to protect Sweden by uh, tapping Skagerrak here out of Norway... Um, they could end up losing both Norway and Sweden at the same time because of the St. Petersburg tap on uh, on Norway and Skagerrak potentially going into Sweden. Oh, that would be um, so brutal! <laughs> with the guaranteed moveset! Oh, man! Yeah. So I have a feeling they're not going to go for that if they <laughs> thought about it for a bit. Um, but man, it's just a painful position all around for England then. You're just looking at this and thinking, okay, well, I can keep the North Sea, I guess, but that's not the position you want to be in. No, the saving grace is, is one that there's these Italian fleets in the west, so France probably can't kill you immediately, and two, that Russia has armies running around and not two fleets in the north. But other than that, it's kind of worst case. Yeah, the other thing is, if I'm uh, really in a really bad spot as England, um, I tend to like to put my army back in in my uh, homeland, just because it's quite useful defensively. It's difficult for a, f a bunch of fleets to like get the advantage over a side that has an army on there. Um, but the way this has worked out, there is no way that English army is ever getting back. Uh, actually, I guess they're going to get a rebuild, right? Because if the um because they'll hang on to norway most likely and keep their home three so never mind scratch what i said <laughs> they could build yeah, an army frankly, i would still rather turn that army into a fleet really um, yes i'd oh, rather yeah. have a fleet like in liverpool this is actually a good point in that my uh mindset in diplomacy is usually wired in towards I need to survive this position, I'm gonna look for the best way for me to survive this when I'm on the back foot. I think in a game like this you kind of have to look at you know, <laughs> I might have to make the more risky move and not be as defensive just so that I can get back into the game, right? Um, yep. Which a fleet I mean, absolutely yeah, is. Yeah, having an army stuck on the English mainland feels tough to manage um, but having, having an extra fleet, like I don't, know. I don't know. I feel good about it, but we'll see. Want to talk about the South? Yes. Uh, so, the, the South, we've talked about Italy plenty, so we're just looking at this area in the South now. Um, Russia gets into Galicia, and clearly Russia and Turkey are back on the same page again, to some extent, right? Yeah. Uh, and Italy is, is throwing support holds on Serbia, so I guess they've been friends as well. Or potentially were friends all along. Um, good move by Turkey to cut Greece here, but it's kind of an awkward position because they're going to have to guess right continuously. What do you mean by that? Uh, in that Smyrna is going to have to protect one of Aegean or Eastern Mediterranean every turn, right? Um, yeah. And then Bulgaria, if Greece is trying to support uh, Ionian to Aegean, Bulgaria has to tap Greece. Oh, actually, they're not 
they're not guessing on whether Bulgaria is attacking, right? Because they've got the Black Sea and Kong coming in from behind. <laughs> My brain is frazzled. It's a hot day here. Um, but yeah. Sounds good. Uh, the only guess then for Turkey is whether Italy is coming in to Eastern Mediterranean or whether they're coming to Aegean Sea. And actually, it's yeah. not horrendous for you to just let them into Eastern Mediterranean in this instance if they are going anti-France. Because at least they can't convoy over to Syria. Uh, they yes, would need to back go back fill into Ionian. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the the side that gained this turn was actually Russia Turkey and that they got into Galicia. Which is Yeah, I something. think Russia's position is the most improved on this board oh. based from this specific phase. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's uh <laughs> both right. in the north and the south actually, the the whole uh moving into Finland and Saint Petersburg I think is excellent here. Uh just trying to gain as much as possible on both sides and take advantage of that temporary English weakness, or potentially permanent English weakness, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. You wanna go to the fall? See how yeah. things shake out? Let's go ahead to full 1902. Right, so we do see that English army getting blown up, um, as expected, and uh, thankfully for uh, <laughs> England, they did not try and go Norway to Skagerrak to cut, they just used Norway to support um, down into North Sea, which is actually a curious set of moves here. Nothing worked here, um, but that could have been really problematic if Germany had actually made it out into North. But then they would have had to leave Denmark, so that's... <laughs> yeah. But it looks like France is helping England against the German, at least to some extent, um, attempting to support down into Holland here uh, from the North Sea. Do you think that's the correct move for them? It's just tough, it's tough. I'm really going to be particularly opposed to an EF in the first couple turns of the game when Italy is being as annoying as Italy is. Um, by the way, I love getting the Italian army out of Tunis like this. I think this is just perfectly timed for Italy to make this convoy back. I love this move. You don't think it would have been better for them to take uh, Western Mediterranean here? No, I don't think so. Um, I think that that is too committal and it leaves your army stuck in Tunis, where it can never do anything useful, right? The only thing it's going to be used for is to maybe get convoyed into Spain or something, and that's going to suck. But by getting it into Rome this turn, yes, you give up the, the position of getting into Western Med, but your army in Rome can start marching back into Venice, and it's, it's a year away from Tyrolia, which everyone knows is one of the most important territories in the board. I, I love being in Tyrolia. And maybe you want to move it into Piedmont instead, and you can get your pressure that way while your fleets can continue bouncing two to two with France. No, I, I really like this move, this convoy right now. I love it. Yes, I think it has. It's worked out super well. If you also, if you still do want to Lepanto with it or anything like that, you can just move straight back to Apulia. It's it's uh, it's a very flexible position here, and it is not a flexible position when it's in Tunisia. Um, well, Tunis. <laughs> Uh, so yes, excellent time move um, on that front. Unfortunately, like basically nothing else on the board moved. Did anything else on the board move? No, I guess Galicia back to Ukraine. Yes. Okay, and that is actually hugely important because it represents a shift in the dynamics over here. Uh, Russia deciding to protect themselves and try and let Austria else the Italian, I guess, um, from Trieste. As Austria in this position, do you oust the Italian? Nope. Nope. Even with the uh, Tunis coming back to Rome? Uh, I do not. I do think Tunis coming back to Rome actually makes it less likely that I oust the Italian. Because uh, there's, there's less for me to gain and more potential opposition. That makes sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I guess the risk is just that 
Russia and Turkey keep coming and you get crushed, right? Yes. If, yeah. I, if I take a turn to take Tunis and then Italy says, okay, that wasn't very nice of you. I'm going to disband my fleet in Tuscany. I'm going to be supporting Venice. And then, I don't know, maybe I move Ionia into Adriatic. And then and then what do you what do? You do? Like, yep, then you're done. <laughs> so... Um, but Austria here was clearly convinced, at least to some extent, because they did tap Trieste. Um, they didn't attack Trieste, as in they didn't support uh, themselves in, which is a curious um, set of things. I guess they were too worried about the risk of the Russian coming in? I think these moves were actually still pretty defensive. Um, because... So by by double tapping Romania, um, it means that Romania can't support Galicia into Budapest, right? So there's no risk of losing that. Um, and by having Vienna tap Trieste, it means that even if Galicia supports Trieste into Budapest, you still take Trieste. So you're not down a center. These these moves have a little bit of a risk associated with um, Galicia supporting. Trieste into Vienna, or, um, or what? Uh, is it just that? It uh, might just be that. I guess Romania being supported into Serbia by Bulgaria is also. Uh... Romania, yeah, but that's but that's always because you cut Trieste. That is a, that is a risk. Yeah, sure, that's true. Yeah, but it's like you can't defend against everything, especially in a position like this, right? <laughs> yeah, and like, I just think that it's more likely that you would convince Tur Italy to turn on Austria by supporting them into a center, rather than asking them to support to break Austria. And that so I think makes sense. I'd be more worried about Trieste being the conquering unit. Yep, and this way if Trieste does manage, even if Trieste manages to get anywhere, you're still uh, good. You could take something behind them. Yes. But yeah, uh, so that is, it's interesting movesets uh, by the Austrian, but yes, not necessarily anti-Italian, just very defensive. Um, and of course, Italy is still doing all the things that are pro-Austrian, they're still going into Adrian and support holding Serbia and yes. all that. So. And what's nice for Italy, right, is that Italy's position is going to be improving as this army in Rome starts to get back to a real center. Yes. Um, Even without so, gaining uh, centers themselves, they are getting a better... Yeah. Their army is getting into a better position, which is... It's like, the army in Tunis doesn't do anything, right? And so having an... It's kind of like building an army, slowly. Yeah. <laughs> Quotation marks around <laughs> building an army. Kind of. It's an interesting one. Uh, I did want to, I just noticed, yeah, this move, uh, Mid-Atlantic Ocean to Spain South Coast, that was definitely deliberate, I want to stay in Mid-Atlantic Ocean, right? Because um, um, otherwise you go to I Western Med. Yeah, well, there's, there's also the risk that Italy doesn't move into Gulf of Leon. Oh, and you don't get the sense of build. Yeah. Um... You Seems to... pretty likely, I gotta say, that Tuscany's moving into Gulf of Leon, but... Yeah, yeah. no, it's it's fair on that front. Um, I do think it's very possible that France and Italy kind of made an agreement, hey, neither of us go to Western Mediterranean this turn. Uh, yeah, and there might be something here where they can actually demilitarize this whole thing. Um, if France builds not Fleet Marseille, probably or Fleet Brest either, um, then there's a chance that the two of them can can call it off. Um, Italy can try to get more armies into the east, and France can go and stab England. Like, if I'm France, I'm negotiating so hard to try to make everything, to try to make peace right now, so I can actually hit England, who's going to have one fleet to defend. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure that that's in Italy's interest to accept. <laughs> I mean, look at that sneaky little move to Gascony here. 
Um, obviously it's kind of required because you might end up needing to defend Marseille with that unit, but I think it's also very much in the mind of, oh, uh, this might be able to get convoyed up to Liverpool in the near future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gascony is just more defensive than Paris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it just yeah. it's a more important defensive position. I can support hold Marseille. I promise. That's why I'm at Gascony. One hundred percent. Um, the, it does leave Belgium a little bit uh, in a little bit of a bad spot, right? Because you can yes. have Munich get cut and then just get pushed out of Belgium entirely. But France is very rarely like dependent on keeping Belgium. You can retreat from there if you get pushed out, and like worst case, you have to take a unit off, and then you go and stab England for Liverpool anyway and start growing again. <laughs> Yeah, and you just have Picardy support hold Burgundy and Gascony support hold Burgundy, and then your line is still solid. Yes. Um, you get a little tight for units if you're only on five units and you need to be supporting Burgundy with everything. Can't usually convoy up to England as well. Um, but, I mean, you sometimes still can. Yeah, it makes sense. And I mean, these uh, these German moves here indicate that Germany wasn't anti France here, right? They were just tapping everything to make sure nothing happened. Um, yeah, I think this was like if something weird happens, you want to make sure that you get into um, Belgium, right? If if Germany tries to do something crazy, or so, excuse me, if France tries to do something crazy, Germany is okay. But I don't think this isn't. Germany wasn't attacking with support, so as long as Belgium wasn't moving, Germany was never getting into Belgium. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's more or less everything. Uh, anything else you want to talk about this phase? Not really. Alright, let's go ahead to Winter 1902. We've only got two builds on the board. Um, that English rebuild from <laughs> Sweden getting disbanded, and that French build uh, from taking Spain. What are your thoughts on the two builds on the opposite sides of the channel? I kind of feel they're going to bounce in the channel. Seems quite likely, eh? Oh god, uh, England is... Oh god. <laughs> god, England, no. This does look like a very painful position for England to be in. Um... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Again, so here if I'm Italy, right, I'm absolutely accepting whatever deal England says, and I'm just flowing into Leon and Western Med. Just because England is going to collapse completely otherwise? It feels like England's about to collapse, and I want to maybe get Marseille. Or Spain. Yep. Oh, God. Alright, so I'm assuming this is a power ranking stern. I am assuming England is uh, firmly at the bottom of this. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, I would. England is the power that I would want to be the least on the board, for sure. Yeah. I agree completely. I actually, uh, I played in a DBNI final, um, like three years ago. <laughs> I drew England and I had a very similar opening to this. Uh, not, not because I went into Skagerrak, it was because I, actually it was because I went into Mill Arctic Ocean, I think. Um, and then just got crushed by my three neighbours completely. <laughs> uh, so I would certainly not want to pick up this position. Um, who is uh, your favourite on this board right now? Russia. Do you want to give some reasons for that? Um, you have a solid ally in the south, and that Turkey's not going to be killing you anytime soon. Um, just you've done normal stuff for a juggernaut. No reason for there to be any um, amity there. Um, Austria's not attacking you. Germany's not attacking you. England might be attacking you, but can't really. Um, you have six units. You have tons of pressure on Norway at the moment, and based on how much pressure England might be under, slash, at the North Sea, you might just be taking Norway, and if Russia has Scandinavia, and no pressure from the South, I think Russia's in a great early game. That's just the dream. Yes. Uh, yeah, I can agree with that completely. Just, in general, if you have a really strong North, uh, uh it doesn't even need to be really strong. If you have a, a good northern position and you haven't lost anything in the south as Russia, I think you have a pretty good case for being number one on a board like this, on a top board. Um, yeah, and also just more high level, right? There's no enemy. 
Yes. Except maybe Austria, but even then they can't really advance, right? They're more going to advance against Turkey. It's possible um, to see Austria, but Austria didn't even attack last year. This is Austria true. was just doing defensive tapping stuff, so... Yep. Um, right, so who would you put in second? France? That was who I was looking at as well. It's like, it's... because they are France. France! <laughs> Uh, this should be on the bingo card for Diplo Strats episode. France is near the top of the power rankings because they're France. <laughs> and no other reason. Well, in this case, there is another reason in that they can move against England potentially, right? And gain stuff. But they are facing pressure from the Italian. The reason, yeah, exactly. It's why I'm much less certain about France being busted this time. Right? Like, if, if you just move. Italy's fleets to the east one move, right? Ionian to Eastern Med, Tyrrhenian to Ionian, and Tuscany to Tyrrhenian, then I would put France first by a lot. Yeah. This position is just frustrating enough, and Germany's got enough pressure that it's... I, I'm not sure that France can actually convoy up into Italy safely. Into England. I'm not yeah. even convinced they can convince they can commit Mid Atlantic Ocean up safely. They might have to go like Mid Atlantic to North Atlantic or Irish, and then Brest to Mid Atlantic, and then have to do a guess around the South no. slash Belgium. And I have a feeling that if France gains too much from England, Germany might take the opportunity to snag Belgium and crush. And so, I think France is in this awkward position where yes france has an opportunity to stab but i like i'm not sure that france can actually execute on the stabbing position that exists on the board at the moment if that makes any sense yeah that makes sense and that's why they're in second behind Russia, and like it's an uneasy second right <laughs> um i feel yeah. like i would probably put italy third would that be your assessment here too um, Italy is solid. I like I like thinking about it. I'm actually tempted to say Germany as my third, because of all of this uneasy tension between England and France. I don't see anyone who stands to potentially mess with Germany. That makes sense. I I can see that. Um, where do I think you... Italy is similar? In where do that, you right? see like... Germany's gains like? Um, Belgium is the most natural, and if there is chaos in the north with England collapsing, I think Germany might stand to gain something in Scandinavia, either Sweden or London or Norway, perhaps, with two fleets bordering the North Sea. Furthermore, England might be desperate for an ally and might be willing to support Germany against Russia in the short term and against, and against France. And so England might be willing to take a subservient role in order to give Germany more. And you might be able to exploit that. Yeah, I can see that. So we'll put Germany in third place then. And then I guess Italy has to be in fourth uh, there, right? Yeah, I mean, I might put Turkey over Italy because I know how to play Turkey and I don't know how to play Italy. But <laughs> I, I, think, I think everyone who's not me would rather be Italy here, so... I mean, Turkey is in the Black Sea, which is a pretty huge advantage over the position Turkey usually has at this point, which is Bulgaria plus homeland. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Turkey but is Turkey one still of those sucks. Country. Well, yeah. So Turkey is an interesting country in this, right? Because in a, in a top board game, Turkey is really naturally strong, but it's hard to see whether they'll come to that especially in a 1916 game because even if turkey is beaten back at the start turkey is one of the powers that can just explode the moment that people stop focusing on them um, yeah but also it's a top board game and, and no one's gonna let turkey out of the box so yeah <laughs> okay so uh, i'm gonna make the executive decision that uh, italy is in fourth and turkey is in fifth but they're kind of interchangeable there then um yep Yep, and then Austria 6th by process of elimination. Yep. Alright, so these are our 1902 power rankings. 
let's go ahead to spring 1903. All right, so the first thing I see is it's an unhappy day for England. <laughs> I mean, look, we, we all saw this coming. Yep. Um, they do manage to bounce a good deal of, like, everything, right? They only lose Norway and nothing else. Um, yes. The French fleets don't even make progress anywhere. Uh, but there is one major thing that has just made England's life a whole lot harder, and that is Tyrrhenian Sea to Ionian Sea, I think. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Yeah, it's not not exactly happy times. Plus, right, England's gonna have to disband this year, so they're not gonna lose the North Sea this turn probably. But next turn, they're gonna lose something, and it's it's gonna be tough. So, yeah, what's really sad to see from the English perspective as well is France supported England to Holland last turn, right? So they were making aggressive moves against Germany. You would hope that Germany would make an aggressive move against France in return, but nope. Uh, Germany is just making these defensive cuts as well. No support being added, so they're not going to get into uh, Belgium, even though they could very easily secure it. Um, so it looks like everyone in the north is just playing to take out England right now. Just really sad for them. <laughs> Poor England. Yep. And no one in the south is playing for England's survival either, uh, now that Italy has turned around. I'm not sure I like this from Italy. Especially, they lost Trieste at the same time, right? Well, it's not lost yet, but they walked into I mean, Trieste. Yeah. Yeah. It's just upsetting. <laughs> um, I expect to see this convoy from Albania into Syria, though. Yeah. So I think Italy's pretty okay with this. Uh, oh, yes. Okay, I didn't even look at that possibility. I was like, uh, it's really unfortunate that Italy has gotten into Ionian and Eastern Med and isn't ready to uh, Lepanto. But actually they are with the Albania uh, army. It's an interesting one. Um, yeah, not the most common convoy into Syria, but still works. Of course, the downside with this is if uh, Austria just stays in Trieste, Italy is going to lose a unit when they... Do that. Yeah, I think that's going to be Fleet Tuscany. Yeah, that would make sense. It's not very useful there on its own. Um, <laughs> it would be interesting to see if uh, if Spain goes to Western Mediterranean or something and Tuscany ends up out in Leon. Do you still disband it then? Uh, um, probably not, but we'll see that when we get there, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Like, as... France here, you just want to keep the Italian away from you for while no, you I want to eat. keep it at arm's length for one more turn, see where he disbands, and then and then get your fleet up north. Yes. So an unfortunate thing for the Austrian here. Oh, actually, it didn't matter. Um, but I was going to say, Backstabber is a site that does things a bit differently to most other sites in that you have to specify what coast you're supporting things to. Um, and this unit in Serbia supported Greece to the wrong coast, and therefore it didn't match and didn't work. Um, he had Russian assistance as well, so if he had had those two supports work, it would have gotten in. But it looks oh, like didn't Black Sea cut yeah, Romania. Exactly, it looks like Turkey actually anticipated that Russia was about to stab him and and made the cut. So as it were, it wouldn't have changed anything. Um, but it's. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's a good move from Turkey, even though it didn't end up changing things, um, predicting that your ally is about to make a move on you here. Um, yeah. But also, Turkey's position is looking very bad now that Eastern Mediterranean is occupied. You kind of have to move Smyrna back, right? Uh, Aegean back to Smyrna. Uh, I mean, you, you, you kind of have to, but you also can't. So, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it, you're kind of you're kind of really sad about this happening. Yeah, you could just go all out and try and take Greece uh, while Italy is convoying to Syria, and therefore get a build. But I think it's yeah, unlikely but, to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it, the egg has been cracked, and the juicy three center 
center of the egg is tough. Yes. Yep, this is that... I mean, that convoy into Syria, we don't talk about it very often because it is kind of standard in a high level of play to do that, but it is done because it's incredibly effective at dismantling Turkey. It's like... It's basically the same as with England. If you get an Eng uh, an army into there, you're much you can dis take it all much much quicker. Um, the same goes for Turkey with an army here. It's it's much more efficient at just taking everything else. Um, so, is there anything else you want to talk about here? Uh, but have we done the north? We have done bits of the north, right? Yeah, I think that's everything. Yeah? Okay, well, let's move ahead to the fall, then. Uh, <gasps> what just happened to it? <laughs> it broke the convoy! Oh, it's the support! Okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, this convoy was attempted, it was the, exactly what you called out before, uh, Ezio, where Albania goes to Syria with Ionian and Eastern Mediterranean convoyed out. But Austria is not having it. <laughs> Austria destroys that unit and dislodges the convoy uh, at the same time and forces the Turkish fleet out into the Ionian. And suddenly, I think fourth is a bit high for Italy on these power rankings. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, that's kind of devastating. It's a brutal stab. It is. Does it really gain Austria that much? I guess it does, because Austria now has no Italian units to worry about on, on their homeland, but they wouldn't have had any Italian units to worry about anyway. Because yeah, Albania I mean, there's no fleet in Adriatic. Yeah. Hmm. It's an interesting decision. I, I guess it's, it took... It's the... such a brutal stab, you gotta take it. <laughs> you just... There's just some rules, and when you can do this while taking a center from them and, like, absolutely crush their future hopes and dreams in one move, and you can do it to an ally who absolutely did not see it coming, you just gotta make that play. Oh my god. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I, I'm not sure he will have been seeing it like that on a top board. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you don't think he just did it for the memories? <laughs> <laughs> For the story is to be able to look back and say, oh man, me, remember when I did that to you and then died in a couple of years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it should be noted as well for people who don't know, these are very famous names around this board. Uh, we've got two former world champions and one of them is in... Uh in Austria here, Nicolas Ahuge. Um He is also the only player to have ever won both a face-to-face -face world championship and a virtual face-to-face -face world championship. Uh, so that's over voice chat and in person. Um, so he is a very good player. I doubt he would have done it for the lols. I think it's, from, from the strategic perspective, Italy was just going to be too strong. That makes sense. Like, they were about to gain a whole lot. Um, they they were going down a, a unit. Um, but yeah, maybe you just yes. trust Turkey more. Uh, obviously, we don't see the negotiations here, right? <laughs> so it's that, yes, Italy was going down a unit. But we've established that if Italy had the choice, Italy was going to pop that fleet in Tyrrhenian Sea, which Austria doesn't care about anyways. Yeah. And yeah. if Italy gets to make this convoy work into Syria, um, then they are likely going to gain Smyrna for sure, and they're probably going to be in Aegean shortly after, get Khan, Ankh, and you're probably, you are going to get Bulgaria almost always as Austria in this position. But from that point, Italy's gained like three dots. Two of them are going to be armies. They're down Trieste for sure, so they're only net plus two, but they're losing a useless fleet, and they can build armies, and suddenly you're in this really tough spot because Italy recognizes that Italy can't really push through Russia. And so you have to hope then that Russia chooses to work with you against Italy rather than with Italy against you, which I think is the more natural alliance. Yeah, because if they're working this, with if they're working with you against uh, Italy, then that's basically just leaving you alone, right, and not taking anything in the south. Um, um, whereas... They would probably be going after uh, the Turkish centers, right? 
yeah, Russia okay. would try to attack them. It would be um, slow progress, though, whereas going for you, it's just like, sandwich, yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Take all those centers that are readily available. Yeah, um, exactly. And then hope that you can form a line against Italy, but if Italy gets too big too fast, then you, you can't. But whatever. The point is, this completely stops that in its tracks. Right? This just says, no, actually, Italy, I am going to be the stronger power between the two of us. I'm growing, you're disbanding. I'm forcing your army to disband right now. So you're stuck with three fleets and an army, which is not where you want to be. I'm going to be able to get Vienna into Tyrolia probably next turn because I get a build. And I'm going to be pressuring Venice. And hey, I've even got Turkey into the Ionian. So you have to worry about Naples and Tunis with your only one fleet back there. Like, how are you going to defend yourself against him and me? I'm probably going to take Venice. And I think that's the strategic part of this, far more than just the, the crushing coupling. Yeah, it's an excellent move on that front. I hadn't even thought about the fact that <laughs> you forced the disband to be the army, so Italy is now stuck on three fleets. That is huge. And you wouldn't really expect this retreat of... Uh, this is a very, like, I want revenge retreat up to Adriatic. You Because there's a Turkish fleet in Ionian, you would usually expect it to go to, like, Naples or Tunis, and if Italy did that, there's almost no downsides to doing this as, as uh, Austria, right? <laughs> it's strictly upside. You're gonna then, you're guaranteed to take Venice. Again, yes. The quotation marks are guaranteed because it's diplomacy, but like Venice, Italy can't defend for sure. Yeah. Uh, so that is a huge shift in the south. It's incredible. Um, like, well done to Turkey as well, who also does quite well out of this in terms of, A, not dying, which is always quite not nice. Not dying, right? Or we were talking about <laughs> Turkey before this turn, being like, oh, the yeah, I got cracked, that's it. But, but, but also oh. being in Ionian Sea is huge. Going from a position where you were about to die to, hey, I'm in the most important uh, province in the Mediterranean is... Uh, <laughs> They, yeah, pretty sick. They ideally need to get that fleet out of Eastern Mediterranean, and I don't know how they do that, but... Uh... But I suspect that Italy is going to say, hey, you know what, Turkey, power to you, I was going to kill you, but you flipped the script, let's let's get Austria. Um, and then um, I'll get out of Eastern Med, I'll move it to Aegean or something, like, I'm not, I'm not going after you anymore, we're bros. Yes. Is what I expect to, to happen. And so things work out very well for Turkey here, and Russia is just sitting back and enjoying the fireworks right now. <laughs> Although he is so happy, more than that, they got into Skagerrak. Yes, it's a really good turn for Russia in the north. Um, I'm not sure I would be that happy looking at this in the south. Like I would probably have preferred Turkey to just get squashed and then be able to work with Italy or uh, or work against Italy because you're you're the person both sides would presumably want to ally with at that point. Um, but, you know, it's still, it's still an incredible advance in the north, and it's certainly something Russia can deal with in the south, because they've still got all the strength they need there, right? <laughs> yeah, I see this chaos in the south as pure opportunity for Russia. Um, like, there's, there's so much, so much potential here, and so, I think Russia's really happy that just no one is going to be able to take any of their dots. They're, they're just safe and strong. Yeah, I mean, you say that it is... Well, the fact that Serbia is also Serbia is really nice for the Russian, but there is always the possibility that this uh, Austria-Turkey alliance turns into a full Austria-Turkey alliance, and then you're in a bit of trouble, right? I don't believe in an 18. Right. <laughs> Not on a top board. Uh, yes. I mean, that's very fair. Um, we haven't really discussed the North, and there are a few interesting... Well, we have discussed parts of the North in that England managed to... Is this the second turn England has done this, or did this happen last turn? Hang on. Yeah, okay, England did the same thing as they did last turn, blocking English Channel and North Atlantic Ocean uh, successfully. But over on the other side, England loses a bit. But possibly the most interesting thing that happened here... Um is that Germany did actually take uh, take Belgium after all. Yes. 
So Germany is going to be going up. Um, France takes off Belgium. They don't even bother retreating it. So they're going to be three fleets, two armies, which is... Yeah, I don't know about that. Is that right in this position, do you think? Um, we're going to get into Liverpool, right? I mean, they have been bounced out. Oh, yeah, I guess uh, England has to choose where to defend beyond this point, right? Um, we're going we're gonna to get into Liverpool, and we want fleets for that. Yes, it's just that... Oh, and I guess... Uh, so, in order to take this... This is interesting, right? The way that France did this, uh, going into Holland like this... Um, wait, no. I was going to say that meant that they couldn't uh, do it in the other direction. Like, Germany couldn't go in from Holland. But because Burgundy went up to Belgium instead of tapping Ruhr, they actually could have. Um, yep. So, But the way Germany did it means that France has one turn to set up their defenses. Uh, because Germany only has two units on the border instead of three. Yeah, this looks to me like... For whatever reason, France and England expected Helgoland Bight to be support holding Denmark rather than cutting the North Sea. That um, makes sense. I that just that's what this looks like to me. Because if you don't expect North Sea to get tapped, then these moves from England and France look great. But, hmm. but like if you surely you know if uh, Russia is attacking. Oh, I see. There's a decent possibility that Russia just defends Norway here with Sweden. Because yes. there's three around. Um, but the way that Germany and Russia did that, there was no chance of Denmark being taken, right? Because they tapped both sides. They tapped Skagerrak in the North Sea. Yes. And actually, there was no chance of Norway being taken either because of the same thing. Uh, yes. So good moves from that alliance there. Um, and yes. they get. You can always expect Chris Brand's alliance to have very solid tactical moves. Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, Chris Brand and Peter McNamara, they're both. <laughs> incredible players uh tactically yes. but yes so is that everything to talk about here yeah oh uh, I, I guess one more thing spain to portugal thoughts on that yeah i mean whatever <laughs> trying to <laughs> <right>. make friends <laughs> it is it's very pro italy right all right we will go ahead to the uh winter of 1903 Plus one, plus one, plus one for um, Russia, Germany, Austria, and they are all armies. Nothing crazy to talk about? I think that all makes sense. Uh, Warsaw is just, you know, you, you really need to shore up your southern fronts as Russia here because of how unpredictable that's all going to be. Um, yeah, and you don't want to be a juicy target, so you want to just be able to say, nope, I have armies here. Austria, you're not going to gain from me. You should go and mess with other people. Yeah. Army Keel is potentially interesting, just because I don't see anywhere it can immediately go. But you also, long term, you don't really want too many fleets as Germany in this spot, right? Because you're probably going to get rushed from the south at some point. Yeah, I'm expecting it to just go into Ruhr, and that way Holland can stay occupied until you finally kick England out of the North Sea. Oh, right, yeah. That, of course that makes sense. I had forgotten England was <laughs> potentially able to retreat there if they just do go down to Ruhr. Um, right, shall we move ahead to the spring? Sure. Alright, spring 1904. Uh, okay, England is going to continue bouncing France in these two provinces. Um, wow. That's just been three turns of these same bounces, right? Every single turn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it is helping that they're not going to lose anything this year because of that. I'm surprised France doesn't just go into Irish Sea. It's not um, defended. I mean, it like from Irish Sea, you don't necessarily get into Liverpool, but I would have absolutely moved into Irish Sea and Mid Atlantic Ocean, and then taken North Atlantic Ocean and then put pressure on Liverpool next year for sure. Yes, it's uh, well, it's certainly more effective than attacking these two provinces over and over again. But I anticipate... I mean, it, it, it makes progress. Yeah. 
It is slower, yeah, I, I mean, suppose. <laughs> again, it's like it's it's always one of those weird things in a diplomacy board. How much do you actually care about making progress? Um, like such committal progress. And the answer is, I I do in this case. I really would want to, but also, maybe he's worried about. I I don't know. Moving into North Atlantic Ocean is weird. Yeah, no, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I can't I can't defend it. Sorry. Uh, it's fully possible that he just thought that these uh that England wasn't going to defend against them anymore. Cause he's losing ground on the other fronts if he does that. Maybe he was expecting London support north. Norwegian support north. Yeah, I mean right. maybe, but also he's done this the last two turns, so yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, painful term for France, I think, not getting any progress there. But hey, at least he's yeah. not losing anything. It's, it's a more painful term for England. Yes, losing the North Sea is bad news bears for England. And now we see that Germany might actually be the one to get the first convoy onto the British mainland. Yep. I mean, it's still a heavy guess here. <laughs> um, oh, of course, but... Come on, Germany has guesses, France does not. Yes. Uh, and interestingly, Germany stops this advance into uh, Tyrolia. Um, this is, I think, the uh, outside of the Italian-French conflict, this is the first uh, cross-board like, interference we're seeing <laughs> in terms yes. of the, the West deciding to have a hand in the East. And here, I really like it from Germany because I think we've right we've established that Germany is the one who's making slight progress in the West, potentially gaining from England's demise. You don't want the East to explode too quickly, and so if the East stays in a little bit of a bottleneck logjam, you have more time to make your guesses and to make slow progress against England as opposed to potentially Austria. Getting Venice, maybe stabbing for Bulgaria, going plus two, and suddenly have to be defending Munich as well. And then, oops, if France times support into Munich effectively, you might be, you might be crushed. So I think it makes sense to slow down Austria here, give yourself maximum time. I really like this. Yes, I, I mean I agree completely. It, especially, I think um, people often think of Germany and Austria as natural allies because there's a lot of. Um, Articles that call them natural allies and say that Germany and Austria have to be on the same page for the game and then, you know, they'll both do well. And that kind of spawns from the fact that if either of them rushes the line right at the start, they'll die. Uh, but if you look a little bit further into the game, I think both of them are kind of natural enemies for each other <laughs> even if austria gets strong as germany you really don't want that because the first place an austria who's dealt with the east is gonna go is munich um so doing this like slight tap especially considering all it takes is one move here from a unit that wasn't doing anything anyway um that's an incredible benefit that that's you've gotten for almost no cost at all uh, yeah, the thing about the natural enemies, I tend to agree. I found that it's more, like, if Austria makes it into the mid-game, I expect Austria to attack Germany. Um, if Germany attacks Russia and crushes Russia, then I expect Germany to potentially attack Austria. But I've seen a lot of German games where Germany is just focused on the east, and then there's they're totally fine with Austria. But Austria can attack a more; they can get more units on the front with Germany easily than Germany can get on the border with Austria, right? Yeah, that is definitely true. I think if uh, so, Germany doesn't represent as much of a threat to Austria in that it's kind of a one-way relationship. Uh, but the even, I suppose, as. <laughs> <clears throat> At a high level, you only really see Germany going into Austria in the kind of games where you have, like, a solid, a 100% solid um, England-Germany or a 100% solid France-Germany that just goes through the entire game. And those are very different styles of games to what you see in this kind of game anyway, right? Um, yes. In this kind of game, at most, I'd expect Germany to maybe snag Vienna at some point, but... 
nothing more than that, really. Uh, yeah, if, England, if 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 um, Germany is going for a solo push, and it is pretty close, sometimes you can get Vienna and Trieste as the 18th and as the 18th box. Yes, uh, I think Budapest is probably more common than Vienna actually in those situations, but hmm. whatever. Uh, yeah, um, but yes. So <laughs> to bring this That's back right. to the board, huge uh, huge yeah. advantage for Germany to doing this. Um, and Italy manages to retake Ionian, uh, and the Turkish unit retreats to Naples, which is presumably going to be kicked out with the, with Venice uh, blocking Rome, but it is a little risky to do that, just because... Actually, it, it's not risky to do that, because the Austrian unit didn't make it into a Tyrolean, so you can just yes. cover with Adriatic. That's really nice. <laughs> Um, it's not necessarily guaranteed, remember, because Albania can support Naples into Ionian. Yes. And so you might need Adriatic to cut Albania to make it truly guaranteed, but then you risk Venice getting cut. Um, like, if Austria moves Trieste into Venice and has um, fleet Albania support Naples to Ionian, you would need to, um, be, you would need to let Tyrrhenian Sea just take Naples. Um, but it's that it's that awkward guess of where do you attack from? Yeah, um, and Greece. It's important to note, note Greece is open right now, so Austria presumably needs to cover that with something. Although they could just go down with Serbia, or they could take the guess that Italy isn't going to go for it, which I think is kind of a reasonable guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, other things that happened here, Turkey attempts to take uh, Romania with no success, um, so Turkey's position is kind of stagnant here, outside of forward retreating. I almost think, as Turkey, I would have preferred to retreat into Tunis here, just so that I could take an expedition into Western Med if I get knocked out. <laughs> but maybe that's just my, uh, my own approach of liking being in random positions. Um... I like Naples because Naples borders Rome, and you force Italy to commit more units to defending and ensuring I don't take Rome as well. Yeah, it does immediately uh, hamper Italy more, um, which I guess is something you kind of need to do. Uh, it is going to be awkward for Turkey after this, though, if Italy does manage to get back on their feet, because they kind of have to just pull that Black Sea fleet out if that happens, right? If Turkey goes down one? Well, as in, if Turkey loses the fleet at Naples. Uh, I guess it could retreat to Apulia, but that just feels bad as well. <laughs> it's like, just... Apulia is it... a fine place. Um, potentially. It does border two Italian SCs, and it borders Ionian, so it is quite nice on that front. But it's just the fact that this Italy has three fleets and one army, right? If Italy manages to consolidate and get in a position where they're not on the defensive, I think they go straight back to Turkey again. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe, but you have to factor in that Austria is the one who blew up Italy's game. Yes, that is true. So I, I'm not worried as Turkey that Italy's going after me anytime soon. Okay, well, yeah. Is there anything else you want to talk about here? Nope. Uh, about <laughs> the one thing I pointed out last turn, uh, was it last turn? Was Spain to Portugal. Now Portugal goes back to Spain. <laughs> Any thoughts on that real quick? Nah. Alright. Well, let's uh, go ahead to Fall 1904 then. Ooh. That's bold. Right. Are you looking at the Italian boots right now, or...? <laughs> Well, I was looking at the AT and discovering that ATs are sometimes real. It's not a myth. <laughs> that is true. It, it and these were like the best moves they could have entered, right? Um, from an I AT haven't looked too closely at it in the south for sure. But man, I was looking at the Italian move and going, "That's bold, leaving Venice completely open." Uh... Forced it off. Yeah. It, it blew up the Turkish fleet, that's perfect. Um, they can now mobilize again. 
but they do do it at the cost of uh, Austria getting into Tyrolia this turn. Um, and of course you're not in Ionian anymore, so you've got a bit of mobilizing to do. But yeah, and meanwhile, Russia's position suddenly got a bit worse. <laughs> I would say significantly worse, yes. Yes. Mainly because the Austria-Turkey alliance is real. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, uh, Austria-Turkey can do really well. The problem is that, like, you don't usually want to run it because one of them has a very clear advantage over the other into the late game on a top board. Yeah, I mean, that said, right, Nikolai is pretty good at this diplomacy game. So yeah. maybe he can time it just right and he can navigate it perfectly. I just... Yeah, maybe he can. It's definitely possible. Turkey's going to get two builds here, important to note, because they pick up Romania and they uh, got their uh, Naples fleet blown up. So yeah. it could, I assume it would be Fleet Con, Fleet Smur, and then just go That's for it. Instinct. I could see Army Con looking to convoy into stuff, but I would just double fleet, man. You don't want too many armies in the AT. Yes. Uh, and then the uh, only other thing that happened in the south here, we had this uh, Spanish fleet coming down into Western Mediterranean, which is annoying for the Italian, I guess. <laughs> um... I'm not yeah. sure I would want to be annoying the Italian in this position because it looks like they're the one that's going to be on the defensive. But looks then... like they're going to have their hands full of Turkey, and I want more fleets in the north. I want to move Mid Atlantic Ocean to Irish Sea and get that fleet in Mid Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yes. Uh, and yeah, but I guess France didn't know until this turn that Austria and Turkey were sticking together. Um, so that's an I guess, important. I guess, but even change. still. Even still, was Italy going to attack us? Come on! Mm, it does seem very unlikely. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Everything is okay. <laughs> um, up north, England defends as best they can, but it looks like it's even more futile than expected, because instead of Germany getting greedy and going for SCs themselves, they are just helping France. Um... And so France finally gets into English Channel, although they would have done anyway, I suppose. This specific um, turn, yes, finally. Yeah. But the, France is still not in North Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> no, and I think that um, McNamara is doing this great. And I have a feeling that once France gets ready for a convoy, we're going to see um, a bunch of German units flooding that western border. Yes. If anything, I think this France cannot convoy a unit away from their homeland right now. Um, yeah. And, yeah, Germany is doing a very good job of making it look like they can by continuously bouncing and keeping Ruhr unoccupied, but it they can obviously pivot really, really quickly from this position, especially considering that they own North Sea, so they don't have to be defending Holland here. They could just go Belgium into Picardy, Holland into Belgium, Kiel into Ruhr, and suddenly the French position is completely open, especially if they've convoyed Gascony out. Yep. Um, so yeah, <laughs> potentially very good for uh, for Germany. Um, Russia, well, they just seem to be rearranging their units up north a little bit, which isn't changing very much. Um, yep. And they managed to lose a bit in the south, so painful turn for them. Yeah, I mean, painful. I wouldn't, like, not the end of the world, I think for sure you're Russia. That's the whole point. You can lose some stuff, but definitely sad. Yes. Um, unclear where you're going to be going from here. Germany has been advancing so slowly. There's been no holes in Germany's back, and Austria and it, Turkey, if they continue to work together, are probably going to be able to break you eventually. Um, just that's how it tends to work. Um, so we'll see. We'll see where things go. Yeah, this is where we see how important it is for Russia to be strong in both spheres, though. Because if this kind of thing happened to Russia and they were already, like, on the defensive in Sweden and didn't have Norway, I think it would be a far... Like, it would be horrific. Yes. Uh, but as That's is, good. they can use those Scandinavian centers to maintain their units in the south, and because they've got Galicia, this isn't quite as bad as it looks. Um, yeah. 
Right, uh, shall we move ahead to the winter? Let's do it. All right, winter 1904, plus two for Ruben Sanchez in Turkey. Of course, one of them is a rebuild, and minus one for Chris Brand in Russia. Uh, Finland comes off. Thoughts on that? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's fine too. You got to take something off in the north. Uh, I think the only debate there is whether you trust Germany enough for it to be Sweden, but uh, you probably don't, right? <laughs> Not on the yeah, top. Yeah, I mean, what's the what's the advantage of keeping Sweden over Finland? Are you gonna be pulling Finland back to the south to try to defend Norway, Sweden, and Saint Pete with one fleet? Unlikely. Yeah, that's very fair. Right? Um, the units in the north are already pulling over time, right? Two units defending three centers, so. At least leave two up there, come on. Yep. Um, and of course, two fleets we talked about. Uh, Kontma going down for Ruben Sanchez. Um, he can move those against Italy, or he could pivot and take Greece up to him. Uh, yes. Right, so power rankings. These may have changed a fair bit since last time. Yeah, Turkey's number one. I think that is a very solid assessment. I will move Turkey up to the top. Um, McNamara is number two. Germany. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Austria is number three. Russia is number four. Uh, England's last. I guess France Italy's is second some... last and third to last. Yeah, I think that's accurate. The interesting thing here is uh, outside of England, I don't think anyone is like horrifically behind. Um, Italy. Yeah, Italy's not in a good position, but they're, like, not out of it by any means. Dude, Turkey just built two fleets. They have one army. Austria took Tyrolia and is pissed at you. You're probably pissed at them, too. I I think Italy is is also cooked, is okay. my... That's when I look at this board. Yeah, that seems pretty fair. It's... Like, I agree with you that Italy is less cooked than England. <laughs> right. I think that England is more cooked. I do agree. But yes. they're both on the cooked side of the spectrum here. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that is fair. Um, especially with the Austrian army being in Tyrolia, it ties down the Apulia fleet. Uh, and Albania is already adjacent to Ionian, ready to tap it, and Western Mediterranean on the other side. Although, I really would expect Western Mediterranean to pull back here, right? You've either got to see Western Mediterranean to Middle Atlantic, or France commits properly and moves to North Africa as well. There's no um, way, dude. You can't. You can't. Probably, <laughs> can you? Maybe. No, if you do that, then Germany's going to kill you. See, I wonder on that front, because as France here, you really need a build, right? You desperately need a build to hold out against Germany. So you can either go for Liverpool and hope that England isn't moving something to defend it, uh, or you can go for the more likely acquisition in Tunis. I almost think that might be better. Um, ex okay. Except for the fact that it leaves the south side of the board even more like in Austria-Turkey's favor than it was previously. <laughs> yeah, but maybe you have to make a short-term play here. Just take Tunis, hope that something chaotic happens over in the southeast, that Austria and Turkey break up. Um, and then you get a build... And then, but then what are you, like, you're using two units to take that build, are you going to try to make another unit in the north? My worry is that if we don't commit to finishing off England, no, maybe Germany wouldn't kill us. My, my worry would be that we move Mid-Atlantic Ocean to the south, and then Germany's like, hey, you're not going to help us kill England. What's up with that? And then they just move into Picardy, and, and then we're cooked. Yeah. I mean, that is... Fair. I just worry that Germany is going to make that move anyway. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, like, Germany can't make gains in England in the current position, right? Okay, what um, if we actually just say, no, 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 no. I heard that this France-England alliance is actually something that's strong here, right? And then we just move English Channel to the Picardy, and then Mid-Atlantic Ocean to English Channel, and then Western Med back to Mid-Atlantic Ocean, and you say, oh, wait, I forgot that I'm France, and you can't kill me. <laughs> I mean, that would work. I... Oh god, I hate putting a fleet in Picardy so much, but it might actually be the right play in this instance. Well, no, because oh, yeah, the, the problem is that you still then lose uh, Burgundy, right? Because Picardy can't support Burgundy if it's a fleet. 
they would have to go in from Belgium, um, but because you'd be tapping. But you still do lose Burgundy in that instance. Unless you take Belgium in time, right? Because you can make this move right now, right? We assume that Germany is going to do defensive nonsense for one more turn, right? And if Germany does defensive nonsense for one more turn, then maybe we can actually mess with them. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Actually, yes, that that would probably work defensively. It does. It is painful to basically let England back into the game <laughs> through this because you're not you're moving your units away from being able to. No, you're not because you're moving Western Mediterranean to the Mid Atlantic, so you can still. Oh yeah, that's the important part of this whole um, thing. Yeah, but actually, I really like that move set. I think that's excellent. Um... Well, I guess it we'll see what they right? do. It. English Channel to Picardy is an illegal move. Right? <laughs> You're like not allowed to write that move, and you start writing Picardy, and then it erases it and puts Belgium in there. <laughs> um, Indeed. Like that's just how it works sometimes. But I don't know. I feel like you got to do it sometimes. Yeah, and I think here it is an excellent move. It's just uh, it just feels really, really <laughs> horrible. Anyway, I have updated the power rankings. Then Turkey first, Germany second. Austria 3rd, Russia 4th, uh, France 5th, Italy 6th, and England 7th. Um, that may change over the course of the game. Well, it will change over the course of the game. Uh, let's move ahead to 1905. Well, right. France well, is not going with the <laughs> Oh my god, I hate these moves as France. What? I think that's... Horrendous, yeah. Because actually, if France hadn't supported Belgium until you just London, walk into Liverpool, you get Liverpool. <laughs> Oof. I guess at the very least, it did get Germany out of Belgium, and they didn't backfill. So that yeah, is like, come on, Western Med is holding. Yeah. Oof. God, so Riaz is a really, really good player, but I hate these moves. <laughs> I don't understand them at all. They're so much better than me. What the hell? That's absurd. Hmm. What? <laughs> oh, it's, it's just like helping Germany advance at this point just feels icky by itself, even if it didn't uh, block you out of the level. stabilize the Germany-Russia alliance? Is that the plan? Maybe? Like, just make sure that Russia is is saying Germany is way too strong? But yeah, Russia but can't like, do anything about it. They're still out. Yeah, Russia is too weak right now. They can't help, right? This is... I don't understand. What are you doing? Oh. I mean, oh so... God. Maybe this is... The key is Munich to Bohemia, I think. If... We are maybe looking at a situation where Germany agreed to go and play in the south if they got London. Um, and maybe France wants that for balance. And I mean, it is nice for France that Munich has gone to Bohemia and therefore is in a less threatening position. But I'm still... I heels still back really in Munich! I hate this. And you get a... And Germany gets a build now as well, right? Is it? It's not guaranteed. You could kick the German back out of London again right now. Um, yeah, but England's fact... going to be defending Liverpool because England has to move Wales to Liverpool because you moved Mid Atlantic Ocean and North Atlantic Ocean, and so England's going to sit there and say, "Dude, you're going to take Liverpool with that fleet no matter what." Yeah, and you can't even. So for a moment there, I thought maybe the play is offer England support back into London so that you can then take Liverpool and England stays on too. But England's not going to trust you after you just did this. Uh, it's one of those things where England is now only in this game to uh, to decide who gets the advantage on that front, right? They could maybe try and wait it out and come back, but it's really unlikely to work, so more likely they're just going to choose, you know, this is the person I hate the least, they can get more, like, I'll, I'll face their opponents more at this point. And you just made a move that seems to not benefit you at all and really screws England over. I think that's a really horrible thing to do in this position. Um, it's just going to turn them against you. 
don't like it, don't understand it. Maybe we'll be maybe the list will be proven wrong. Maybe right there were I'm gonna figure out understand what this move did, but we'll look back on this later. Yeah. Um, well, very good else turn for Germany. <laughs> Um, so in the south, we have a whole lot of nothing uh, on the Turkish-Russian front, primarily because Austria is just rearranging their units right now, which is fine, I think. You want to get it into position to kick out Galicia. But abandoning Trieste is an interesting one, like just leaving it. Um, so Austria is maybe just thinking, I can't get Venice? Uh, but they could have gone to Adriatic and put the three prong on. The positioning of this is really interesting, right? Because they could have moved Serbia into Budapest to backfill that way, right? Yeah. They could have moved Albania into Adriatic, right? This looks incredibly anti-Turkish. Yes. It it really does. It's like moving away from the Italian front. Sure, you're repositioning up to Vienna, so you are positioned to take Galicia, but these... Serbia plus Greece. You don't need to be in Serbia right now if you trust Turkey. I think that's the main thing. Uh, Serbia absolutely should not be there. Um, in an Maybe Austria this is why team. most players suck at the AT. Right? And they just make reasonable moves that, like, I wouldn't expect to stay in Serbia. But you need to make them as Austria because if you don't make them, then Turkey's just going to kill you, and you can never get back into Serbia, of course. Yes. And so maybe this is just his his the way that he knows how to play this, and it's you have to keep pressure, you have to keep Turkey in check, and you can't give them freedom and flexibility. You need to be able to say, "Hey, I can take your centers if I want to. You have to do things that I want as leverage." Maybe that's the whole point of this. Yeah, I wonder if Austria is just going to stab Turkey here. Um, it wouldn't it gain too early, very much. Right? Yeah, it wouldn't gain very much is the problem. You just get into Bulgaria, you can't even take Romania, uh, and you probably end up with a stronger Russia as a result. And of course you can't get into the home centers, so it feels it feels really bad to do. But what but else are you going to do? don't stab Turkey now, right? Then Turkey never gets stabbed, right? Turkey, that's just it. Turkey's on lock. Turkey's in the final, and, and he's going to be one of the main centers, right? One of the main powers. It's only 1905. This game goes for 1906. Can you really stop Turkey from stabbing yeah. you? Or 1916, excuse me. Can you really stop Turkey from stabbing you for 11 years? Yeah. Oh, man. The, the Munich to Bohemia move just feels horrible for Austria to deal with as well. It's just yeah, like, well... Mm. Yeah, I guess we'll see what comes as a result of this. I'm super interested to see where Austria goes from here, because it feels like there's no good answer. Um, taking Galicia Yeah, I mean, the natural like, answer was to just kill Italy, right? And then yeah. see where things go. But evidently, Nikolai didn't like where that was going to leave him. So, what's up? What's going on? Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about here? I don't think so, no. Okay, uh, let's move ahead to Fall 1905 then. So, well... There's... Yeah, okay, so Austria did stab Turkey, but didn't even take... Bulgaria in the process. That's, uh... Man. Painful. Yeah, I wonder if Turkey just went, you know, why are you still in Serbia in an aggressive way or something and, and forced Austria's hand in this uh, sense. But Maybe. Also, like, how does Riaz manage to do this? I don't get it. Oh, he's in London. What? <laughs> Uh, okay. That's insane. <laughs> what? How are they so good at talking to people? Yeah. Wow. That is ridiculous. Um, so I was saying earlier, hey, the way that you might be able to deal with this as France is to offer England support into London uh, and then take Liverpool behind them, but they probably wouldn't take that because you've just annoyed them, right? But somehow, yeah. Rios manages to talk England into both supporting him into London 
and not defending Liverpool, which then, I mean, France doesn't even take Liverpool in that instance. Which is... God, that's, that's incredible. And he takes Belgium at the same time. Jeez. This is quite the turn. These people, man, they're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And Russia even helps the English player against the against North Sea here. Um, so I guess uh, the, maybe the goal of the support into London was, after all, make Peter McMara big and scary. Um, which appears to have worked. <laughs> this is why France is number one, guys. Even when France isn't number one, France is actually number one. <laughs> I don't think this is France, though. I think this is Riaz. She's playing really, really, really well. Yeah, it's important to note Riaz uh, was at the top of the Paris Method order selection, so the reason he got France is because he performed the best in his qualifying game, and the reason for that is, well, spoiler alert for the DBN uh, videos if you're watching the qualifying round, um, but he soloed that uh, qualifying game. I believe he was the only player to do so. So... Yeah, he is just incredible, and like this is, <laughs> this is just a sign of why you really need to have access to the negotiations to know why someone is doing something in an instance. Because I have no idea how he pulled this off. This was all. Um, this was virtual face to face, right? Yes, it was over uh, Discord. So calls. no written negotiations for us no. to go and beg off him. Sadly, not. Um, so the. Actual DBN broadcast of this had sideline commentary, so you can watch and hear the sideline reporters say what's going on. Uh, but, like, it, it's not a straight transcript or anything, it's just a gist. But this is, I mean, this has to be potentially move of the match, right? If Riaz manages to pull it out from here. <laughs> this is such a huge turnaround. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> And I mean, so potentially what makes this even more incredible, the North Atlantic Ocean to Norwegian sea move is just like, he had complete and utter confidence. Well, he's just committing so hard to England just being his vassal for the entire thing, and it looks potentially like England will just do it. I mean, England supported him into London. What? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Incredible. Incredible. Um, yes. Want to look at the South and Austria stabbing Turkey? Yeah, I think we should. This is uh, the... So the Austrian stab comes in two parts. Um, first, they move Greece to Bulgaria south coast here, which gets bounced by the convoy um, to Bulgaria. Um, quite smart on the Turkish part to do it that way, because uh, you can't lose Black Sea um, if you defend it with the convoy. And then the other thing is Serbia support Galicia to uh, Romania, which as we can see, worked perfectly um, for the Russian. So Vienna and Budapest were mutual support holding, uh, just in case the Russians stabbed him, I guess. And Tyrolia tries to defend Trieste, and, well, successfully defends Trieste against the Italian. So I would expect from this position an Italy-Turkey alliance to emerge, just because of the way... Like, that that feels like that would be the negotiation dynamic at this point, right? <laughs> um, Austria yeah, just screwed Turkey Yeah, but they also can't get their, their shit together, right? Because yeah. both of them attacked Greece, neither one of them supported the other. Presumably they both want to attack Austria. Both of them knew what was going on, but they still couldn't figure out who was supporting who in there. Not a good sign for their alliance. Yeah, very, very bad sign there. Um, so... Uh, I don't know. Well, okay, so the person who comes out on top of the, in all of this is uh, Chris Brand over in Russia, <laughs> who picks up Romania, goes from a bit of a problematic position with uh, with Turkey, Austria advancing against him to suddenly being in a beautiful position again. Um, obviously, he still doesn't own Black Sea, and that army in Armenia is still there, so it's not perfect, but it's certainly a hell of a lot better than it was previously. And then also, everyone else. There's a war between France and Germany. Yes, that is true. And that's also perfect for the Russian in the north. Um, and 
everyone else in the South, I feel like all of them are losers uh, out of this. Um, like, Italy is possibly the best off relative to their previous position, because Western Mediterranean has moved away and they're not being actively attacked now. But they're still not in a good position. And Austria hasn't gained anything. Turkey is now at war with Austria and has lost something. It's just... It's just a mess. Yep. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to add to that? I don't. Want, I don't like playing central countries, man. They're too hard. Yep, I think that's accurate. Austria is such a tough one. Italy can also be a really tough one. I feel like Austria is. Austria goes through this like cycle of being very, very hard when you're in introductory games being like pretty good when you get to the mid level of play and then at the top level of play it goes down to being really hard to play again because it's just getting crushed um but yeah nicola is doing all right here but the position is just painful i think especially because of that german unit in bohemia i feel like he could do so much more if he wasn't having to I'm not support. too worried about the German unit you know, in Bohemia, man. I feel like that army is going back pretty fast. Well, yeah, now it has to, right? <laughs> it might even come off the board, because Germany's got to disband. Um, yeah, I'm disbanding Yorkshire. Yeah, that's probably fair. You're not getting Liverpool from that position, right? You just lost the North Sea, right? So, you're never getting it back. Yeah. Man, oh pieces of position just went from being amazing to being terrible. Maybe Bohemia. Sorry, I was fast. I would be really tempted to disband Bohemia, because Yorkshire, like, you're going to expect that England is going to be defending Liverpool, so you're, tap you're tying down one unit there, and then you can tap Eddie or London, and it makes planning really difficult for the French and the English. I need to look at this position for a lot longer to figure out if Yorkshire's actually worth keeping or not, because it might actually mess with a lot of their plans. It might, like, tie down three units worth for one, only one unit, which is great. And Bohemia's, maybe not. My instinct, of course, is to pull, was to pull Yorkshire, because, again, it's stuck and it can't get back, but if you're in this type of a war, some units are just way too efficient, and the, the like, the rogue units that you were talking about are, are frequently those units, and Yorkshire is practically a rogue unit at this point. So, I would need to look at it. Yeah, see, keeping that, actually, like, I, my first instinct, I, I said that Bohemia might come off, but I think if I was in that position, I would disband Yorkshire, just because I'm not expecting to advance anymore, and Yorkshire isn't that good for defense here. But if you're playing a top board, you're looking to try and, like, maximize your potential reward, right? To get Because you have to beat six other players at the end of the day, uh, and... Keeping Yorkshire on is maximizing that potential reward by making it much easier to take North Sea if you do manage to get back on the offensive, if you get Russia back on side with you. So Yes, Yorkshire also slows down their potential to attack, right? Like, they need to deal with... A lot of players feel like they have to deal with these rogue armies before they can push forward. Um, I don't expect people to feel that way in this game. Um... But oftentimes, right, like, if you have an army in Gascony, the French, this is an army in Gascony, but they feel like they can't move without dealing with that unit and getting rid of it. Um, and so it might slow them down a lot. You might be able to cut supports and prevent them from reinforcing the North Sea as they push forward. You might actually get a ton of value from it. Looking at this position, I just think there's too many fleets for the English and French. So I don't think you can potentially hit the North Sea or do any damage to them at all with it so i think yorkshire sucks here and i would take it off but i would they need to look at the board to confirm that for longer than so i have here so. it is important to know england is about to lose a fleet because they gave uh, london to the french um and they true. they can't keep like so naturally from a, a positioning point of view you want to keep edinburgh and north sea on but you do have to defend liverpool as well if yorkshire is staying so wales might might be kept on for that. And if Wales if doesn't Wales stay isn't on, kept on. You want to keep Yorkshire one hundred percent, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but Wales is going to be kept on because they're assuming great, absolutely. Yeah, 
Um, so one of Edinburgh or North Sea could be gone. That's yeah. So it's going to be Eddie. In Astral. which case, you kind of want to keep Yorkshire on anyway, because you can tap at Edinburgh and pin down... Right, because um, it forces Wales back to Liverpool, you can cut London, and then there's only Norwegian to support the North Sea, and then you can retake the North Sea with Huggle and Denmark, and maybe Norway. It all comes down to the Russian, and I'm not going to risk that. I would disband Yorkshire. Well, alright, shall we see what they uh, choose to do? Oh, man. I'm right. Oh, yeah. I love yep. when they agree with me. <laughs> Yorkshire comes In off the board. In this case, it's more I agree with them, to be clear. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think it makes sense. I, I kind of have talked myself into keeping Yorkshire now if, if I was in that position, but uh, <laughs> especially with Chris Brand building fleet uh, St. Petersburg North Coast here. That's a curious one. Um and you suddenly have, like, some potential against this England-France. Is even though... Well, yeah, but Russia's not on your side, right? Russia was against you. I feel like looking at what Riaz just pulled off, uh, Russia would be back on your side again, no? Maybe. Uh, well, I guess we'll see. And, yeah, France gets plus uh, Fleet Brest plus Army Marseille, which all makes sense, I think. Um... And that's all of the adjustments? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, shall we move ahead to the spring? It's spring 1906. That's a big convoy in the south. <laughs> that's the first thing that drew my eye. Um, double supported. It's, it's quite nice how these arrows appear on here when they get uh, stronger as, as more support gets added. Um... Sure. <laughs> I like that, yes. But yeah, so Armenia definitely gets into Bulgaria this time, and it's with Russian support, which is super interesting because Russia just benefited from Austria supporting them against Turkey. Uh, <laughs> but I guess if Turkey asks you whether you want uh, Armenia or out of Armenia, you say yes, right? Yep. Hmm. It goes to show, in diplomacy, especially at top level... Um, do not do something like supporting Galicia to Romania in the expectation that the person will be super grateful and then work with you. <laughs> you do it because you think it will give you an advantage and them an advantage, uh, and so you'll both agree on it. But you, in diplomacy in general, you do not do this stuff because you expect someone to assist you despite it being against their interests in future. So um, let's do a quick freeze frame for a moment. Okay, let's ignore the West, okay? We're just going to take the line, everything from St. Pete down to North Africa, it's off the board. Let's look at the East, okay? Yep. This looks ridiculously like a very early game thing, right? <laughs> it does. We've kind of reset the East back to a 1902 position, except... That Italy has an extra fleet instead of an extra army. Right? A little weird. They try somehow turned an army into a fleet. And Turkey has somehow done the same. Yes. Which actually... Because they've both done it, they don't have an advantage in the fleet count. Exactly. It just balances itself out. So and so it's... the East, nothing has happened. Basically. Very sad. They have entirely reset. Um, and... Yeah, because the Turk and the, the Italian both have an extra fleet, neither gets the advantage from it. Um, I think it actually benefits is... Turkey more, I think, to be clear, because you can have Eastern Med and Aegean, right? So you yes. can't just... It's much harder to break in. So full reset's not fair. In fact, Italy's just screwed. I mean, Italy can't lose ground against Turkey, right? Um, but yeah, they but... can't gain ground against Turkey either. So if actually, Turkey never loses anything. Turkey wins. That's how the game works. That is true. Right? I would kind of anticipate that, like in this position, it kind of looks like an early game position where Italy Austria is against Turkey Russia. But I almost think that the the change in fleet dynamics here, even though you would expect more fleets from both those sides to work against. Uh, Turkey and Italy to pitch them against each other. I almost think they're more likely to work together as a result of having more fleets because they can't do anything else. Uh, they can't advance against one another at all. Um, 
So because we have these units that are so good at attacking one another, we can't attack one another, and we must work together. I love yeah. the scene. <laughs> Incredible. Like ideally, I think even uh, from uh, Italy in this position, their ideal is to just go and grab uh, sensors off of southern France, but it's not going to happen because Turkey has too many fleets on their border. Um, and dude, yep. almost the, the board kind of needs that to happen because France right now is doing very well. <laughs> um, That's true. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, we've talked about the South there. <laughs> um, the North. What are your thoughts on that? Good for France. The rest of the board is doing its best. I'm. Yep curious as to whether England is going to attempt to hold on to London and just get a build here. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, which would be a bit bad for France, I suppose, unless England is super loyal to them, which is definitely possible. Dude, um, you're on the top board. you got to try to go for a win. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Um, you got another ten years still. <laughs> this is very true. Uh, and I mean, Russia is moving south into Skagerrak, which I thought Russia might look at what France had done and side with Germany again, but I guess possibly not. Well, probably not, given that they didn't move St. Petersburg uh, out. Did, I mean, oh wait, hang on, they've just left Sweden undefended to Germany, so maybe they are on Germany's side. But why do you keep St. Petersburg North Coast in place? That's such a weird move. Can you think of any yes. reason for this? If you really want to be supporting Sweden into Norway for some reason, but I feel like you'd rather support from Sweden. You're concerned about Norwegian and Barents or something? I don't understand. Uh, yeah, it's just weird all around. Maybe that. Maybe I don't um... see any real downside. Maybe. No, you don't have an extra unit against North Sea. Yeah, I don't know. It's tough. Maybe it's that he doesn't want to commit to a side right now. Um, so he's doing something that doesn't commit at all to anything, but I don't get yeah. it. Um, I would want that fleet out so that it can do things. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see which way he decides to go, like whether he decides to back up Germany or not here. Um, I still think it's best to back up Germany. But maybe that's wrong because you're not going to get anything else of doing that, right? Uh... Not in the short term, for sure. But by backing up Germany, you might leave yourself an opportunity to do something. By leaving Sweden, right, you basically you stop yourself from getting the most natural one in Denmark. Yes. So. I, well, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Germany's managed to reform their line uh, on Holland, uh, Munich, so it's going to be hard to press in against them, but the Frenchman has the position to do so. It's just going to take a while. Um, being in North Sea, which is the most important province on that front. Yes. The, yes. Uh, With the Germany in Hogland, right, obviously it's much tougher. Like, the two fleets from Germany makes this not a guarantee break right it's not just a matter of time yes uh and the english player potentially being a thorn in the back of uh, <laughs> of riaz is gonna be interesting um yeah potentially right shall we move ahead to the fall i'm gonna take that as a yes oh yes sorry yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i went on to the fall no. i was looking at the board <laughs> no problem uh Right, so, well, um, that's an interesting pivot from France. They're like, no, England, you are not going to be a thorn in my back. Uh, I am going to just commit everything to making sure you're not one. Um, Clyde had no orders. Did England NMR? Is England done? Uh, Edinburgh moved to Clyde, right? But um, Clyde had no orders. Uh, I'm in fall 1906. Is that... Wait, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. England didn't have a unit in Clyde at the start. Excuse me, I got yeah. my images. Of course, of course. England only had two units. England said, all right, fine, you can kill me, we're done. Okay. 
England moved out of Clyde. Well, they stayed in London. They tried to protect North Sea, so I don't think they were uh, they were giving up. But maybe they yes. maybe they were agreed with Riaz to trade Edinburgh for London, and like did it. <laughs> Um, and then Riaz was just like, okay, no, this is too risky to keep you alive right now. Um, yeah, we're not going to give you back all of your home centers. Because yeah. in that case, right, obviously, um, no, um, England could have just backed out of the trade, right? They could have just stuck in Edinburgh. Yeah. And then suddenly England is England is back. France is, was big, pissed people <laughs> off as a hostile Germany. I mean, hey, if I were England in that position, I would absolutely have said, yeah, yeah, we can trade, and then stayed in Edinburgh. <laughs> and yeah. taken three. Um, well, taken my three. Uh, in this case, right, you would have only been at two, because Riaz would have... Not would have he was one step ahead. Yeah, but I have a feeling that if I was playing with Riaz, he would not have let me get back on my feet anyway, because I'm not the kind of player who will vassalize myself. Um, but yes, so... Uh, an interesting thing here as well is that Germany just does the defensive tapping right again. They don't um, go for Belgium. So they do manage yes. to take North Sea. Uh, but they could have gotten more if they had tried. Yep. Uh, Measured attacks. You want to be risky sometimes and safe other times. You don't want to like, risk doing something aggressive for the North Sea and then miss guess there. And have some misguess happen in the south. Yes. Um, right. Just the way that these tactics work out. If they, if if they were to know exactly what you were doing, and you presumably have to coordinate with with Russia, Chris Brand at least somewhat, to make your attacks be effective. If that gets leaked and then France crushes you, it might be terrible. Yeah. So these orders are very safe. Even if I am, if, even if I'm England, France, and I know exactly what Germany's doing here. And there's really nothing I can do. Yep. Yeah, 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 I agree completely. Um, and we do see Russia mobilizing out into Barents now. Um, so slower than they could have mobilized. But they are it's, getting ready it is to necessarily move. the most important thing right now. Right, they got a lot of time. Ten more years left in this game. Moscow to St. Petersburg is, is really interesting. I uh, would not do that. <laughs> Like, what advantage is that army, is the extra army going to give you up north? Um, we might be able to convoy something out, more support on Norway to let us <coughs> make aggressive plays for the Norwegian and North Sea. Yeah. That's What's fair, it going to do with the south, fair. right? You're not going to be breaking Austria anytime soon, I don't think. Yeah, it just feels like Russia's position right now is a sit and wait position. Um, yeah, but you're on the top of the board. No one's attacking you. Maybe it's okay to sit and wait. This is See true. Yeah. Could be right. And there's a lot of interesting things happening in the south. I say a lot. Um, mainly it's just the alliance dynamic change. Uh, Russia decides to help Austria again, immediately after helping uh, Turkey into Bulgaria, which makes sense. You managed to get Turkey out of Armenia, and now the biggest threat there is gone, so time to turn around again. Um, and yes. Turkey ends up uh, assisting Italy into Greece. So, it is what we were talking about before, the fact that they have, uh, all, both sides have all these fleets. Maybe they just talked out and said, hey, we're never making any progress against each other, let's decide on one of us to get in here. Um, although Notably, I think... Italy also went from Apulia back going to Ionia, rather than taking Adriatic, so you're not actually looking to take Tyrolia. They're saying, probably not going to take Tyrolia, you're not going to get into Tyrolia, or Trias, excuse me, yeah. but... Yeah, sorry. Um, there's, it's really fun where there's half at war with each other. <laughs> yep. Uh, it, it's curious. This could have actually just been agreed between Austria and Italy, right? Um, because Italy didn't actually support their own move into Greece. They didn't have anything that could. Uh, but it might Austria, have been, yes, Austria moved uh, Greece out, so. It, yeah, they could have. They could just be doing a thing here where they all just kill Turkey, um, which would be quite sad for Turkey. But <laughs> yeah, Turkey is actually now in a position where they could potentially lose Aegean because they have three fleets on it. Um, 
well, the enemy has three fleets on it if uh, Italy is against them. So, yes, um, I think that about covers everything here. Shall we move ahead to the winter? Sounds good to me. All right, winter 1906, minus one for the Turk. Oh, I forgot they were getting a minus one, so actually they're in an even worse position uh, here. <laughs> plus one for uh, Italy, plus one for France. They both go for fleet builds. Fleet Rome, curious. Um, what are your thoughts on that? These people know how to inconvenience France without dying. It's, I think, important. Something that I still need to learn. Yep. It's, like, France is... Well, I mean, we're going to be doing power rankings this turn, right? So is France top of the power rankings right now? I mean, yes, but, like... It's annoying, because you're so much in front, that you, everyone's going to be messing with you a little bit. Germany a lot. Whereas Russia is also very strong, but maybe it's harder to mess with. Maybe, but not even. I don't know. I, I think France is clearly number one, right? Like, yes, France is number one. Yes. I mean, France has eight centers, which is the most centers, and therefore must be number one, right? And um, there's France. And has yes. centers by killing England, therefore moving a rival. It's just oftentimes when you're France in a position like this, you're gonna find that like there's only two fleets in the north. Because Germany could never build one and Russia had theirs disbanded or something. And then you just have complete fleet control in the North Sea. Everything's fine. But Chris Brandt getting this fleet out in Barents means that now there's gonna be four fleets to contest your four fleets. England is still on the board and you don't have quite enough troops, and hey, look, Italy's just, just annoying enough. There's an extra fleet there in the south, so maybe you need to pull a fleet down there, so maybe you're going to actually be outnumbered in the north, and you're going to be pushed back. I don't know. It's ah. For being an 8th century France that has killed England practically, it's really not ideal. Yes. But your 8th century France has almost killed England, so you're, you're at the top of the board. Yeah. Um, so it's like, there's a lot of potential problems in this France's future, but they are still, like, at the top. And most of the problems come as a direct result of them being at the top, because, hey, you know, yes, there are four fleets in the north. If you weren't quite as strong, maybe those fleets would be clashing against each other. Uh, <laughs> and hey, maybe those maybe. fleets do clash against each other in the future if you lose a little bit, right? Um, I guess we will see... The, the fleet of Rome is potentially the most worrying thing for them, I think. Just seeing if those Italian fleets come your way. Uh, but actually, now that Turkey is open, that might be less of a possibility. I think these two fleets are going to be messing with you. Right. I don't think Italy needs to commit all of their fleets to the east. I think there's at least one fleet going to, going to be in Leonian slash Western there. Right. Yeah, I think that's fair. We will we'll see how much Italy decides to tie them down. Uh, so we've got France first, uh, Russia second. I think those are both quite solid choices. Um, England is obviously last right now, hanging on by the skin of their teeth, although they have the potential to hang on for quite a long time here, because no one's... Uh, uh, in... I mean, quite a long time, meaning a turn if France wants to kill them, but... Well, yeah, but like... France would have to commit so heavily to do that, right? They have to support themselves into Wales and go to Clyde? Well, I guess they could go to Irish Sea and go to Clyde and then support themselves in, but still it's leaving Edinburgh undefended. Um, Look, it's it's a level of commitment for sure, and so there's a chance that England, that, that France doesn't do it, but it's... They might be on the board at one centre for a while. Yes. Yeah, but it is still... On one sensor, so last place. <laughs> uh, so we got four more powers to arrange. Um, in the middle slots, we've got. Uh, well, I think they're Turkey all really is... tired, and I don't know how to do them. I think Turkey yeah, is in second last. You're but saying who's second to last? I would say Turkey, but okay, uh... yeah, Turkey second to last. I agree completely. 
I mean, it does depend whether the uh, factions around them are going to stay allied or not. Um, but because it is everyone tiny. else is on five, they're on three, they're second to last. Okay, <laughs> very fair. Uh, right. So among uh, Germany, Austria, Italy, what is your choice of third place? Too hard. They're all central powers, and they're all better than me. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, um. God. Does this mean I'm going to have to make the decision? As I, I much prefer to just lean on you and make you do it, so... <laughs> Italy has four fleets. I don't like being four fleet Italy. Minus points. Alright, so... Um, Austria still has a fleet. I don't like having a fleet as Austria. Minus points. <laughs> Germany has... I think Germany's the one I'd want to play the most from this position. Okay. I, I will put them in third place then. Um, I think that's a Germany's good enough third assessment. on this board. Oh my god! I think that's correct. <laughs> See, that's the thing, right? All of the middle powers are so even. It's it's really hard to say who is in third. But yeah, one of them is in third. <laughs> and whichever one you pick, it's like, wow, they're in third. Because uh... they're so much worse than the first two. Yes. And they're so much better than the bottom two. Yep. Uh, okay, I would say, let's put Italy in third, because Italy built, and if you build, that means you're going to continue building, right? Oh, That's yes. how it goes? That, that is always, always. You never go down after going up. It feels it's... so good to put that thing on the board, man. So yeah, Italy is third, Germany is fourth, Austria is fifth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, Italy building a fleet here as well is just... I, I think that raises Austria up a little bit. Um, it does, doesn't it? But Austria's got this fleet in Bulgaria that's going to get disbanded. Like. That is true. Austria has that clump of four centers that are never going to get taken at the moment anyway. Um, yes, with Italy being on four fleets, for sure. But then, how do they expand? It's that has to bring difficult. Austria up. No, actually, honestly, that has to bring Austria well ahead. Because Austria's just, just not going to die. Ever. Yeah. They can attack Italy. Italy can't attack them. Russia only has two armies in the south because they've brought that St. Petersburg army north. They have four armies. Austria has more armies than everybody else combined in the east. Austria's not going to die. So does that make Austria third place? <laughs> yes. Because everybody else can die, right? Germany can die. Austria cannot. Italy can die. Austria cannot. Okay. So then Boom. we have. We did it. Austria third place, and then Italy fourth, and Germany fifth. Yeah, whatever. Like right. Germany is still in a like decent position, but those three are all so close; it's, it's impossible to tell. Right. So France first, uh, Russia second, and then Austria, Italy, Germany, and then down at the bottom we got Turkey, and then poor old uh, England hanging on in Liverpool. They have become scousers uh, forever. <laughs> Potentially, or as long as France will let them live there. Um, right, so, spring 1907. Well, uh, I'm not sure the power rankings change in the South very much, aside from the, us being quite happy that Turkey was put second to last, because they are now in even more trouble. Uh, yes. Yeah, and then Austria is just, like, doing nothing right now. But keeping Bulgaria, which is something. Uh, <laughs> and yes. Yeah, the repositioning into Armenia really hurts the Turk, as well as losing Aegean. Yes. <laughs> Alright, do you have anything else to say about the South, or shall we go to the, uh, the more interesting parts of the board? I like convoys into Yorkshire. Yeah, I guess we're going to the more interesting side of the board then. <laughs> um, yep. Actually, I guess the one thing to talk about in the south, uh, Italy is not harassing France with the fleet. They rotated everything around. Um, they do still have the fleet in Tyrrhenian ready to harass France, uh, but it's like it seems that those two have worked some kind of deal out, which is very good for France. But speaking of things that aren't very good for France, uh, they attempted to do a convoy into Yorkshire, which 
I guess Germany must have agreed to give them said convoy, but then Germany convoys uh, Norway's Yorkshire instead. Which is really nice. Yeah, I don't understand that. what that negotiation looked like. Yeah, see, looking at it from the face of it here, you would expect Germany to quite like that offer because it puts them into Belgium, right? And then you, you have the position on the French again. Um, why don't you want the French army in Yorkshire? Is it just because France is going to get a build if you do that? Because then France is going to be like, oh, look, Germany is growing. They're on six. They're going to take my home centers. Ah, oh, I'm so scared. Russia, you got to hit Germany now. Or something. Um, and by convoying that army into Yorkshire, then they're never going to take the British home centers from you. And you basically have them on lock for a long time. You might just become England. Right. Um, and so you might be have more leverage because the only centers Russia can gain would be from Germany. Whereas by getting Russia into the British home centers, Russia is going to take from France instead. Yes. I think that's, that's a very solid explanation. It also proves why uh, these players are better than me, because uh, I, as Germany, would probably have gone, hell yes, I'll combo you out of Belgium. Let's, uh, I, I, I would quite like that, thank you very much. Um, but you're, you're absolutely right, this does seem to change the big picture more in Germany's favour than if they had just taken the thing that looks obvious. Uh, yeah, Belgium is the late game dot you don't want to take. Also, the early game dot you don't want to take. It's just a dot you don't want to take, right? <laughs> but it's a dot. You want to take dots. Yeah, but it's Belgium. Who wants Belgium? Yeah. It's a... it, it, you do want Belgium. It's just you don't want to like work to take Belgium. Yeah, that's true. And you don't want to be the person people can point at and say, Hey, look, they have Belgium. That means they're strong. Um... Just absurd how Belgium is the center that people do that for. <laughs> yep. Uh, so Russia is is in a very interesting position now, having Yorkshire, but no fleets around to actually push the advantage with it. Um, they that that is gonna harass the French a hell of a lot. Um, they cannot take Liverpool now. Uh, they can't even maneuver around to try and take Liverpool uh, because they're pinned in place by the Yorkshire unit. And even if they did manage to get something around to take Liverpool. Yorkshire can still harass their attempts to take it, so... Yeah. I think Russia has a little bit of a disadvantage here in that they don't have their extra fleet in Norway. If they did, they would then be able to push into Norwegian, which would be really nice. Um, but I guess they're just going to rely on German convoys continuously. Seems plausible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I really like this uh, turn just because it's super interesting in terms of the uh, the whole dynamic of the thing. Germany making this choice, and it's very clear from the map that Germany made a choice here. Um, we're going to see whether that ends up paying off for them or not. Uh, yeah, and we got a lot of time to see it. Yep. Uh, shall we go ahead to fall? Let's do it. All right, fall 1907. Um, I will reiterate, this game goes to a maximum of uh, 1916. So, yeah. Uh, shall we look at the south first? Because that's the uninteresting part again. <laughs> I hate to say it's uninteresting, but like, nothing is happening. Right? There's one move that happens in the south, and it's Constantinople to Ankara. Um... The very good defensive moves from the Turk here. They managed to counter the fact that the Black Sea is getting cut and defend Constantinople at the same time. Uh, but and anchor at the same time, right? Like, this was perfect. It was. It was excellent. But at the same time, they currently have three people uh, working to kill them, so all they are doing is delaying their demise unless they manage to but get But it's all fleets. Turn. Right? It's all fleets. And if Italy doesn't commit Ionian... Which Italy might not feel comfortable committing Ionian, because if they commit Ionian, then Austria could take Greece. Then, um, I'm not sure they could ever make progress. Yes, that's true. This is actually, um, that 
is something I didn't consider. Ionian's move is super interesting here as well, because if they went to Eastern Mediterranean, this position, this Turkish position, would just collapse immediately. Um, but they're not doing so because it's a top board. If you give someone like Austria the the potential to grab Greece here, they probably will, and they'll just also push this into is Austria. Right? I mean, just remember that, that Austria stabbed Italy like most brutally earlier in this game. Yes, exactly. Um, I would not be surprised if Ionian goes into Eastern Mediterranean. I would not be surprised if it's immediately followed by kick out of Greece and support yourself into Tyrolia. Um, <laughs> yeah or worse like the same move if if somehow austria can guess the correct timing of that yes like... it just happening immediately that would be devastating for the italian uh so it's very fair to just keep ionian in place but then that is really really making this uh this turkish attack much much slower um yeah you're simply never gonna break it yeah uh I mean, you can... Can you break it eventually? No, if with only three fleets, it doesn't work. Uh... Yeah, yeah, you're right. You cannot take this. Um, maybe the one way you can is if Armenia ends up in Black Sea, you could get yep. Sevastopol into Armenia and then do something, but then even yes, then, yes. does Russia want to move Sevastopol out? I feel like if Romania then ends up in the same position that Greece was ending up in the other way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so... It's the super interesting position where they all have a, un a, a like joined goal to kill Turkey. They all just need one more unit to commit to do it, but no one is willing to do that because Austria is in this position where they could attack either side. Uh, yes, I love. This that. is where, if I'm in Italy and I want this to happen, I would try to get a GN to Eastern Med, Bulgaria South Coast to a GN, and then Serbia into Bulgaria. Yes, that is probably the best way to make it happen. But uh, even then, I don't know if Austria would agree to do that, right? Because it just spreads their units a bit thin. But then Serbia remains pretty safe because you only have oh, and the less army Armenia. Uh, maybe Austria wouldn't agree. Actually, but that's what I'd be trying to push. Yeah, Austria goes then Trieste to Serbia, Serbia to Bulgaria, and Vienna gets pulled down to Trieste, and then it's defensible everywhere still. Uh, so yeah, I think that would be the best sell. But uh, we'll see whether they end up doing that. We can look in the West in the meantime, which is where actual moves are happening. <laughs> um, so Belgium gets taken off the uh, off the Frenchman. The German hitting both sides to do that, um, like d yep. they commit everything to taking Belgium, and they manage to. Um, yes, the only guaranteed way to do it. Yes, and I think that. I mean, that's a solid move from from Germany. Uh, ends up working out, and Russia manages to keep their unit alive. Um, do they manage to keep their unit alive? Yes. Oh, because Liverpool supports them into uh, Wales. <laughs> Last act of revenge from Gnome um, on the French here. That's huge, though. That's huge. Like... Otherwise, this uh, Russian army that was convoyed across just gets blown up immediately. Yep. Yeah. Uh, God. Yeah, well, things not looking so good for France right now, but still not looking horrendous. Um, I mean, actually, it is looking pretty horrendous. What are they going to do with Edinburgh and London now? They just kind of have to hope that uh, Russia and Germany turn on each other, right? Yep. The nature of being on top is you're not actually on top. Yeah. Um, you cannot take Liverpool either. There is no way to do that. Um, what would be your play here if you're if you're France? What would you try and do to sell uh, Germany or Russia against each other, I guess? Uh, on an attack against one another. I realize that's a tough question. <laughs> I, 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 look, man, if they can't figure it out, why do you think I can? What? <laughs> yes. How am I supposed to convince these two people to not attack me when I'm the strongest person on the board and they can both grow from attacking me? Because uh, they've set their alliance up beautifully. Like, that's just. 
<laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> it is really tough. I, I wonder if this is a point where you just start throwing sensors to one of them and hope that the other one attacks them. But like, yeah, but then I'm going to die. You, like... Yeah, that's also a really hard thing to do as, as France because you all, like... It's a hard thing to think about doing as France because you have such a nice defensive position that you then lose if you do that. Because I think the way to do it here would be to throw centers to Germany, but then... But that just balances them out! Germany's already down from Russia! Mm. Yeah, it's really tough. Right? You have to find ways to throw tra but centers then, to like, Russia! Throwing Edinburgh and London doesn't do anything, because they're going to take those anyway. <laughs> this is, uh... Right? It's just like me, again, I, like... If you put if you put me into this position right now in in the Riaz's position, first of all, I'm gonna be whatever, right? It's not gonna work. But I'm going to offer to support Yorkshire into Liverpool, and I'm gonna tell Russia that I'm not defending Edinburgh. I'll support him into the North Sea, and then I will just give him those two right now, and then I'm going to try to push him against. Germany as hard as possible. Say we can make a balanced alliance, just the two of us. You'll be slightly ahead of me for most of the game, and then maybe I can find the time to stab you in the future, but we can be relatively balanced. Or I would try to pitch that we can be equal, and then he won't have to stab, and then expect him to expect that he can outplay me. But that's probably the pitch that I would try to make. I've... See, yeah, I think that is the best pitch you can make, but at the same time, if I was Russia and I heard that pitch, I would take the no. support... Well, no, I would take the support into Liverpool, and then I would talk to Germany and say, hey, Edinburgh's going to be open, let's use this to our advantage and just push together. <laughs> right? Uh, you, you yeah, make Germany's sure problem is that if, yes, if Russia's the one that's getting Liverpool, it's tough for them to stay balanced with, with, um, with Russia, right? Germany's just going to be left behind. Yeah, is my is my concern, and so that's why I'm trying to feed Russia harder um, than than Germany can keep up. That makes sense, right? Because even if they do agree things and and get Germany into Edinburgh here instead of putting Russia in just to balance things, uh, Germany is still massively behind because Russia can just support themselves into Edinburgh anytime they like. Um, yeah. Right, and it sticks yeah. to the heuristic, right, of when you're feeding people, right, trying to destabilize an alliance, you want to feed the person who's overextending, right? Russia is overextending more than Germany is, so you want to feed them more naturally. Yeah, that that makes sense. That is a solid point. Um, but well, obviously it's not going to work, because Chris Brand and Peter McNamara are working together, and they're going to work together effectively. And they're not going to let you just destabilize them so easily because Chris Brand recognized that if he grows too much, he's going to get stabbed. So he's not going to do that. His southern <laughs> position is still tenuous, so he's not going to just accept a bunch of dots for free. Unless he thinks he can defend his position and, and solo off of it. In which case, oops, you screwed up and you've given Chris Brand a solo. Yeah. Uh-oh. Well, uh, I guess let's see how things pan out. Uh, well, at the moment we're just moving into the winter, right? Um, so, yes. plus one for uh, Germany, minus one for France. That is all the changes on this board for the winter phase. Um, Army Kiel. Uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, Germany, you want to sell, you got to get a bunch of armies. Yeah, uh, and Fleet Yorkshire coming off. Seems to indicate that Riaz might be going for the approach that you were talking about, where he just says Edinburgh is open and <laughs> oh, <laughs> tries to destabilize the alliance that way. Um, yeah, it's tough because this gives them. It means you don't control who gets it. Yes, that's true. Uh, but I mean, hey, it's not Yorkshire Fleet. Yorkshire's a pretty bad unit. Also, what else do you disband? Um, oh yeah, exactly. You can't disband Fleet Spain in this position as much as you'd like to, because that's the furthest from your front. I think the moment you disband Fleet Spain. Italy comes into the Gulf of Lyon and Western Mediterranean. They're like, hey, yeah. this whole crush Turkey plan hasn't been working because no one trusts each other. If you give me an opportunity, I'm going for it. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Winter, not that interesting because not too much has to happen. But let's see. Yeah. Uh, let's go to spring 1908. Um, and actually, so that it looks like Riaz didn't offer anyone anything. Or maybe he didn't. Uh, well, he didn't offer anyone support to anywhere. Um, 
Well, actually, London is support holding North to hold, so I guess he's throwing a, a helpful little support that way. Um, but clearly, uh, Chris Brand was in the know about this because he went to Clyde anyway. Um, he's just rotating around to push further. Uh, yeah. Yes, the interesting thing down here, um, actually, Germany is seeming to be doing very pro-French things. It's in convoying out of Belgium, but then not backfilling Belgium, not backfilling Rare either. That is exceedingly pro-French. You gotta be afraid of Chris Brand, man. Well, yeah. I think He's so, still I, big. I don't... I think I still push to the border here, because what is uh, Retro going to do to you here? Um, they could come down to Skagorek, sure, and then they've blown up your alliance for no reason and not gained anything. This is... <laughs> I I think I I advanced the border here, 100%. Um, I, I, I understand your feeling and your instinct, but I think this is why we can't play Central Powers, man. <laughs> hey, what's, what's this... the we in here? You said you can't die. <laughs> I'm sure I do well. Uh, uh, why do we always say that France is number one, right? Yeah, like, this, this is this is France, for... And then Russia. I just This is our proclivities. <laughs> I, again, I agree with you. This move doesn't make sense to me. But when I look at it, I like this position so much more than if we move Holland into Belgium. And mm. Kiel into Holland. Or Ruhr. Right? Are you going to make progress against France on land? No, probably not. That is true. <laughs> okay. Um, is Belgium the center that we want to sacrifice our position in the east to hold? No. This it's Belgium. Also true. It is just Belgium. Um, and to so... be fair, you can't hold Belgium anyway if... Uh... No, you can't hold Belgium. No, you can't hold Belgium anyway if France really wants it, right? They if could France tap. really wants Belgium, right? France is going to get it. So it's not even that great of a center to hold. And Eddie is important for us to take, so we want to get it quickly. I don't know. I think this is... I, I, I would never make this move. But I like it a lot now that I see it on the board. You may have talked me into, it, into liking it as well. well I still really don't like it because... You're telling Chris Brand you're not going to work with him anymore, and he's just positioning. You said no, to... no, that's not what it's. It's saying, "Hey, Chris Brand, I respect you, and I'm afraid of you." But then, what are you going to do in that alliance going forward? You just moved everything Look, away well, from the border of your common enemy. <laughs> not everything. Uh, we still have a fleet in the North Sea. We still have yeah. an army in Edinburgh. We can get into Liverpool, and we can do stuff, right? Maybe mm. when we're t maybe when I am taking London, maybe we can let Chris Brand back go into Eddie. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just we're just gonna lose Belgium now. This is, uh... Yeah, but Belgium is Belgium. Who cares? We're not yeah. doing anything. It, it's it's always super interesting to watch these, right, and see how some things. So, for example, convoying out of Belgium here, it looks super trustworthy, but it's actually just because you'll lose Belgium anyway. So you're you're making a play to gain more, right? But also. The strong alliances that in a normal diplomacy game you would expect them to just stick together and trust each other and gain all the advantage they can as a result of that. It's tiny moves like Sevastopol to Ukraine here prove that they're not actually fully trusting each other <laughs> in this scenario. Yeah, Chris Brand might be moving out of Sweden with uh, Sweden to Norway, but he's not going to leave himself completely open because uh, Sevastopol to Ukraine covers... The potential of the move uh, Munich to Cilicia that could just destroy his core, right? Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just really interesting to watch on a top board like this of no one trusting each other. We're seeing the effects of that all over the place. Uh, yes, these people yeah. are really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yet they still find ways to work together when they uh, see something that advantages both of them, um, but then they switch immediately afterwards, which is really cool to see. Uh, but yeah, so it, it actually looks like um, the 
Italian has decided to, well, has made some kind of pact with the French here, and as a result, Turkey's position is far worse. They've gone into uh, Eastern Mediterranean and Ionian, and they can now defend Greece and attack uh, Turkey at the same time. Um, but Do you also, think it's a coincidence that this happened right when France's position looks the weakest? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> it's a coincidence. Right? I just think that's exactly yeah, He was like, no, I need to make conscious sacrifices to my own position to ensure that I keep the West in check, that France doesn't just snowball and crush and kill anybody. And we've been looking at it and how important getting that fleet out of Spain has been for France for six years now. But Italy has just said, no, actually, you can't you can't use that fleet. Yes, it sucks. I am sacrificing my own builds here to hold you in check minorly. With one unit, it's so cool. It's all good. Yeah. Man. And that's why these countries are so hard, right? Like, this is a seven-person game. You would expect making this zero, like, hurt you and one other person is a bad move, right? On the face of it, that's just that's just how it works. Like, you want both of you to be gaining, and then you would, it's the you versus him in the end, but it doesn't work like that. You have... It's, oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Man. It's, it's, I think this was perfectly timed on the Italian front, right? Um, but then, man, I'm just looking at the Austrian moves now. What were they doing? I guess they expected to trade Greece for Constantinople, maybe? Uh, it's possible that Italy convinced um, Austria that they were going to move Greece into Aegean, Aegean in an Eastern Med, saying, hey, we'll give you Greece, and then I'll take Smyrna, and this is how we're going to finally break them. And then Austria was like, okay, sure, I'll backfill into Greece, and then Italy did it this way instead, so Italy can still hold Greece, but now they still have their fleet in the Eastern Med. Yeah. Um, and now Austria is going to be a bit annoyed. <laughs> uh, yes. And, okay, one other thing that changes the dynamic in the um, in the east a bit is this Sevastopol uh, move into Ukraine. It's obviously for good reason. Warsaw was completely undefended otherwise. Um, but Armenia now kind of has to go back to Sev, right? There's no other option here. No good option anyway. Maybe, unless, because, um, because Munich didn't move into Silesia, maybe you can use Sevastopol to cover, uh, Ukraine to cover Sevastopol. And yeah. we finally have enough units in the south, enough fleets, that we can maybe actually take something from Turkey. Maybe. Oh, wait, the way this worked out, we don't need to, right? Bulgaria cuts Khan, and then Italy ends up taking Smyrna. Right, easy. Yeah. And that's guaranteed. Oh yes, okay. So that does end up working fine for them. Um, Russia kind of has to give up their share by doing that. Uh, but, but like, they have to go back to Sebastopol then. They could make the tap on Ankh and Hope, but it's probably not going to work, right? Yeah, right, Russia's share isn't much anyways. So. Yeah. Right, so is there anything else to talk about here? Um, I mean, this is a super interesting board state, but uh, <laughs> it's going to develop into something. It's, it's a powder keg about to explode. Yes, 100%. And it will be very interesting to see where it explodes to. <laughs> Alright, so shall we move ahead to 408? Yeah, let's do it. Alright. Fall 1908. Uh, well, you were correct about Italy uh, getting Smyrna here. Um, and actually, Russia takes the risk and goes for Ankara. Um, and it works, right? It pays, pays huge. Pays, pays huge. so huge. They're going to build a fleet in Sev. That's ah. incredible. Oh, man. And that's not even the only build they're getting this turn. They got Liverpool as well. Yeah, uh, but they can put a fleet in Sev. That is huge. Man, that's so huge. Oh, I love these movesets so much. Um, it is risking Romania, obviously. Uh, but sometimes you take a risk to get a bigger reward, and the, this is 
This is an incredible reward. Getting an extra fleet in the south. I mean, it's a little painful because that fleet can't do anything else then except back up your stuff in uh, in Turkey, but I feel like Turkey is going to be huge in what decides the outcome of this game, right? Black Sea is one of the most important territories in the game, and since the Turkish centers are still relevant, Bulgaria and Romania are huge centers, you want to have it, and it's not like you're foregoing an army in Warsaw. Right? Yep. Uh... If you had to choose between them, I would be way uh, more torn up about it, but since you can just get them both, I think you're ecstatic as Russia here. Yep. So... Save people to fleet in St. Petersburg, even though. Instead of, like, Fleet Sev. Hmm. I mean, yeah, the North is pretty important. I... My instinct would be to build Fleet Sev Army Warsaw, but uh, maybe that's just because... Germany's mobilized so hard against France again. <laughs> uh, and Germany isn't building this turn, that's true. Uh, Germany what? is definitely Nine. building this turn, right? They got Edinburgh Oh, Germany gets London. London. Yeah. Sorry, I missed that Germany got London as well. I saw that Germany took Eddie, lost Belgium, but I forgot, I didn't, I missed the London part. Yes. Um, nice. I, I love how this has worked out exactly. Like, we were talking about how... Uh, <laughs> Russia, Germany could... Well, you were saying that um, Germany was abandoning Belgium for very good reason there, right? Russia, Germany have just converted this uh, offer that Riaz made to try and destabilize them and used it to get a stronger alliance for both of them, um, taking all of the British Isles in one turn. That is beautiful. <laughs> and and Germany has mobilized uh, entirely whole, whole uh, Ruhr and Munich. All full uh, of German units now. Obviously lost Belgium, but they can push it's back. Only Belgium. Yep. <laughs> and I feel like Denmark and Sweden both being empty is like the first example we've seen all game of, of some actual trustworthy alliance, like high trust alliance. Um, yeah, and part of it is that that's not exactly high trust. Yes, it is just right? one dot. Um, this demilitarization, it's been like one move at a time, right? You've seen there have been tons of subtle moves that Chris Brand has made, and, and, and Matt McNamara has been presumably asking for as, as concessions from him to make sure that Skagrak and Sweden have never been occupied at the same time. So McNamara has never needed to support hold Denmark, that there was no opportunity for fleets to go from Sweden into the Baltic, Right? I don't think there's been a fleet in Sweden since, like, 03 or something. Yep. And so mcnamara has been safe in that regard. And then there's just been slight concession after slight concession. And from Chris Brand's point of view, he's had two units defending Sweden, right? So that even if uh, McNamara took Sweden, Brand would have been able to retake it with two. I mean, unless backfills and stuff and it's serious committal stabs. It would have been okay. Last turn was the first turn, right, spring, where Chris Brand left it, so there was only one unit adjacent to Sweden. And he did this when he did that move from Sev to Ukraine, which both was covering Warsaw from a potential punishing stab for McNamara. So if McNamara went all in, he wouldn't be able to retake Sweden, but at least he wouldn't lose Warsaw. And it worked out time with when he can bounce in Sev to get this build in the south, right? Yeah. It's super elegantly timed that, yes, there's a little bit of trust there, but it's just give a little bit and a little bit more, and staying safe and defensive on both sides of it, and only making trust concessions when you can actually grow as a result and make a real advantage from it, instead of just taking a leap of faith and hoping that it works. This is so good. It really is. This whole game is just a masterclass throughout. <laughs> it's yeah. so beautiful. Um, but yeah, I don't think I can say anything any better than that. You've covered, like... Man, is there anything you want to talk about on the north of this board outside of this? Um... Poor old uh, England is finally getting euthanized. Um, but I think World no... Play of Tenom is worth, is worth saying. I think he... I really liked his opening and his start. Yeah. Um... But I think some, just, sometimes it's just you get into a position that you can't do anything from, right? It's the disadvantage of taking these these high risk plays, these very committal moves, 
sometimes you commit and then other people on the board recognize that you've committed and they have effi efficient ways to punish you for it. Yes. And in this case, yeah. It's a high risk, high reward play that ended up being not paying off um, at the end of the day. <laughs> but no, there's uh, no problem with trying to take a, a high risk, high reward play, uh, even if it hasn't worked out in that instance. But yeah, so uh, in on the south side of the board, we talked about how Turkey is getting completely dismantled. I think Austria mm, is probably a little sad that all of their allies are getting uh, <laughs> huge amounts of stuff and they aren't getting anything. Well, huge amounts being one center, but that is a huge progress uh, compared Especially to... Especially when it comes with the position, yes. right? Like, Russia's getting it with the nice positional advantage that fleet in Sevastopol is huge. And Italy is doing it, so they're growing whilst preventing any more fleets in the Med for the near future. So now Italy is the only naval power, and you can... I bet there's going to be an army build from Italy now. Yes. Um, they're finally secure. And so, if they build a fleet, they might do it as a huge concession to try to say, Look, Austria, I know we've had our problems this game, but like, I'm going to keep building fleets, and we can work together... I'm not trying to kill you, and then I'm going to send the fleet to the west and stuff. But I would view it as a huge concession in an attempt to keep an alliance together, rather than, um, rather than anything else. Yep. All right. Well, shall we go through to the winter and see what the builds are? I see it. All right. Well, uh, you were absolutely right about that army, but interestingly, no fleets of Asipol. Um Yeah, fleets need feet instead. The too important. I, I wonder if he was counting on Black Sea coming off the board, because this is... It's annoying for sure. This is really annoying. I mean, Black Sea never comes off, right? It's always Black yeah. Sea that you keep as, as Turkey, so... The... This is absolutely true, because it can give you that last survival chance. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, there have been games where you get down to this one Black Sea unit, and then it just randomly waltzes into Ankara? And a time when some chaos happens, and then you get lucky with that fleet Smyrna, and you can walk into Khan, and then you rebuild an army Ankara, you take Smyrna, and you're back. And it's two years later, three years later, and Turkey is back in business. So yep. fleet Black Sea, always keep it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll be interested to see where it goes from there. I have a feeling it will just die, but uh, there's not... I have a feeling he's not going to regrow this game yet. I agree. Yeah. Um, but there's always the potential. I don't think Austria wants to see Italy grow. I don't think Russia wants to see Italy grow either. So there's the potential Russia just supports it back into Constantinople and then they hold it there. Uh, yes. I mean, Italy and Austria can work together to kick it out still, but... Will they work together? So <laughs> after the yeah. army road build? We'll see. <laughs> yes. Um, Right, and then Yorkshire comes off the board from uh, France. I think that's the correct choice. Uh, there's nothing yep. that unit can do. Um, and then Fleet Keel, uh, which... I mean, it makes sense for moving against France, but it might have Russia being a bit nervous. Um, I think it's more... I don't... I think it's more that, right? Um, you want to keep parity in the north when the fleet count. You know that Russia's getting two builds. Fleet St. Petersburg is relevant right? Like, Norway can move back to Sweden, right? There might be a convoy into Eddie now. Like, France isn't top dog anymore. Now it's this three-way chaotic fight in the north. Yes. This is really interesting, actually, because Chris Brand is now massively the frontrunner on supply centers, but could collapse quite quickly because they're spread out quite a lot. Um... So yes. <laughs> we'll see whether this alliance in the north holds or not. Um, we are going to divide this uh, video into two recording sessions. So very soon you will hear us uh, cut and then come back to it probably next weekend. Um, but before we do that, we're going to do our 1908 power rankings. I feel like Chris Brand is solidly at the top at the moment. <laughs> is that your opinion too? Yeah, like, again, I feel like you, he, he is clearly on the objectively strongest position on the board right now. I feel like for this game, the power, these power rankings have been kind of useless because we need to be trying to look further ahead than just right now. Yeah. Like, 
to continue on with the same way you've done them, right? I think it's definitely Chris Brand number one. Um, he's like the way that these alliances have been working on. He's been doing great. He's got a really solid ally in Germany. They've been beating France. Germany's then number two because again, he's been really solid with Russia. Um, they can make progress against France. Belgium can go. It's just, I think they're about to go to war. I think they're about to flip it on its head. People in the south are going to look at it and say, "Hey, Russia's clearly the strongest on this board right now." Austria and Italy are going to look together and say, "Hey, you know, we can work together. We can take Khan and then maybe take Ankara if." Um, if they support Italy into Khan, maybe Austria looks to take Romania. Like, yeah, yes, right. Russia is clearly the strongest, but he's not so strong that he's unbeatable, and so there's going to be tons of chaos there. And then in all of that chaos, I think it's very reasonable that France can maybe slink in and start doing stuff. I think again, we have to put Russia number one, Germany number two. I think then Italy number three. In the yeah, south, I think that's reasonable with all the fleets there. <laughs> um, there Being is the no only naval power in the Mediterranean, right? Yes, the only person who can possibly contend with them at this point is France, I think. But France has other things to worry about. France is on the down, and Belgium is not at all secure. Burgundy is probably secure, but to secure Burgundy, Belgium is going to go. So it's this tough. It's it's tough. Yeah, uh, which is why I would put Italy above France. Yeah, in right, terms of France, uh, um, so in terms of the uh, what you were saying earlier about the power rankings and having to look further ahead, I feel like that's just like so in our normal games, our power rankings tend to be reasonably accurate going forward at least because players don't play the game completely one hundred percent optimally, right? And therefore, a player who gets ahead can stay ahead. But uh, in a like diplomacy is about balance of power. It's about pulling people who are ahead back to your level and then getting ahead of them. Um, so in a game that's being played by players that are this good, the power rankings are almost completely useless always because they anyone who gets ahead is automatically more of a target and therefore gets dragged back down again. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yes, so we will continue doing them as we have been doing, in which case I completely agree with you. Russia first, Germany second, uh, Italy third. Um, like, I'd be tempted to put France third, but I think your reasoning for Italy being third makes sense. It's kind of close between them, in my opinion. Maybe. Uh, my feeling is we overvalue France. Probably. Because it's France. But the fact that Italy has, again, secured total dominance in the Mediterranean... Russia didn't even build a fleet in Sev is is very potent. It's practically an edge power now. It's just the edge is the south of the board rather than being a corner power. Yes. 100% agreed. And Russia having uh, no armies in Turkey makes that even more so. If Russia can get an army through to Armenia, I think the Turkey, the Italian position becomes a bit weaker, but it's still... I do agree. I do agree, but that's not looking like the near future, right? That army's in Warsaw and Ukraine. Romania's under some pressure. It's unclear if Russia will have the luxury of being aggressive against the South at all. Yeah. Because the Warsaw might need to go and defend Silesia against Munich. Like, it's unclear exactly where Russia is going, so. We'll yes. Uh, and then France fourth, then, and then Austria yes. fifth, and Turkey sixth. Uh, and we yeah. say goodbye to England. Um, well played, but uh, <laughs> we are now down to just the six. Um, all right, so we are going to cut here, and we will, well, this video will still be in one piece, so you'll hear us come back again in a second. Okay, we're back here in winter 1908, and uh, because we've already covered this phase, we will jump right ahead to spring 1909. Ezio, is there anything that immediately stands out to you about this phase? <laughs> I'm noticing a lot of supports that, for things that didn't happen over in Turkey. Oh, uh, so yeah, I, I'm still new to this visual system. It looks like uh, you can hover over the province. Yeah, together. so I'm seeing Russia supporting Black Sea and the Khan, yep. which is kind of neat but I feel like it's just going to die and then not be able to retreat anywhere. Yeah, Austria and Italy both tried to support Anchor Indicon. I think it was really smart 
to not accept that support. Yeah. Right? Because you can't hold it, and then the fleet stays in the Black Sea and, like, cuts with Sevastopol and stuff. Um, and this happened at the same time that Austria, like, maybe attacked Russia, but I'm pretty sure that was, like, I don't know. I don't think they expected this to work. I don't know, maybe they did. Like, they thought that Ukraine was going to cover Sev or something, and so then this was a real stab. That's plausible. Would make sense. You Like, leaving Sev open here is quite bold, right? <laughs> Um, getting Black Sea out. I think we actually mentioned uh, last when we were recording this last week that um, Black Sea, like getting Black Sea out of Black Sea, is going to be a, a priority for the Russian. And he's just managed. It's uh, interestingly, Bulgaria didn't support Ankara to Com. Bulgaria sub tried to support Aegean up to Com. Um, the, so the Italian unit here, and the Italian units just ignored that and tried to support the Russian unit, in, and then the Russian unit ignored that and supported the Turkish unit. In. <laughs> Got it. Nice catch. Absolutely. That does make it more likely that he's just trying to keep the um, Italy-Austria alliance going and is just going to attack, um, was trying to turn on Russia now and say, hey, you, can, you should get through. Um, there's going to be tension between the two of them, we can get into Ankara and stuff. Um, probably was also expecting Greece to then backfill out, like they could convoy the army into Smyrna and stuff, and then they would actually have a reasonable attack if Italy had pushed there. That's neat. Yeah, that would make sense. I guess also, like, for Austria here, it's a priority to get those Italian fleets a little further away from the border, I guess. It being, sur yeah. it's surrounding Bulgaria and the Rome unit moving to Apulia now is really scary, right? It, well, especially yeah. a convoy to Albania would be probably the most scary thing that could happen right now. Um, which I suppose could I happen mean, anyway. the convoy into Bulgaria was also pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is true. Um, so supporting Aegean out from there would help a lot on that front if the Italian took it, but they did not. Um, Alas. Yeah. <laughs> I do love just the little signs of not trusting each other, like Venice and Trieste attacking each other. Um, <laughs> and yep, just very natural. After last turn, we talked about this uh, Denmark-Sweden situation of the fact that it took them like three years of planning to demilitarize these zones. <laughs> Suddenly they're both back in them. Um, I assume because they discussed this with one another, right? It looks like they're still very much working together. But, uh, yeah, it looks like it. all of that work on demilitarizing is suddenly undone again. Yep. Um, their coordination was able to get that French fleet and Clyde disbanded. Always a nice feeling. Yes. That is a good unit to have off the board, although... Well, I was gonna say, if France manages to rebuild it, that will probably be more useful to France back at home right now. But France is also losing Belgium now, so... They will probably not be able to rebuild that. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, Germany, Russia making significant progress here. I would say that usually, like, a three army, two fleet France in this kind of position, with three units uh, holding Burgundy and two units holding English Channel, is actually really defensively strong. But the fact that Russia and Germany have four fleets on that front already, like, they're. they're got three fleets in positions where they can actively attack the French fleets, and they've got one more on the back line in Norwegian, just one space away. Means this is really dangerous for France right now. Um, much yeah, more dangerous English than English Channel can be forced this turn. Yes. Uh, North Atlantic cuts Mid-Atlantic Ocean, right? And then you just yep. take English Channel. Um, and of course, okay. uh, English Channel then retreats to Brest, and you can hold Mid-Atlantic Ocean for a bit longer, but it's still the moment they get three fleets in this uh, English Channel Irish Sea North Atlantic Ocean line, uh, you're done for. <laughs> yeah, and this is where that fleet being in Clyde is kind of nice, because Clyde can go into Liverpool this turn. Um, or actually, no, Clyde just goes to the North Atlantic Ocean, North Atlantic Ocean moves to Irish Sea, uh, then you don't get English Channel. It, it's like, because it's in Clyde, it can get into the Irish Sea quickly, um, while North Atlantic Ocean taps Mid-Atlantic Ocean. Um, and so, the English Channel is going to fall really fast, Mid-Atlantic Ocean is not going to last either. And France, if 
Germany and Russia can stick together strongly, um, France is looking pretty cooked. I think France's saving grace here is that Germany might not be willing to commit that hard to these to these attacks. And right, so Norwegian ended up in Clyde, right? Yes. This makes Germany so much safer. Because now there is only one hostile fleet bordering the North Sea. Yeah, that is true. Um, and I guess that's why Germany is so willing to support this move, right? Uh, yeah. Two birds with one stone, getting the French fleet off and the uh, and the Russian fleet out. Yeah. yeah. This is this is really good, and this is like again a good way for Germany and Russia to be working together because Russia can't take. The North Sea right now, yes. which means Germany doesn't have to worry too much. Yep. So very strong position for Germany right now, um, and the even in the south, I mean, Russia is is in just as strong of a position, but spread out more, right? <laughs> so it's uh, it's a little bit weaker on that front. It could fall apart more easily, I think, than the German position can. Um, yeah, I think that's generally true of Russian positions. Um, <laughs> yes, just, it can usually get pressure from two sides of the board that are so far apart that they really can't navigate at all. Yeah. Uh, right. So, shall we move ahead to the to the fall? Yeah. Let's see it. All right. Fall nineteen oh nine. It looks like less movements in general here. Oh, the the Russian fleet actually does take the support now that the uh, Turkish fleet is out of Black Sea. Which is amusing to see. Um, poor old Ruben in the corner there. It, it basically, the only reason then that the Russians supported them into Constantinople was to get him away from Sevastopol so that he could then take the center. Yep. Yeah. There's no there's no viable retreat here, so it's fine. Yeah, but interesting happenings here. Turkey did support the Italian into Bulgaria, and it. I mean that didn't work because it was being cut from behind but the the actual move itself worked because it was also being supported from Greece so Italy gets into Bulgaria at the same time as Austria r knocks Russia out of Romania <laughs> so just general chaos going on in the south right now with everyone trying to take what they can get and Italy is the power that ends up a, a center um, plus because of it um, yeah yeah, Russia goes plus Constantinople minus Romania, Austria goes plus Romania minus Bulgaria, and Italy gets the Bulgarian dot. Yep, it's important that Austria can't even rebuild, though. They're disbanding their fleet in Bulgaria, but their home centers are all full. So... Oh, wait, no, 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 Budapest is open. Budapest oh, is open. Yeah, Budapest yeah, yeah. is open. Sorry, okay. sorry. It's like from Budapest. Sorry, 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 sorry. They can. They oh, can cool. rebuild them, but yes, I had not noticed that, but they... Actually, this is a nicer position for the Austrian than they were in before, because even with Italy taking a center, they have taken the only coastal center they could take, right? And yes. yeah, they get a build, so they could stick another army down and threaten more, but still most of the Italian units are fleets, so they're not really going to be able to do much against Austria anymore. Yep. Um, yeah. And the most likely center for Italy to take next is probably Khan. So maybe Italy's just going to take Bulgaria, and then Austria's going to be like, all right, fine, that was kind of rude of you, but I get it. Now go go hit Russia and Khan and take those dots. Hmm. I'm wondering if it may have been a mistake for uh, Russia to take Turkey out here, um, given what's happened. Because now they have just the one fleet to defend against the Italian, as opposed to two... Although I suppose they would have lost the unit from Romania if they hadn't, so... Yeah, I'd rather have a unit than have Turkey alive with the fleet in Khan. Fair enough. Plus chaos. <laughs> I, I'm surprised we didn't see uh, a convoy to Albania happening at the same time as this um, attack on Bulgaria. But I guess they felt like they needed to defend uh, Greece. Just in yeah, case. Yeah, I mean, that's what they did, so I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the Russian attack into Galicia instead of defending Romania? I mean, obviously, it's looking at it here, yeah. It is just a misguess. <laughs> um, it's like, misguessing this way is worse than misguessing the other way. 
right? You'd much rather not lose the dot in this building year or turn. Um, and so I think most of the time, Chris Brand is going to support hold Romania here, but you need to have that occasionally you will make the defensive positional move rather than just the defend the dot move, because if you only ever defend the dot, then every time it's a fall move, people, your opponents are going to make positional moves against you, and then you're going to lose the dots next year. So it's important to do moves like this. It's just this time some, it got punished, and it's a little set. Yeah. And it, it, it is quite an impactful punishment, because if, they, if uh, Russia had managed to support hold Romania here, that is an extra unit in Sevastopol. And suddenly it becomes a lot harder for Austria to assault that line, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like just for that reason, I probably would have support held Romania here, regardless of the fact that Galicia could would, might have been the more likely attack from Austria. Um, yep. But then that's knowing that I'm getting the Italian support since Constantinople. I guess there's no guarantee of that. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where again, I think. The vast majority of the time, Chris Brandt is going to support Hold Romania. It's just given that, right, like a, a, a B player, right, it just looks at the analysis that we just did. And it's like, oh, Romania is really important to hold this turn, so we just have to hold it. And then Nikolai is, 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 is an S tier player, and he's like, oh, most players are just going to make really standard defensive move here. And so if he was playing against a worse player, I think he would just have gone for Galicia and been happy about it. But Chris Brand knows that that's how you beat the worst players, and he's like, well, that's how he's. Right, that's what he's going to do, and then he did the standard counter to that, and then, oops, Nicholas Iria is just one, one level deeper. I don't know, I think that's basically what happened. Right? That's yeah. kind of sad, but... It is kind of one oh, well. in front of me uh, situation at the end of the day, right? Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes. Um, right, so that seems to be the east, which is certainly the more chaotic of the two uh, spheres. Right now, the north is still the German-Russian alliance, but again, you can see they don't really trust each other massively because Denmark and Sweden are still uh, just attacking, well, are now just attacking each other and not moving out. Um, Norway doesn't move out either, it's just going to hold there until North Sea is out, I guess. But then, would I move North Sea out while Russia has a unit in Norway? Probably not either, <laughs> so maybe those are just going to be stuck there as well. But they do manage to get English Channel, and they've got Belgium, so good advances from them uh, this turn. Yep, standard progress, I think we were expecting to see. Yeah, you, you, can, see, to you can see uh, France's diplomatic effort here was to offer support for Wales to London um, using English Channel, which of course would have worked uh, if, if Russia had taken that... Um, attack, but Russia decided it's better just to stick with Germany in this position. Do you agree with that? In uh, Do you think in oh, this I mean, position it's... you would stick with Germany as Russia? It's really tough. Um, like, if, look, if you could get me, if you could get a France to, like, really commit to working with me forever, then yeah, I'd rather work with France here, but I've been at war with France for a while. And I'm not at all convinced that France would stick with me. And I have this trust built up with Germany so far. We've been coordinating relatively effectively here. Um, and, like, what if France just doesn't, and then he gets me to stab Germany, and then doesn't actually help me? Then suddenly I've thrown away my only solid ally. And I think it's more likely that Germany works with me than France, who is on the defensive and is going to say anything to get the attack to not work. Yeah, and the moment you take that support against uh, London, you are then at the mercy of France's uh, decision on whether to continue supporting you or not. Um, yeah, because France might just go and say, hey, Liverpool and London are nice centers. Germany, I'll let you fight Russia over there, and then I'll go take back these English centers, and we'll just hold our line here in Burgundy, Picardy, and we can be happy. And I could see Germany saying yes to that. So yeah, I think this is the longer-term state for strategy. This is a fascinating board all around, right? Because we're seeing the impacts of... Uh, obviously, we've talked multiple times now about the, the whole trust situation. But we're seeing in the South, it's everyone fighting for their own advantage, like immediate advantage. Um, which means no one really trusting each other at all. They're all working against each other continuously. Um, 
And in the north, we're seeing this alliance, which has managed to start crawling across the board. And you can see, like, the very clear difference between this situation where everyone is attacking each other and trying to take what advantages they can get, and this situation up here, which, you know, for each player is initially a little bit less advantageous because they don't get a, themselves ahead as much, right? But because the two of them have stuck together... Um, throughout this and have built up that slight degree of trust they are actually resolving their sphere <laughs> which then means that if this continues and Germany, Russia actually roll France here, suddenly Italy and Austria are in a lot of trouble in the south because they could just continue <laughs> and even if yeah, they don't about this alliance between the two of them between Russia and Germany is that they haven't made any moves that are self-sacrificing seriously they haven't ever given the uh, the other the opportunity to seriously punish or seriously take advantage of them. It's always been both of us are like supporting the other person in there. Uh, we're going to help cut support, while and this support is important for both of us. But while I'm cutting this support, I'm not leaving you the open to walk into Sweden or walk into Denmark when I can't retake it. I'm not. You don't have three armies in Livonia and Warsaw and Galicia ready to walk in on my eastern front, and I'm just ignoring that, right? Like. Neither one of them has ever been particularly exposed. We even saw um, Chris Brand potentially lose Sevastopol because he was worried about Munich walking into Silesia a couple of years back. Like they're they're working together in a way that is safe and mutually beneficial, and as a result, they have to make slightly counterintuitive moves somewhat. Yeah, and generally slower moves, right? Is the important thing there. Um... Yeah. It, they could have advanced much, much quicker if they'd both just completely trusted each other, but they are not willing to do so. And it's worked out well for both of them. Um, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and, like, what I was mentioning with the Austria, Italy, and the South, even if um, this Ger if this Germany-Russia alliance does manage to roll France and take out France completely, even if they don't stick together beyond that point, so if they turn on each other and they don't go for Austria, Italy over the line... I think it still is really bad for Austria and Italy because whoever gets the advantage in the war in the north is probably just going to win the game. Because they're only fighting one person up there at that point and they have more supply sensors between them, right? <laughs> between the two of them than the uh, the southern powers have between three of them in the south. Although, Yeah, notably it's going to take a couple of years before France gets crushed. And so there's a lot of time left before you have to start making those types of determinations, I think, as Austria, Italy. Yeah, I am curious as to whether it will cause one or both of them to come up north a little bit and see if they can influence stuff. Um, maybe the easiest thing to do with that would be an Italian fleet headed west just to support the Middle Atlantic Ocean. Uh, but it's... Oh, man, that's a tough call to make because those fleets... They are a fair few moves away right now, <laughs> and they're all kind of necessary um, for advancing in the East. So I guess we'll see. Shall we move ahead to uh, Winter 1909? Sounds good. All right. Winter 1909. Oh, Fleet Naples. That surprises me. <laughs> yeah, looks like he wants to send a fleet to the West. Yeah. Oh man, even I, I would have thought even if I was sending a fleet to the west here, I think I would have sent Ionian. Mm, maybe not, because then you have to leave Greece or Bulgaria to cover Aegean, which is painful. Or Smyrna. I mean, that's also painful, right? <laughs> With, yeah, uh, I like leaving units in dots. Yes, <laughs> especially ones where there's a Russian unit in Sevastopol now that could just walk down to Armenia. Um, although Romania is pinning it, but ignore that unit yep. in Romania. <laughs> if he gets something back to defend, then uh, Smyrna is is in a bit of trouble. Um, but yeah, so it looks like Italy is going to defend uh, France. That would be my interpretation on this build. Um, thoughts on Fleet Kiel? Um, raises my eyebrows as Russia. I'm a little concerned, but... It's like, I feel like we have enough fleets in the north already. If we're going to take care of France, we don't need anything in Yale. We don't need any more. So armies, now it's time to start pushing south. But that's another fleet. So as if I'm Russia, this is a really big warning sign. 
alarm bells are ringing. Yeah, this is so dangerous for Russia now because if Kiel goes to Baltic, Sweden's gone. There is no. In fact, actually, there's no way that Russia can defend against that at all this year, right? Um, they can just maybe move into pressure in Silesia and hope to pressure. But Sweden is yeah, just hope gone. Yeah, pressure and like they wants. can start if they pull North Atlantic Ocean back. Um, there's a chance they can like get compensation in the form of the North Sea. Which is, yeah, that would be a huge compensation. Man, I, I guess I see why Germany is building this now. I'd be sad to see him stab Russia here, because I feel like they've just gotten France on the ropes after however many years of <laughs> of pressure. But it does make sense, because this France block is really hard to crack still. <laughs> even Yeah, without more trust from both sides. Yeah. yeah. And hey, it becomes even harder if that Italian fleet gets into the Western Mediterranean. Um, right, shall we move ahead to the spring? I think we're going to see some bad turns for Russia. Alright, well, let's see if that's the case. Uh, yes, it certainly looks like it is the case. Man, I didn't even realize uh, Sweden has an army, so he didn't need to support himself to Baltic even. He could just yep. use that support on North Sea, which is... Actually quite bold, given that Russia had a move straight into London there if they wanted it. Yeah, but just ran stuck to the alliance. Just a turn. Yeah. All right. I mean, I am very surprised that Russia stuck to this alliance, went North Atlantic support Liverpool to Irish Sea. That must have been some excellent negotiation on Peter McNamara's part to uh, convince him to do that. Because after you see Fleet Keel, surely your first thought is North Atlantic Ocean to Norwegian. 100%. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was, yeah, full defensive was that point where I was looking at, but this is, also he's losing Khan in the south, maybe losing Ankara at some point in the future, it's just, it's it's real rough. Oof. Yeah, I guess it's not immediate losing of Ankara because Smatter is a fleet, right? So he's got that, yeah. <laughs> but that's like... But you can, you can convoy that pretty easily. Yeah, that is the only good thing he's got going for him. He even moved out of Wales. Oh, I suppose he's still threatening Edinburgh in this position, so it's not... That's equivalent at the end of the day. But, man, really bad turn for Russia. Yep, but the good news is like, hey, you know what? He was leading the board. He's not going to be leading the board anymore. France is still pretty strong, and if... If he doesn't stop Germany, Germany is just going to win, so now France is going to be attacking Germany. And, like, I think we're going to see Mid-Atlantic Ocean or Brest get supported into the English Channel. For sure, I expect to see that coming up. And then there's going to be more French fleets pestering Germany. That we'll see. Sense. I don't know, like, Columbus is a weird game. It, it is one of the, those moments where getting weaker can be the right play. <laughs> Although I, I still think Russia in this position would have preferred to not lose all this. Yes, I think this is more weakening than he would like to have, but also it's tough to lose exactly the perfect amount every time. Yeah. And Warsaw and Sevastopol are still safe for a while. I think he can convince Italy to stab Austria before that happens. Well, yeah, that, see, this was what I was going to mention. I almost think that, okay, so the stuff in the north was actually unpreventable. You would have preferred to move North Atlantic to Norwegian so that you could have some kind of... Oh, man. Uh, okay, I just noticed something else, but I'll talk about that in a second. You would have preferred to move North Atlantic to Norwegian um, so that you could have some kind of defense. But at the end of the day, you were always going to be on the back foot back there. That That's... Like, that is what it is. The worst thing to me down here is that Austria has seemed to make up with Italy completely. They've, I think this is an agreed trade on Bulgaria, looking at the uh, situation here, which is just horrific. If, uh, if Austria had managed to move a unit into Serbia as well, so that they could protect Bulgaria this turn, um, this would be... I think this might be lights out for Russia in the south just due to the fact that the Italy-Austria alliance would be the best decision for both of them. As is, Italy may be able to grab the advantage over Austria just by having Russia tap Romania and grabbing Bulgaria back this turn. But it's still... 
<laughs> I do not so like to see that get Russia in the South for sure. Yeah. Like, but again, no. Russia's not losing Sevastopol. Russia's not losing Orsa. Still has a fleet in the Black Sea. We'll see what gets disbanded because it's going to be pretty painful. But... Yep. Um, but the other thing I mentioned up north, right? The uh, the situation because of the move not going North Atlantic Ocean to Norwegian, Russia actually loses both Norway and Sweden this turn, right? Um, they've got North Sea, Skagerrak, Denmark, Baltic, so they can put two on both uh, on both centers. And while usually in this position or in a similar position to this, you could take a guess by tapping Skagerrak. Because Sweden is an army, you can only tap Skagerrak with Norway, and therefore uh, Germany has a guaranteed move set that takes Norway, um, which is just using Skagerrak against it. So, <laughs> poor old Russia, uh, yeah, gonna be floundering a bit here. Um, Jeez. I, I feel like there's probably other stuff to talk about on this board, but at the same time, I don't actually see anything else to talk about on this board. That's, like, the main thing. Alright, then, I guess we'll uh, move into Fall 1910. Um, you good for that? Let's see it. Alright. Yeah, Norway gone, Sweden gone. Um... <laughs> Oh, wait, they do keep uh, Constantinople, so not quite as bad as expected, but still fairly horrendous. Um, yeah, I think this is the rest of the board realizing that Russia was about to explode, and by losing Norway and Sweden and Khan, Russia would be disbanding three, and that's just too crippling for... Russia to survive, Germany would likely chest solo, if that was the case, because Germany can't break through the... can't be broken in the West. So I think this was reasonable on the part of Italy. They still have the ability to take them kind of whenever they want, but lots of pressure now on Germany. Yep. And, like... So th this is a super interesting move, right, the Constantinople to Aegean. I think... As you mentioned, it is probably correct. You don't want to see uh, Russia disbanding too hard here because then Germany just wins. But at the same time, Italy could have asked Russia to tap Romania for them with Sevastopol and then gone for Bulgaria. You could say, I'm moving Constantinople to Bulgaria with support from Greece. Uh, if you tap Romania here with Sevastopol or with Black Sea, then you keep your center and then I get my center as well, right? <laughs> so we stay even. Pitch, yeah, I think the pitch was to get um, Austria to also attack Germany here. Oh, I see. Was to get a ton of armies on the German front. I think that's that became the alarm bell. Ding, 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 ding. It's a, it's a German solo coming up. And so all of the diplomacy was focused on that. And I think um, Nikolai was looking at this and saying... There's probably going to be enough pressure on Germany. Yes, he's building two. That's still only 10 units. France is still there. Russia still got an army on the mainland, on the, on the British mainland. Like, this isn't exactly a solo yet, or even particularly close to one. So I can still be more free than I otherwise would be. And I think that's, that might pay off for him. We'll see. Yeah, that makes sense. It is one of those situations where, like, you have a massive massive advantage from not going and joining in with everyone else. But if everyone thought like that, then Germany would just win the game. <laughs> yep. So you have to read the table really effectively and see how much effort does have to get put in to stop the solo. And if the board is going to meet that without you needing to do it, then great. You're fine. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's look at what else is going on here. We do see, I, I mean, you mentioned that France was going to push back out into the English Channel. It has happened here. Uh, Liverpool to Yorkshire. So this is the interesting like counter move in that it's blatantly obvious that Germany is going to Edinburgh here, right? Because that is the only supply center you can attack. Yorkshire is a really good unit to have an army in because it borders almost everywhere in the British mainland. So Chris Brand has done the positioning play. He's gone, hey, I'm just going to go to Yorkshire behind you and now suddenly I'm threatening all of your, your British uh, supply centers. And this position doesn't look good for, for Germany, actually. They get two builds, which is excellent, 
but they also have Italian Army Tyrolia, Russian Army uh, Prussia, and then the important ones are Russian Army Yorkshire, Russian Fleet Norwegian, French Fleet English Channel, and Russian Fleet Wales, so they are guaranteed to lose probably both Edinburgh and London in the coming year. Is that correct? Maybe not Edinburgh. Um, but certainly they're going to get pushed back from that line. Yeah, this, this is going to be a tough fight now that France has gone back on its feet. The Russian disbands here are still going to be key because Russia has to lose two units and Russia might want to keep that army Ankara, that fleet the Black Sea. Those two units are kind of critical to keeping their two Turkish supply centers. Um, and if they do that, if they disband the armies in Warsaw and Prussia, then they might just lose Warsaw. That seems kind of insane. Austria has five armies building one probably this year for a sixth. And so you can't go down to whatever two armies to defend all of your core. And so what are you disbanding in the north? Finland, St. Petersburg, Fleet Norwegian Sea. I think Fleet Wales probably has to go, which sucks because it's your most advanced unit, but what's it doing? And so this is where, depending on what Russia disbands, uh, the board looks radically different. Because maybe, yeah, Russia just says, you know what, I don't need Conan Ankara. I trust Italy fully, and I'm going to leave it. <laughs> yeah... I mean, if you could set up an arrangement between Italy and Austria to just bounce on Con, then you definitely don't need Army Ankara, right? But you still need the fleet because you need something to defend Sevastopol here. Um, man, even with that, you could lose a lot if, if Austria just decides to advance. I think I take off, as Russia, I probably take off Fleet St. Petersburg. Because I don't think you need both units there. I think you just need one unit to defend for the moment. Um, and it would have to be Fleet Wales. You have to just trust the French player to, to replace that. As painful as that is, but everything else is more painful. Seems tough, but that's why these disbands make it really different. So I don't think if you lose Wales, I don't think London and Eddie are guaranteed to fall this year anymore. Um... Yeah, so, I think London is, London is guaranteed to fall uh, right regardless, because you've got Yorkshire and English Channel on it, just to north. Uh, and I think Edinburgh wasn't guaranteed to fall in either case, because they had North Sea and Edinburgh against Norwegian and Liverpool. So actually, it uh, sorry, uh, North Sea and Edinburgh against Yorkshire and, and Norwegian. Um, so disbanding one off the British mainland is fine, it makes sense, because you're taking the same amount that you would anyway. Um, except that it gives France more opportunities to get back into the game properly. <laughs> but, I mean, that's what happened when Germany does the stab. Yep. France is France. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about here? I think let's just see the bad news for Germany. All right. Or for Russia, sorry. Germany's got good news. Yeah, I'm gonna very quickly mention Munich to Silesia is quite a bold move on Germany's part, trying to bounce the uh, potential Russian attack there. Um, <laughs> they could have lost Munich to a French walk-in, but obviously didn't happen. Um, I will go ahead to Winter 1910. Black Sea and Finland. Those are not the choices I would have made. It's, it's tough. It's really tough. This is just so, leaving Sevastopol open, right? Yeah, and begging Nikolai to not take it. I think Nikolai's going to take it. Yeah. I, I mean, as Austria in that position, you have to take it, right? You look at the north and you say, okay, yeah, Germany is going to be super strong if Russia loses those northern units, but like... This is how I, I win as Austria. Yeah, I have to get in the running myself. And I'm yeah. on 6, and Germany's on 10. This is my yeah. opportunity to do it. No, I take Sev, and I try to get that army into Armenia. Right, I just... That's how I get into Turkey. Yeah. Um, I probably don't take Moscow. I probably talk to Russia. I also move simultaneously into Bohemia, to be sure. Um... But that's, yeah, as Austria, I'm taking this every time. I, I, I do agree with you that I think Black Sea needed to stick around to stop this. 
Yeah. So what's okay? Okay, it's a little neat. So let's assume we did keep Lexi, right? Let's go through this world. You're Austria, and you see that. I think you still go after Russia. But I think what you do is you support Romania into Ukraine, and you move Budapest into Romania so that you have two on Sevastopol next year. And then you take Sevastopol from Romania, and now you're set up to take Moscow. Yes. I think by resisting, you might force Austria to commit more troops to your border, and that means when he kills you, he takes way more. But maybe, like this, right? When I was looking at the plan, I wasn't even considering moving a second unit into Ukraine. Right? It was just, I'm going to take Sevastopol, and then I might be backfilling. So, this is a, uh, it's it's weird, and again, it's just letting Austria kill us, and I think Austria's going to kind of kill us, but they might be cutting off a leg rather than stabbing us in the heart. Yeah, see, I was thinking of moving into Ukraine alongside this move to Sevastopol. Of course, it is a, a bit of guesswork there because Warsaw could just block the move to Ukraine. And if you're moving into Sevastopol, then you're not supporting yourself. So maybe it does make sense. It's just... I feel like there's potential that you lose Moscow this year um, with this disband, which is painful. Very but... true. Absolutely. Yep. That's, that's real. Yeah, but maybe this is the kind of situation where you look at that and you go, okay, well, I can't really account for the worst-case scenario because worst-case scenario, I die anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, and this might increase the likelihood that Austria doesn't. But yeah, you know, like your, your point about if Austria just says, no, I'm actually not going to hurt Germany at all. I'm just going to race, and I'm Austria, and I win a lot of races. Yeah, that's actually a pretty scary concept. I think it's tough because you're Austria with a huge Italy still, so you can never have any Mediterranean presence whatsoever. So if it starts looking like you might get someplace, suddenly you're going to need three units tied down on Trieste forever, and then you're not going to win any race. Um, so maybe you can't just race the 10-center Germany and as a 6-center Austria, but I could see that being a play that, that people could make, and as a result, that's really scary. I don't know. It's tough. But again, what else? Like, maybe Wales, but... I don't know, without, without Wales, I, I, it was my instinct too. It's just, I'm looking at it, and without Wales on this board, I don't know how much you actually gain in the British mainland. I don't think you ever are threatening to take the North Sea again. It's it's pretty important. I don't know. But, and then Finland instead of St. Pete? Yikes. Yeah, Finland instead of St. Pete really, I really was unsure about. I want an army there. Like, even if you take off St. Pete and just move Finland back, which is probably what you do. I think that's far superior to just keeping St. Pete on. Um, fleets are nice. I like Lord of the Fleets is Russia. Not, if you're... not fleet north coast when you're trapped in. I guess you can you're try and defensive. support it out with Norwegian. and then Yeah, but like, that's not going to happen. You pin Sweden down. or you, Yeah, you pin Sweden down if you do that so they can't advance. Yeah, it's tough. I don't know. I think there were no good options. I want to see how this plays out, though, because this is this is exciting. Well, before you see how this plays oh, okay. out, <laughs> we got our power rankings power to do. Oh, um, I will take uh, Turkey off the board because they are gone. Um, goodbye, Turkey. Again, well played. Like Both England and Turkey, I think, played pretty well. They just didn't have much of a chance uh, because of the situation. Yeah, I think Turkey right, was the last pick. Yeah, right, I think for a reason, so that's tough. Okay, so uh, yeah, it was the second last pick, I think, but it was that or Austria, so it was kind of <laughs> a difficult yeah, one okay. either way. Um, the, so our last power rankings had Russia at the top. I have a feeling that may have changed. <laughs> yeah, no, Germany building the extra fleet and then executing a hard stab is going to make that much worse, yeah. Yes, in fact, I think Russia goes from the top to the bottom here, right? They are certainly worse than everyone. Yeah, I think Russia's the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay. Uh, so the other order that we had, we had Germany second, which Germany is now first. I think that's indisputable, right? Uh, just look at the supply center count. Yeah, it is. Um, we had Italy third, France fourth, and Austria fifth. Uh, what are your thoughts on their ordering now? I think Austria is second. Uh, because of the Sevastopol play, potentially? Just because Russia is now super weak. 
Right, there's you have a total of six armies, and Italy and Russia have four combined that can mess with you. So Moscow and Warsaw are both going to be yours. There's a ton of pressure on Germany, so you can choose to go after Germany and maybe you'll end up getting Munich. Um, you can make gains that way, but I just think you're going to gain so much off of Russia being weak here. You can potentially get into Armenia, right? Like, maybe you can just walk into Khan. Like, Russia might not defend that for some reason, or like you can get Italy to support that or something crazy. I don't know, but I think that you stand to gain so much as Austria here. This is this is my dream, right? Russia is super weak. Let's just kill them. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I think Austria uh, second right now makes a lot of sense. I think I would... Pr yeah. yeah. Would Italy be third here? I think Italy would be third here, right? Um... It's a little tough um, because I'm not sure how Italy is going to grow. This was my thought too. They can't attack France because France is going to have to be propped up against Germany, or at least fighting against Germany. Yes. Uh, and Austria is going to stand to gain so much from Russia. Austria can afford to defend themselves. You have only fleets anyways. You have two armies who can't really kill Austria. Um, I think that Austria is going to be way stronger than Italy. So if a war between the two of them breaks out, Austria I think is going to come out on top. But priority, kill Germany, make gains from Germany. I don't see Italy gaining much, except maybe Munich. And how often do you see Italy hold Munich in any game of diplomacy? Yeah. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> yep, it is very much a temporary thing when it does. Um, so would you put them above or below France, then? Below France. Okay. But above Russia. Right. France is going to be interesting to see because like, their development is going to be purely based on how well the rest of the board counters Peter McMahon in Germany. Um, yeah. But they they do have quite some expansion potential here. They can get London and they can get Liverpool if they push Russia forward. Uh, Belgium, yeah, Belgium seems is like not off the table. Like, I think if England wants to force Belgium this turn, they technically, with Russian assistance, they technically can. France can, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which one did I say? You said England. <laughs> well, I mean, they're but basically yeah. at this point. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, no, that's all good. So, uh, power rankings right now. Here we go. Um, Germany first, Austria second, France in third, Italy fourth, and then Russia going from first to last in two years always painful <laughs> uh let's move ahead to the spring of 1911 all right well i don't think russia's last anymore uh who would you say has lost it oh after this yeah uh, probably italy but russia is not dying I'm curious as to why Italy falls into lost uh, as a result of this, right? Well, Austria's um, not killing Russia. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. I'm dumb. I wasn't even looking at Sevastopol. But yes, that yeah. is that is huge. Um, Russia is <laughs> suddenly a hell of a lot safer with the Romania moving out. I'm really I'm not surprised. sure how exactly Chris Brand convinced Nikolai to make this attack. I mean, it's it's possible it was just the old... If you do that, I am just going to let Germany win this game um, play. <laughs> Which works. I mean... It, it's an old standby for a reason. <laughs> yeah, and like, you actually, in this level of play, I don't think it happens very often. Because if someone starts threatening that over and over again, then you just start ignoring them. Or you get people who say, okay, you know what, whatever. If this person is going to continuously threaten this kind of thing, I just have to break it because otherwise I'm not going to get anywhere. I have to take that risk. Right? But these players I think are the kind of players who won't make that threat unless they absolutely have to and they absolutely mean it. And so if you hear that threat from one of them, you know oh god, I guess I have to listen to this. <laughs> Counterpoint is, I don't think they ever mean it. Really? I, I don't think they ever mean it. I think these players care about winning too much. I mean, fair enough. I think I have definitely come across some very good players who have made that threat and absolutely meant it in situations where they think they can't win if that happens, right? 
And I think it's fair to say if Romania goes in Sevastopol here, it's fairly impossible for Russia to win, right? Given I guess. six years left? I don't know. I just think if you if you start making those type like... If, if I see people follow through on that threat, I just don't ever want that person to make it into the endgame. Hmm. So, yeah, and I think these players know that, like, I don't know. I don't think people want to play games with, with card throwers like that, but I, I can't think of any other argument that Chris Brand possibly could have made to convince Austria to do it. I just, I don't even think that would have convinced me as Austria. I think I would have said, okay, do your worst. I think, I, I think Prussia back to Livonia was a good call, though. I think he pointed out, look, you can take Sevastopol, but you can't take Moscow because I am going to be defending it. Interestingly, the though, because of the order set that Russia made here, there was a potential for Moscow to fall if uh, Budapest goes up to Galicia, Galicia goes into Ukraine, and Romania goes into Sevastopol, right? Um, um, yes, if, if Austria did all of these things and then moves, um, but then there's absolutely no pressure on Germany still. Yes. Because he was very, I assume he was clear, I'm pulling back out of Prussia into Livonia, if you move into Sevastopol and are threatening to take Moscow, I'm going to defend Moscow instead of St. Pete. So you don't win that race. Germany's going to get the line set up in Warsaw, Moscow, and you're just going to be screwed. But, I don't know. Yeah. It's tough. See, I almost think you don't need that much pressure on Germany in the south at this specific moment. Because what it's doing is pinning down those units in the home supply centers, right? So there's no builds for Germany, sure, but they're not getting builds anyway. It also pins down the army so they can't go doing other things like protecting Belgium, but at, at present, do you need to stop them from protecting Belgium? Probably. Yeah, maybe you do. I, I feel like Germany is losing stuff in the British Isles right now, and that's something that you aren't really involved in either way, right? Yeah, but she needed to lose more than just the British Isles. Like, if if Germany can make progress into the Russian mainland, then by, like, taking Sevastopol and Moscow, right, then Germany might take Warsaw. Like, that's... And St. Petersburg, obviously. That's probably going. If Russia's defending against you as Austria, not Germany, and then maybe you can't ever break them anymore. And if St. Pete goes, then there's no more northern fleets from Russia being built. Presumably Russia's going to be disbanding. And then Germany might just have the game on lock. He might not solo, he might not get to 18, but he can probably pull at like 13, 14, and then be slowly whittled down before the end of the game, but still be the biggest. That makes sense. I, uh... This is an interesting thing about the move to Livonia as well. It's kind of a double uh, protection, right? Because it also has the potential to cover St. Petersburg here. Um, yep. Especially with St. Petersburg having moved out to Barents, which I think is a genius move right here, because it means you can cut Norway and support uh, Livonia up to St. Petersburg, um, which means that the support to St. Petersburg is uncuttable, except by Norway, I suppose. <laughs> But it's a risky game to take St. Petersburg, and it requires a lot of commitment against that older set. Whereas if you just had Livonia and St. Petersburg here, it's an easy take. You just have to dedicate pressure, cut Livonia, and then Finland and Bothnia attack. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Did I say Norwegian cut Norway? I just realized Norwegian is not in Norway anymore. <laughs> in Norwegian is not in Norwegian anymore. Um, for some reason, this map, I think it's just because I'm not used to it. It's given me blindness as to where, to, where the units are in the next turn. <laughs> I'm just yeah. looking so at the, where they are right now. The key point is that this order set from Russia forces Germany to commit Norway to taking St. Pete. Whereas the previous order set did not force that. Yes. Finland and Bothnia could have worked with Prussia to take St. Pete, whereas this way Prussia can't cut the support from Livonia, so it requires Norway. And that is still fundamentally true. Whether that's by supporting and attacking to St. Pete or cutting Barents is irrelevant. The fleet in Norway is tied down for an extra turn. So I think that's very elegant. Yep. 
So, interestingly, in the north here, there was no way for uh, Germany to protect both Edinburgh and London, um, because they would have required uh, North Sea support Edinburgh or North Sea move to London. It can't do both, right? Um, the convoy of Belgium to London <laughs> is an interesting attempt to defend. It does actually work out. It bounces the unit out of London and keeps it in Belgium without any requirement to actually support hold Belgium here or any potential of losing the North Sea. Um, so very clever uh, order set here. Um, and it works out too in Belgium in that Ruhr taps Burgundy and that ends up working out. There were a few cases where this could have gone quite wrong, um, especially if Burgundy is pushed up into Belgium. But There's, There is one order set actually that I was really tempted to that I would have been really tempted to put in as the Russian-French alliance, which would be to have St. Petersburg cut Norway, Norwegian Sea support English Channel into the North Sea, and Mid-Atlantic Ocean backfills. Ooh, um, that's a nice one. I would have been really tempted to do this. It gets absolutely annihilated if Norway taps Norwegian, which is, I think, why they chose not to go for that moveset. That makes sense. Um, but that order set has a really good chance of taking the North Sea and then backfilling and suddenly France is in the North Sea and the English Channel um, which is obviously quite fun. Yeah, it well, it doesn't immediately guarantee anything on the British Isles but you're getting them anyway, right? And North Sea is the far better prize if you can get something. <laughs> yeah, I would of course um, link it with Wales to London in that specific context to stop Norway, North Sea from retreating there. Yes. Um, so at best, it's at worst, it's bounced. And actually, and so... in this case, that would have been beautiful because you would have cut the convoy with the uh, with Norwegian support English through, so you would have got into London as well. It would have been it would have absolutely annihilated this, but I think the risk of Norway cutting Norwegian was too great to make that move set. But it would just be very beautiful. Yes. But. Oh, well, there's always beautiful order sets that we can look at after the fact and say, oh, look at how cool this move is. But, yeah. Oh, well. Uh, all right, so anything else to talk about here, or shall we move ahead? Um, I'm really sad to see Italy just holding everything, but I guess it's what you got to do at some point. Yeah, like, like what else are you going to do with centers, this? Yeah. It's, uh, you can go for France and let Germany win, or you can go for Russia and let Germany win, or you can go for Austria and not get anywhere. <laughs> um, Probably let Germany win too, because Austria is going to be important against Germany. But, yeah. oh well. Like, in this position, I would be, my trigger finger, which would be itching in, in Italy's position, which is well, why this I'm is not... Why we're untrustworthy. Yeah, this is why I'm not in this game. Right. Yep. Um, right, let's go ahead to fall 1911. Uh, well, we can cover the east quite quickly. <laughs> Nothing happens. Yeah, three bounces Yay. in uh, Constantinople, and then everything else being pushed up to the German line. I was actually wondering whether Austria would turn around and grab Warsaw. Um, just like... <laughs> But I suppose if they were going to do that, they would have just grabbed Sebastopol. There's no reason to delay it a turn. Um, I mean, maybe there's some potential arguments, but yeah, it's not, not worth worrying about. Yep, but that is the East covered. Do you want to <laughs> have a, say what you've noticed in the West? Um, This is going to be pretty ugly for Germany, of course. Like, they're losing Eddie and Belgium. They had their army on the British mainland disbanded. So now Russia is done with two fleets and an army up there. Looking likely that they're going to get London in the future. Um, Russia is staying neutral, right? They only lost St. Pete, which is a miracle, and they gained Eddie, so there's no more disbands coming from Russia. And France is going plus one, probably going to see a fleet get built. I don't know, man. This is like, this is how France gets wins. Yeah. Because France is unkillable. <laughs> it is interesting to see how France was like on the brink of getting demolished, and then suddenly it became beneficial for Germany to stab, and now suddenly France is back in the game. It should be noted that looking at the outcome here, it's easy to say that Germany made a mistake by enacting that stab, but I think it was actually a very sensible move in the situation, right? 
because there was a good chance that if you're not on a board that can react like this, with Italy sitting back, Austria pushing everything to the line and disregarding Sevastopol to do that, um, and France and Russia immediately working together, I think Germany just wins off of that move, potentially. <laughs> yeah. But uh, in this specific situation, it looks like it may have been a mistake to make that stab. Um, yeah, I mean, it, the only mistake I think might be that it was just a, like a year too early. I think there was potentially a way for for that stab to get even better for Germany, but it's tough because right, the, the optimal year to look for stabs are years when you're building and your ally isn't because that's when their home is usually the weakest and this seemed perfect. It looked like Russia had overextended in the south and so Russia was going to be losing Khan and Ankara potentially if you execute this stab successfully. So I think it like there was probably going to be no better opportunity to do it. And if you never stab Russia as Germany here, I think Russia will eventually stab you and win just due to how the units flow. And so I'm not sure there was ever going to be a better time to do it. So I think it was just necessary. And it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it should be noted also that losing the... Like, Germany is clearly losing centers here, but they also gained quite a bit out of the stab, so it's not necessarily a net negative yet. Um, yeah. So, in that case, it looks like a mistake right now, but it might not be by the end of the game. It certainly put Germany in a stronger position than they were previously. The, the big question is going to be, is France getting back into the game going to ruin Germany's chances? Um, right at the end. But yeah, so I think the maybe the important moves to look at here, I'm curious as to what you think of this convoy right now, um, because Germany does lose Belgium out of it. Oh, but they had to lose... Okay, yeah. They had to have a support hold Munich. There wasn't really an option there. Yep. So Belgium was lost, and I like convoying rather than just moving North Sea into London because it's just a little cleaner. Yes, and it means you can't get outflanked with the uh, English Channel to North Sea move. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. So Germany starting to fall apart. They do manage to get St. Petersburg, uh, so they save themselves a unit. Um, Clyde is forced off the board. Which may actually be their only required disband here. I think so. Uh, they lost Edinburgh and Belgium. They gained St. Petersburg. So yeah, that will be... They'll manage to keep everything else on board, which is huge. Um, they do have a nice solid block in the middle. If they can get people to stop all being united, <laughs> they have a pretty good chance of expanding back out again. Yeah, but the good way to do that is to no longer be the top. Sadly, they still are the top. So it's not looking optimal. It's going to be tough for them to lose centers in a way that doesn't leave them dead. But losing these British Isles is maybe their hope. And if they can keep St. Petersburg and disband another Russian fleet or two, they're feeling great about their position because you can't really take Scandinavia or the British Isles from that point. And then it's just Germany versus France in the end. Like taking St. Pete as the northern naval power is great. Yep. Alright, so is there anything else here you want to talk about? Not for the fall. I think the only person building is for Rams? Uh, yeah, Russia remains even, Germany remains even because they got a unit blown up, France gained one, and the entire east is nothing going on, so yep. Uh, are we'll you expecting that. a fleet or an army? Absolutely, always fleets. Yep. What's the army going to do? Uh, it could sit behind the rest of the units <laughs> and cheer them on. It could be emotional support. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we've seen plenty of France's build way too many armies. You never know. Not here. Not on Come this. On. Not on this one. All right, let's move ahead to the winter of 1911. It is a fleet. <laughs> It is Sounds not good. an army. All right. Um, I think this fleet rest is going north, by the way. We can add it to the tally. Yes. <laughs> I, I would <laughs> certainly expect that here. Mid-Atlantic Ocean, the North Africa, rest of the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. They'll never <laughs> see it coming. 
maybe I can grab Tunis now from the Italian with four fleets in the south not doing anything. <laughs> Man, the Italian is in like such an, a, a powerful position that can't do anything. <laughs> it's like... Yep, it's the most boring Italian position, but... Again, you gotta know when to sit back as Italy, and you gotta know when to make moves as Italy, and I never can get them right, so it's... Uh... Yeah. Can I point out that, by Supply Sense account, the player in second right now is Russia? <laughs> yeah. But, like... Uh, it's a scary second place. Yeah, I mean, y Russia isn't one nation, right? It's the uh, conglomerated republics of Russia, Northern Turkey, and... Edinburgh and Liverpool, <laughs> just... Yes. Those, uh... Oh, this is fun. Russia doesn't have any centers at the moment that aren't home supply centers. <laughs> that is very true. They're just three different nations' home supply centers. I really centers. want them to take London and Smyrna, and then just end on that. <laughs> and St. Pete. I want them to retake yeah, yeah. St. Pete, too. So they can just be the the three nations that have been the two that have been eliminated in themselves and that's it be all of the corner powers and still not win the game <laughs> <laughs> okay uh so anything more to talk about about breast or shall i just move ahead let's do it all right spring 1912 Right, I'm just interpreting things here for a second. I do see that Austria, like, this is the first thing that stands out to me. Warsaw to Ukraine and Galicia to Budapest. And then Prussia and Silesia moving back. It looks almost coordinated, but I don't know why Galicia went to Budapest instead of Romania. So, like, if, uh, if they both knew that the other was doing it, right? So it makes me think that it was coordinated. It's they play like they can look at the board and say, guys, we're literally never gonna break through the stalemate line, right? We have four armies on the stalemate line, but Russia's got Fleet Baltic and all the units in the world. If we just mash ourselves at this line, then France grows and we get nothing. Ever. Yep. This isn't gonna work. Germany, you can't take anything more from us. You've already got your gains. Go slap the French around for a little bit. Do that. But we need to figure out our own our own stuff out, and we're not going to literally kill you immediately. You have to go hit France, and I think that's what these moves are doing. Yeah. Why do? You Which think is also incredible, by the way. Just to be in the game, and this is a live game, right? Yes. Um, Fifteen minutes. And to have this place. level of analysis and the ability to, like. I wouldn't make this move if I had 24 hours to stare at this board and just think about the optimal move for, for Russia or Austria. But once I see it on the board, oh, it's so obvious. If you don't do this, you never get anywhere. Yeah, I am curious as to whether you think, like, what do you think about Galzabud as opposed to Galtarum? It's clearly appeasing to the Russian to some extent, right? Yeah. But I don't what's... think you want the hard wars Austria right now. I oh, think... I wonder if they were anticipating Ionian up to Adria. I think maybe. And they That's just not impossible. They just guessed wrong on that front because Ionian did go to Aegean to try and make a move here, and because I mean, maybe Budapest try to make a Budapest. move, but also just like, dude, you don't need more fleece. And I don't know, you're Italy. What else are you doing? You've held all of your <laughs> units for like a full year now. Are you gonna just keep doing it? Maybe it's going back to Ionia. I don't okay, know. it's very noticeable because it's. They have held their units for so long now, and now they are not holding it. So this is clearly an aggressive move. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, they are wanting to make a move, probably on Constantinople, uh, but the one they can actually guarantee now is Bulgaria, because yep. Galicia moved to Budapest instead of Romania. Yeah. That's so, rough. Yeah. you got to wonder... Would things have been much better for the Austrian right now if they had just walked into Sebastopol? I feel like the answer would be yes. Even with the... Tough, because maybe German... Germany solos, right? Yeah. Like, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a tough one. Again, like if, if I'm in the position where we, we were talking about, it, if I was an Austrian player, I'm just going to kill Russia there every time. You can't, you can't stop me. Maybe Chris Brand could stop me. You certainly could stop me. <laughs> that is very true. It is the Ezio C dot take dot way. Yeah. 
Uh, but like, see more than just the thought, right? See a lot of thoughts and see a positional that would finally flip. I wouldn't have this constant threat of Russia and the East ever. I can finally kill them. Yes. I love, love killing Russia as Austria almost as much as I love killing Turkey and killing Russia is a lot easier. This is true because it does not require fleets. <laughs> Yeah, and so that's why, right, if I could kill Sevastopol and then get armies into Armenia, oh yeah, it's my favorite. Yep. yep. Taking Turkey with only armies is some of the greatest achievements. Yeah, and it should be noted that Austria has a pretty decent shot at the win just with, if they have what they have currently, and they get an army round to Armenia and take Sevastopol, then they have the potential to take those three Turkish centers plus Sevastopol, plus what they have ends up being 10, which is ahead of what Germany is at right so now. So the thing that I need to caution against is that there's no way that Austria will hold those Turkish dots against Italy. Okay, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Italy with a fleet in the Aegean Sea is never going to let Austria claim too much from there. Because if Italy ever thinks that you're getting too big for your breaches, they're going to get into Khan, and they're going to get into the Black Sea. And if Italy has a fleet in the Aegean and the Black Sea. You cannot get the Turkish centers from them, and you so then I think forever. yeah, you have a much, gives... a much nicer chance if you just take Moscow and Warsaw instead, I guess. Um, yeah. But like but... this Austrian position, even if you just have these six centers plus Sevastopol, Moscow, Warsaw, that is even with what Germany has. <laughs> so that feels pretty good, right? And then yeah. you can be pushed, putting some pressure on there. This Italian still is on only fleets, so they can threaten Bulgaria. They can take off the Turkish home centers, and then if they do that, they get the build armies, and then we've got some problems because then they're just going to be convoys into Albania, convoys into Khan, and suddenly it's tough. But again. Look, I would, I would have, we can, I assume people have talked about that potential stab ad nauseum. I think that's been one of the hottest topics from this game. Um, should Austria have moved into Sevastopol there? Um, and I'm, I don't know. I would have. But it was probably wrong. I, I think I would have too. But then again, I'm not talking to Chris Brown, so. <laughs> again, I, right? We're just looking yeah. at the board. It, it's so hard to accurately say what was the correct move without... Well, I mean, it's so hard to say what uh, accurately what was the correct move anyway, even without knowing the press. Um, like, it, it, yeah. If you did know the press, you'd have a slightly better chance of seeing it, but still even really still tough. Stuff. Um, right, you so... You know what's fun? Hold up. I just noticed that Norway is lost. Is Norway... Oh, there's only... Okay, Bothnia got South Coast, back St. To Petersburg, Baltic. and Bothnia can't. Sp yeah, no, there's that's it. Norway got lost. Ouch. That's uh, yeah, that's a painful one. And it's Norway minus London. France is growing. Russia's back in it, baby. Russia's plus one. They're not even losing anything except probably Khan. Yeah, Italy's taking Khan this turn for sure. Do you think they get? Because I, I feel like there's a pretty decent pitch from the Russian here saying to the Austrian, hey, Bulgaria isn't, you know, Bul Bulgaria we can't help, but we can make sure that if he goes for Khan, he doesn't get it if we support you in... Yeah, but I'm not sure Austria cares, or, yeah, I don't think Austria cares about that. I think yeah. Austria's fine with Italy stopping Russia from growing here. Just saying, build a fleet, pressure France, I'll deal with Russia. Royce. Do you, would you not take the deal if uh, Russia came to you and said, hey, I'm supporting Bulgaria and Constantinople? Um, you either you bounce you or you get Constantinople and then we have um, two on Smyrna together? And yeah, if Bulgaria Russia and offered and me Khan, I'd be tempted by it, but I probably would actually still not do anything. Okay. <laughs> Like, here, I really want Italy to be able to hit France, because I think France is going to be growing a lot. I want to be able to kill Russia, and I want France and Germany to fight. I eat Russia. Boom. Solid. That's where my game plan is right now, as Austria. Makes sense. A notably similar game plan to a few turns ago, and I think the most, the biggest priority by far is just taking Khan, and I don't want to piss Italy off by doing it, and Italy made this move to take Khan, potentially, so I'm just going give it to give it to them make him happy, get them in, in locked in a war in the East, and hopefully, or the West, excuse me, not in the war in the East, in the West, and then maybe we'll be okay. That's my whole goal here. Nods, nods. Gotcha. 
Okay, well, with Germany potentially going down two here then, Russia going up one, France going up one. Uh, I mean, it's still a spring phase, so it's a way off that, but that is likely what's going to happen here, right? Um, uh, I was going to say let's move ahead to the fall, but I actually do want to briefly mention it's always fun when you can see the neg like the the negotiations that someone who has no one on side is doing just from what supports they're throwing out. <laughs> so you can see North Sea here supports Barons to Norwegian, which you look at that and you go, okay, well, I guess what he wants to happen is for Russia to pivot all of these fleets against France. <laughs> and then in the south, you've got uh, Munich support Bohemia to Tyrolia. So that one actually, I would have been slightly tempted by as Austria because if you can get in oh no never mind if you get into Tyrolia then he retreats to Piedmont and you're still stuck um so that but down on the line, yep. yeah that would have been bad never mind <laughs> but these are like you have 15 minutes of phase right and if you've presumably Germany at this point is mainly just sitting at the game table with no one talking to him because everyone is attacking him. But when he can get in conversations with people, he just has to throw out whatever he can to try and get them off his back. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And you can see that from these. And they're not the things people are taking, but then you also see that he is being given a bit of a lifeline just from people being suspicious of one another um, and playing for their own advantage elsewhere. But they're not going to tell him that, because then he could use that uh, as leverage against them to get other people off his back. Yep. Alright, uh, shall we move ahead to the fall? Let's see it. Alright, fall 1912, and Norway goes just as you said. Um, well, let's see dozens go, which is interesting, because France had two on it. Yeah. Uh, that's, so France throws a support hold on London, so I think France was actually worried, quite worried about the potential of Germany and Russia working together to take it. Uh, <laughs> which, to be yeah. fair, if Germany makes that pitch in your Russia here, I think you are a little tempted to go for it. If you... No. No. <laughs> no? Mean. No. Your <laughs> sea thought, take thought instincts are leading you astray. You can only do it if you can take the dot. If somebody else gives you the dot, it doesn't count. Bad. No. But if you're getting the dot there, you've got all three of the British Isles and you've nearly accomplished no. your quest of being Russia, Turkey, and, uh, <laughs> and England. <laughs> They're in the North Sea. You don't have London. You were given London. It's not the same. You mm. must take London. If you can take the dot. Yes. But don't accept dots. You don't think That's that Germany would ever support... I, I feel like Germany would potentially support Russia into London here. Who cares? I need France to fight Germany, not me. Mm. I don't want them trying to retake London. They've got three fleets down there. I'm focusing on retaking Scandinavia. I'll retake Scandinavia, and if France leaves me alone in Liverpool and Eddie, I'm in love already. I don't need to try to get London. I'm already living on borrowed time right now. Fair point. Your London is not the place. Also, looking at it now, uh, you do actually, of course, need to cut north to make sure you get nor Norway. So, if you are going to go with the plan of, of getting London, then you have to not tap north, and then Germany almost certainly just supports old Norway anyway. <laughs> like, play like North Sea did here. Yes. Uh, so, so, yes, you are correct. <laughs> Although, I feel like you do want to take France down a peg here, right? Because they are a huge threat. They're becoming a huge threat because no one is opposing them. Yeah, Italy notably has shown really good restraint in the early game on pressuring France, and so there's a chance that'll happen again. But, look, I'm Russia, okay? Russia and France are allies. They're friends. They work so nicely together so much. And... Most of this game, Russia was trying to work with Germany, and we saw how that turned out. So I think this is, I, like, you can't, you gotta, Scandinavia, Scandinavia first, the Norway, Sweden, Denmark, St. Petersburg, then London. Yeah, fair enough. I do like that um, Russia did not trust France here just to do nothing. Oh yeah. You see Yorkshire to Wales is a huge move. 
because the attack that France would make if they were making an attack is likely convoy over to Wales here. Um, yep, and move up to the North Atlantic Ocean. That would be really scary. Sadly, this doesn't quite fully stop it because London could just support the convoy. But, yeah. but it is it's, something. <laughs> maybe London doesn't, right? Maybe London supports Eddie to North Sea. Maybe that's what he asked for. Um, and then London just didn't this turn, and maybe he, whatever. Yeah. I like the move, too. I think it's great. Now we can look at the South, where things are a little interesting. Yeah, South is super interesting. Um, so we see Austria attempt to support the Italian into Constantinople, so saying, yeah, okay, you have three units on this front, you're either grabbing Bulgaria or you're grabbing Constantinople, please just take it off the Russians, so we take him down and uh, and I can grab Sevastopol, Moscow, and Warsaw while he's, uh, while he's going down. Um, but Italy does not go for that. Italy sticks a fleet in Bulgaria again, which actually yeah. looks like it... So, it feels wrong... Putting fleets in Bulgaria always feels wrong. <laughs> well, not quite always, but most of the time it feels like they end up in a much worse spot than just being in Aegean, except for the fact that you gain the supply center. But in this situation, yeah. Russia only has the one unit on Turkey, so you can quite easily slide that into Constantinople if you want to. Um, yep. And of course... You gotta build... Yeah, get a build, and Tunis goes to the Ionian. So, something we haven't really been mentioning, because it's just been happening by default, is Italy and France bouncing in Western Mediterranean every turn. You note the turns that Italy moves away from Western Mediterranean, or does something else. It always seems to be agreed, right? <laughs> France yeah. never makes the move. So they have been very good at coordinating this uh, together thus far. Um, although yep. I have a feeling that Italy is not going to move the fleet much further away <laughs> just because they don't want to invite the French fleet down into Tunis. Um, yes, if this fleet moves up to Adriatic, for example, things get scary. Yes. Um, I expect it's going to stay in Ionian. You were talking about a convoy into Albania earlier in the game. I think we can expect to see something like that coming up. Either Albania or try to get one over to Smyrna, but I think Albania is the most likely. Do you think it's going to be uh, Army so... Naples built then? Yeah, I do. I think that makes sense. Uh, you don't need more fleets in this position. Although, I would be mildly afraid of the French player building a southern fleet and pivoting at some point. At some point, but not yet, I think. Mm. They probably have Look, lots of games. If France builds a fleet Marseille, then, like... With our army Naples, we, we get a little frustrated, but I'm not... I, I think France still wants to win the game, and I think they're going to try to grow from England and Germany first. Yep. Makes sense. Uh, and then the other things going on over here, Galicia is forced back into Romania. Like, they push that back to make sure the bounce doesn't work. Um, Bohemia moves into Galicia and bounces, so Austria very much on the back foot here, um, being the old one out in the south. Maybe saving grace, Berlin coming down to Cilicia to harass the Russian, if Austria is is outright on the, the like, is looking like they're going to be eliminated in the south, I think Germany would start harassing Russia just to stop it from happening. Um... But yeah, we, we'll see where that goes, I guess. <laughs> Not a nice position for Austria to be in. No, but it's hardly the worst, just due to the fleet and army count. Austria still is going to have five armies, and Russia and Italy currently only have four. If both of them build armies, then it gets weird, but I strongly suspect Russia is building an army in Moscow to ensure they recapture St. Petersburg. So... That would make um, sense. I don't think Austria is dying anytime soon. Yeah, that actually points back up to the north. Germany's position is horrible right now because of that. I mean, they're losing stuff, but they also the Russian builds here and they lose a lot more <laughs> very shortly. Yep, yeah, all of Scandinavia is looking pretty tenuous. Yep, and they've got to decide where to make uh, two dispens. I think. Yeah. So, anything else to talk about here, or shall we move to the winter? 
you want to see the disbands from Germany because these are really tough again. Because if you lose your fleets, you're giving up on Scandinavia. If you lose your armies, you're probably just losing your homeland. So I, I don't know what you could possibly disband here. I think you have to take off Army Kiel, right? It feels like the worst unit. And then maybe just Fleet St. Petersburg because there's no way you hold, you're holding that anyway. I think Fleet St. Pete 100%. Yeah. I think it is the most useless unit. And then and then what? Army Kiel is the least useful army for sure. Fleet Sweden, your Denmark, I don't know. If you go down to only two fleets, ah, it's so hard. I don't know. I think a fleet and an army. I think St. Pete Kiel. Yeah. I think I did it. All right. Uh, let's move ahead to the winter and see if you're correct. Cilicia. Okay, well, it's close. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, you're just saying, you know what, Russia? Look, we work together. I stabbed you, and it's Army Sev. It is Army Sev. That's curious. Is there negotiations during builds? No, there are not. These are. This is Rulebook Press, right? Uh, yes, indeed. They are not allowed to negotiate during uh, retreats or build phases. It all has to be done in the previous phase. So interesting that they managed to do this. That they did the Army Sevastopol build. It's possible that uh, Chris Brown and Russia just saw that the most likely the units come off with St. Petersburg and went, I don't need the extra unit here then. Right, I'm going to build the Army Moscow, so they're going to disband St. Pete, and if they're going to disband St. Pete, I don't need to build Army Moscow. Boom, easy, build Army Sev, and like, worst case, it takes an extra turn, I guess, so it's probably great. Yeah. Man, these people are so good. <laughs> Indeed. And it's Fleet Naples from Italy. Okay. I I love the army Marseille from uh, from France here. Yeah. That's got to have Italy just a tiny bit worried, right? I mean, not like what's it gonna do? It's not going to Italy, man. It's just gonna be supporting Burgundy or something. But Marseille is better than Paris. Yeah, but like, surely they can use it in combination with a swing around from the fleets to take. Uh, I mean, okay, I just noticed it's a fleet in Naples, not an army in Naples, so. Yeah, there's no way they that France can swing around and take anything. Uh, so yeah, it just is it's mildly threatening being in Marseille, I guess. Yeah, mm. the boogeyman. Yeah. No, you're right though. It's not going to do anything uh, against Italy, but. Now I'm looking at Fleet Naples and I'm thinking, is that the correct choice? It certainly is the correct choice if you want to keep France off your back. But it doesn't seem like the correct choice if you want to expand. How many do you think you have to win to have to win this game? That's a super interesting question. Uh, the viewers can't see the supply sense accounts right now. Um, they are just to the side of the screen, but sadly they don't fit on our view of this map um, because of the power rankings <laughs> but the current supply center counts are Russia in first on 8, then France Germany, Italy all tied on 7 and Austria on 5 uh, which if they all stay relatively even it could be like a 9 center win or an 8 center win I feel like it's more likely to be 9 or 10 right? that you would need and that's if no one runs away with it. Yeah, so in that case, I don't think you need to take much more than just the Mediterranean as Italy. You've got these centers in Turkey that are likely going to be yours at some point. And maybe you can slink something out of Spain or Portugal, snipe it near the end. Or maybe you can just get Trieste and Serbia or something. Yeah, I guess. You can just go all in on just getting Con and Ank and hope that that's enough. I... Or Trieste. Or right? Trieste. Trieste can still help but Trieste feels difficult right now because Austria has four on it. A <laughs> right? little bit, but also Russia's got an extra fleet in the south now. Uh, army in the south. Or, or, so Russia's got an extra army in the south now, and so, um, yeah, sorry. So it's unclear if Austria is going to be able to commit as much to defending Trieste as they need to. 
Fair enough. I think that army is an interesting one because it could also go to Armenia and attack Italy if Italy is threatening uh, Constantinople and such like. Um, yeah, that's true. Although it can't actually like take could... Smyrna if Italy gets into Constantinople <laughs> from yes, Bulgaria. Yes, I feel like if you were threatening those centers, you'd probably just build a fleet anyways to get into the Black Sea. Yeah, but that makes sense. The army is more versatile, so it's Maybe that's the point, is you can go after that first and then build a fleet later. I don't know. Like, as Russia, you need to not be too threatening again, because sneaky right rushes back to the highest supply center count. <laughs> um, yeah. And nobody's really attacking him, because all these disbands from McNamara are in the north, and so maybe you're going to just quietly walk back into it. So It's one of those things, I do wonder whether Russia can just pip the win just based on the fact that no one realizes what a, a high supply sense account they'll be on on the final turn, because it's so spread out everywhere. Um, they feel like they're in a position where they could snag a lot of one dots on the final turn if people are fighting each other and suddenly get the win, even if they get weakened a fair bit. Yep. But that's it's, four it's years in the future, possible. so... <laughs> yeah, we've got a long time between here and there. Uh, we do need to do power rankings. Yep. These are difficult. <laughs> um, yeah, because there's like only one center separating everybody. Yes. Um, I think Austria is definitely last. Yes, that would be my um, instincts as well. Yeah, Austria is not looking hot. There's too many builds around them. They don't have any growth. Um, they're disbanding. And they're Austria. Yep. It just makes me sad to think about what could have been if they had gone into Sevastopol, but we've talked about yeah. that too many times already. So Maybe it's just the German win. Uh, yes. So... so then, second place, <laughs> second to last, I guess. Like, my instinct is Germany, because Germany's just going to continue losing a little bit. France is strong and secure. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't feel great. I think France might be my pick for first again, just because no one's attacking France, and there's nothing to defend England if, like, there's only two units there, right? So if France chooses to attack and try to take Liverpool with a convoy into Wales and stuff, I think that's just all going to happen. Man, so, it feels I, so wrong to have France in first, just because this looks like a 1903 France. Quite a good 1903 France, but it is a 1903 oh, I mean, France, right? Yeah, but a 1903 France that's in London is, is like... That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a game that's a solo frequently. Right? Yes. And more than that, normally in 1903 France, there's England, who took Norway still, so there's going to be three units ready to defend and able to rebuild if, if anything happens, whereas these aren't that. Yes. And so... Also, like, the fleet in Middle Atlantic Ocean is way more advanced than a fleet in Marseille normally. It takes a full year to get that fleet there, but this one's already there. So, and what's important, right, is we're, we're finally nearing the actual end of the game, right? This ends in 19, in, in 16, right? Yes, end of 16. And so there's only four more years. Yep. Three more, right, or, yeah, four more years. Four and years. so everybody else can lose a lot of centers. Right? The seven centers, except for, I think, Italy. I think Italy's seven centers are pretty secure. Bulgaria is a little tenuous. Um, but Russia's are super tenuous. Germany's going to go down a little bit. Nobody else feels solid on their centers except for France. I don't see France losing anything else in the next four years. Yeah, I think that's fair. And what you mentioned about um, England not being England, so they can't rebuild the units, is actually doubly true because these... These units, because St. Petersburg is gone right now, and even if St. Petersburg gets retaken, that's going to take a year of going in and then removing the units so that you can get builds there in future. If France manages to remove any of these Russian northern units from the board, be that via force disband, which seems a bit difficult to do right now, but the other option is just if they get supply sensors off of Russia, or if anyone else gets supply sensors off of Russia, and Russia chooses to disband something in the north, those units are never coming back, right? They're never going to get back to Liverpool or Edinburgh. Not in four years of, of the game where one of those years has to be used retaking St. Petersburg um, just to get the build there. To start the builds going there, right? Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think I, I agree um, with your assessment here. France does seem like a good first pick, even though it's... 
<laughs> it just feels wrong after the rest of what everything that's gone on this game. The fact that France is suddenly in first place is amazing, but they have actually managed to pull it off. Um, and it's get the resilience of France, and that's great play. Like, so I'm interested. Yeah. You said that the other power who cannot uh, really lose that many centers is Italy. Does that mean Italy is in second place in your mind? I'm really torn between Italy and Russia for second, um, because I think Russia is more likely to win the game than Italy is, but Russia can also finish last. Yeah, like, I think Russia is like the most likely country to literally be eliminated before the end of the game, in the next four years. But also, Russia might just get Saint Pete, Sweden, Bulgaria, whatever, Romania. So, I, th I think I would put Italy ahead of Russia. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it again comes down to what exactly we mean when we say power rankings, which is always a little bit like, eh, we're not really... It doesn't have a strict definition. We're just saying who we think is the most powerful right now. And while Russia might have a better chance of winning, <laughs> their position is weaker. Um... I think there's that's definitely true. So, yeah, um, let's go with that then. So France in first place, Italy second, Russia third, uh, Germany fourth, and Austria fifth. Which amusingly is like <laughs> we've moved the bottom three from the last uh, power rankings up to the top, and the top two down to the bottom. Um, <laughs> it goes to show yep. what an incredible game this has been. And almost that's, I think that's because the top two were tied together, their face. The fact that Austria had that free access into Sevastopol that they could have gone for, but would have powered up Germany at the same time, meant that they had the choice of either narrowing the gap between the entire field or pushing themselves ahead, but Germany ahead even more. Uh, and they went for narrowing the entire field. And that's why we're seeing what we're seeing right now. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go ahead to the spring of 1913. Okay, well, first thing I noticed is North Sea is gone. Um, to France, no less. And Russia has moved uh, Wales back to Liverpool. So I guess this France-Russia alliance is actually pretty solid right now. Um... I'm a little surprised by that. I think that it, it might not actively be in their interest to be doing this, uh, to be working this closely together. At least Russia's interest not to power up France right now. Admittedly, Russia's gains do probably come from Germany, so you do want to knock them down a bit. But, as we've said, France is, like, the leader right now, so <laughs> it's, uh... It's important that France doesn't take Liverpool, though, and Eddie. Yeah. Um, as Russia, I'm, I would be quite afraid of France doing what we were describing, which is just saying, hey, England is weak, I can get these centers first and then make moves against Germany. Whereas the counter-argument is, hey, if you just take the North Sea, you're in the North Sea now, and now you might be able to take Holland. Not actually, because the way that the tapping and cuts work. But um, North Sea is a really powerful province. I'm getting supported in there. That's that's great. So yes. I, think, I, I think this is a good pitch from Russia because you want France to be not committing to killing you right now. You need a little bit of time. There's only, again, a couple more years left in this game, so if you can stall France for just a little bit, maybe you can hold on to Liverpool. Yeah, and while North Sea is insanely valuable, it's also a province that is going to have to be, like, it, it's probably going to get that fleet pinned down, right? it's, which is exactly what you want it to be uh, in this situation. Yeah, and there's more interaction between the North Sea and the French armies on the mainland than there is with France against Russia currently. 
Furthermore, Germany would potentially use it against Russia and Norway. So to have France in there instead, it's beneficial for Russia. Yep, that makes sense. And Russia obviously going plus St. Petersburg as well. Uh, pretty solid from them. And then uh, we scan down to the south and we see that Russia is flipping sides. <laughs> Moving down yeah. to Armenia with Sevastopol. Um, which it comes at exactly the right time because if you look at what's going on in the rest of that, Italy is making a concerted push for Constantinople right now. Um, yeah, which Austria and Russia managed to negate between them. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here because I think Constantinople falls anyway, right? It ends up being a bit of a guessing game. Um, because you can go for Smyrna, but then you can't defend Constantinople. Yeah, um, but then if, um, if Italy takes Constantinople, they might lose Bulgaria. Ooh, that's a good point. Uh, you would have to so, go in from Bulgaria, I guess, to guarantee. Yeah, like, if you attack Smyrna with Strength 2 this turn... From with ink and arm, then, um, like, Aegean would have to support Old Smyrna, right, to stop that from happening. And then, if you use Bulgaria to take Khan, then Greece can't support Hold Bulgaria, and so then Serbia, um, uh, Serbia plus Romania take Bulgaria. Yeah. So, there's, there, like, it's potentially that, like, Austria goes plus one. But as long as Russia attacks Smyrna with strength too, yeah, as long as they just move, make these moves, there's no way for um, for Russia to end up, like, it's just going to be Dots trading. I would be a bit worried that um, Italy just chooses to trade anyway and goes, okay, I want Smyrna in Constantinople, you can have Smyrna, but then I get Black Sea, right? Yeah, um, it's not as as clean because Russia is still gaining St. Pete. So if they trade, they might get a fleet in Sev. Ooh, that's a good point. Um, so Italy might still go... Oh, actually, no, they won't, right? Because... Oh, they know they still gain... Yeah, yeah, and never mind. No, so, yeah, it's probably not great. Yeah. It's tough. I don't know. I'm, I'm also a little bit surprised that um, they're doing this bounce in Galicia instead of uh, trying to get a unit into Albania from the Austrian. But I guess also, Russia was just at war with Austria <laughs> and stacking up units on their border, so this is fair. It just feels like Italy would be in a much worse position if Austria moved through to Albania here. Uh, it wouldn't be much worse, it would just be very defensive, right? As opposed to making progress against Constantinople. They would have to uh, order Ionian support, Greece, Aegean support, all. Well, no, because then they couldn't support <laughs> Smyrna. So it would have an advantage. Um, but yes, this is another thing of they're trying to sort out their trust and make sure that things are. that Russia has moved, uh, Austria is making sure Russia has moved before they commit fully. Yeah, and as you reach the end of the game, trust matters a lot less. Because it's just about being the biggest and winning. Yes. Um, but you still want to see the other person move away from your border before you make the move. Uh, of course, <laughs> of course, right? It, it, but that's not about trust, that's about their units are no longer able to take my centers. Yes. <laughs> well, to be fair, that so. makes it much easier to trust them. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't say I trust that they're literally incapable of making the attack. So yeah, fair enough. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about here? Um, not on this turn. No, we should see what's up in the fall. All right. Well, let's see what's up in the fall. Fall nineteen thirty. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, I guess that's why uh, Austria didn't immediately go into Albania. Russia is deciding to pivot again. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Yeah. I'm not sure I like this. <laughs> and then Russia also pivots back on France here. Ooh. And they lose Norway for it. Oof. 
I mean, to be fair, France also supported the move against Russia, right? So this is a double, uh, a mutual stab. Yeah. Um, and I get it, right? Like, it looks like France can't gain against Germany right now. And so it looks like a convoy is coming. And so I think they expected English Channel to be convoying something into Wales, presumably. So try to cut, um, bounce that convoy and try to get North Sea as compensation. But instead, France didn't do that and is staying solid on seven and is presumably thinking they can get up to like nine and win the game that way. Yeah. This is quite painful for Russia because it means they don't get that build. Um, and quite... Uh, I mean, it's very nice for Germany <laughs> because they're not... They now have two people working with them, at least for one turn, um, and they get a build out of it. Uh, no, they don't get a build out of it because they lose St. Petersburg. Um, but they don't get a disband. And... I mean, it still looks like a very nice situation for France to me. It's so hard to tell who's coming out on top in this. This is probably the most difficult game I've had to uh, take a look at on that front. Um, ever? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just think this is like the hardest game to analyze. You've ever yes. Asked, which is why I always ask you for your power rankings opinions first, because then I can offload that responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So in the South, we have this massive pivot back from Russia. What are your thoughts on it? I, I'm not a huge fan, because I think this means Italy is going to be too powerful. Um, essentially. Like, I think we were already looking at Italy as being quite strong. And as a result of us no longer pressuring Italy, I expect they will gain more than we will. And I also think that this is essentially conceding our Turkish dots eventually. Sooner rather than later. And so I'm really worried about yeah, us losing us losing Khan, and then Ink shortly thereafter. Um, I 100% agree. I, I wonder whether Russia thought that Austria was going to make like a YOLO play into uh, Mos into Ukraine to try and go for Moscow and Warsaw and such. But it's... <sighs> yeah, that's reasonable. This might have been more defensive and then it's being it's going to end up going poorly. Yes. Because if Austria had seen, hey, there's only fleets here, I can move um, into Ukraine and Galicia, I can still be support holding um, Trieste from Serbia, so I don't need anything over in the west. Maybe they could do something aggressive to try to win, because they are at five and it's tough for them to get the win, so maybe that's the play that he countered. And this, this ends up just being with, oops, now there's a bunch of units on my Austrian border, so we have to try to take centers from them. But right, you don't you don't really get anything because you can only really go after Romania right now, and Romania, right, you can't take it. So yes, um, you you are absolutely going to lose Constantinople next turn, right? There is no way Italy doesn't go for this. It's just free. <laughs> it's a complete freebie. Um. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I completely agree. I think this is painful um i i almost wish that austria had attacked because if they had you would still be in a decent position <laughs> and the fact that they didn't now means that uh yeah russia is going to lose the turkish dots anything else you want to talk about here Uh, hmm, talk about the north, talk about the south, I think we're good. Yeah, it is just like there were just two real areas where things happened, and that was kind of it. <laughs> Alright, winter 19... Oh, there isn't a winter. No one changed uh, supply center yeah, counts. Yeah, I didn't notice that either. Whoops. Spring 1914. Uh, well... 
I am seeing that I was absolutely incorrect to say that Italy would automatically go for Constantinople. They are instead moving to Albania and Adriatic to try and get position on Trieste. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I like this very much. I think this is fine. They're going to take Trieste, and they're going to be able to take Khan anyways. Are they going to take Trieste? The, there are the units to defend Trieste. It's just a case of Austria having to decide which side to defend against, right? Yeah, I think they're going to take Trieste. Mm. The, I also kind of dis I would not want to make this move, because it's a... like. If Mid Atlantic had just not moved out of Mid Atlantic, then France also just has a free run into Tunis, right? Yep, that's true. But I they they've been working together and communicating the entire game very effectively, and so I think both of them recognized if they don't do this, neither one if they both just like move their fleets and then they bounce around Tunis, neither one of them can win. It's going to probably be Russia or Germany. And so they kind of, at this point, they both say, look, we, we both can gain with our actual fleets here. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm just, I'm trying to work out whether that Mid-Atlantic Ocean fleet in Irish is actually important. I feel like it's not. It doesn't look like it's going to gain Liverpool, right? It just looks like it's a good unit for maybe pushing Wales out of Wales, but it doesn't make the gain. So I don't like moving up to Irish Sea, and I think if Italy had come up to me and said something about, hey, can we demilitarize Ionian and Mid-Atlantic, I would have gone, yeah, yeah, we absolutely can, and then I would have kept it there. <laughs> um, but again, perhaps this is why I'm, I, I wouldn't be in this situation in the first place, where I had the trust required to uh, do this kind of thing. I think that one supply sensor of Tunis could be super important for deciding who the winner is of this game. But then any one supply sensor at this point is going to be super important. <laughs> also, I will look like a moron if uh, France actually manages to take Liverpool with this fleet. Yeah, I think this fleet's taking Liverpool, I agree. Hmm. Uh, do you... So there's a fair bit going on in the north, but it is primarily just... Uh, so, I don't understand what <laughs> uh, Germany is doing with the random taps on Belgium. I suppose it's just making sure that Ruhr doesn't get taken, but at the same time, that's... They could have just thrown a support hold. Oh, I guess North Sea is to make sure that um, North Sea isn't supported into Holland, right? Yes, yeah, cutting all of this is the best possible defensive moves, um, because, yeah, exactly. Yep, makes sense. I always kind of miss North Sea when it's there, <laughs> at least in these commentaries, uh, because I'm always thinking, oh yeah, you have to hold the North Sea, of course you have to hold the North Sea, North Sea is super important, but the North Sea could theoretically just go to Holland and grab the SC. Um, Especially when English Channel is stuck not being able to move. Yes. Um, like, North Sea isn't going to get anywhere, so what's it? what else is it going to do? You might as well take the uh, short-term advantage. In this case, North Sea was trying to support Norwegian into uh, Norway, but Russia is not uh, sticking with France either. They are going back, which I think is a sensible play. Um, <laughs> right now they have to defend their British uh, gains. So, yeah, that is kind of it. The big question, I think, looking forward is going to be who does Austria defend against right here? If they choose to defend against Italy, that's a huge boon to Russia. If they choose to defend against uh, Russia, that's a huge boon to Italy. In fact, actually, I think it's a boon to Italy either way because worst case for Italy is that Russia gains Romania and then Italy grabs Constantinople in retaliation. Um, although that's not guaranteed depending on what Austria chooses to do. Yeah, if Austria chooses to throw Romania and only hold against Trieste, then Russia might just get there. But there's enough time left. I think they can react. But I don't know, it's tough. Yeah, well, uh, shall we go to the fall? Let's see it. 
All right, full 1914. Um, they do choose to put everything into defending Trieste, which means that Romania goes. Italy committing four units onto this front and not getting anything out of it. But they do <laughs> take they, the, still get con. they take the opportunity to grab Con before anything else is going on, which is absolutely the right move, right? They have guessed uh, guessed one hundred percent correctly here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If they had not done this, then Russia gets the build off of this. Um, Russia has the unit in Romania to try and defend itself in Constantinople. Um, yeah, it's probably fleet and stuff even to make matters worse. Yeah. So, Maybe an army to get into Armenia, but whatever. Point is, it's really tough if they don't make this move right now. So I, I think it's perfectly timed. Yep, huge move from Italy there. Um, that's kind of everything there is to talk about in the East. Everything is focused around these Austrian supply centers right now, and Constantinople, there is <laughs> such a conglomeration yep. of armies here. It also goes to show, like, there is nothing on the... Anywhere on the line between east and west anymore. There was that one. There was the moment where everything clashed together in the middle after Germany got huge, and then people backed off, and nothing has refilled those spots ever since. Um, it's interesting to see the separation that's going on, and I think it's absolutely advantaging everyone who's taking part in that separation <laughs> because they have to focus on a. a you know, if they were on two fighting on two fronts here, they would be far worse off than they are right now. Uh, so we have to look at the north as well, which is a chaotic mess of arrows. Um, so yeah, chaotic mess of arrows, but it doesn't seem like particularly much it happened. Yeah, it seems like very little happened. Irish Sea got supported into Wales, um, and Clyde which was moving into Liverpool, anyways. And, and Clyde is the North Atlantic Ocean. And that's the entirety of the successful movement of this phase. Um, Edinburgh tried to support Denmark to Yorkshire. Uh, Germany, that would have succeeded, but Germany is convoyed into London instead. Perhaps yeah. thinking that that was a guess uh, they could take. I suppose they thought London might be moving into Yorkshire or something. To drive and bounces, yeah. But yes, they end up getting that wrong, um, which is actually quite sad for them. A, a successful convoy across, I think, could have been huge here. Maybe not huge. I They wouldn't have gotten all that much out of it, but it's certainly a better unit to have than Army Denmark right now. Um, yeah, I say that, but Army Denmark can go Sweden, Finland, and then grab St. Peter's back. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of nuance right now with what people can do in the remaining time in the game. But yeah, so uh, what I do want to say here is I think I was correct in saying that Middle Atlantic Ocean would have been better staying where it was. Irish Sea getting into Wales doesn't feel like it's helped a great deal. Um, and now they need to cover Middle Atlantic Ocean anyway because Russia just got into North Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, it's slightly more defensive of London to have this fleet in Wales instead of Irish Sea, but it's not really getting much. Um, and yeah, the English Channel has probably got to cover because if Russia gets in the mid Atlantic, it's really scary. Yep. Feels bad because you're just moving back, but I also. You can't lose the mid Atlantic Ocean. It's way too punishing. Yeah, I mean. Maybe this late in the game it's okay, because the worst case is it takes Portugal and then you can just bounce it out of Spain forever. But that's taking a huge gamble on the number of supply centers you'll need to win, because one fewer is, is like in, really important in this situation, especially when you're not advancing. Um, I think France is kind of pinned on 7 now. I don't see how they get to 8. Unless uh, people change sides. <laughs> yeah. Um, shall we move ahead to the winter? Is there anything else you want to talk about here? Poor Italy. How sad. Only plus one. <laughs> 
It is. Well, I mean, it's such an important plus one on Constantinople. Um, so, shall we... shall we see where they put that plus one? Yeah, yeah. Now we can go look at it. Okay. Winter <laughs> fleet Naples. I've never seen someone win a top board with ten fleets. The this is a unique Italy strat. Build all fleets and never go west. Um, doesn't make sense, but it does here. <laughs> it's it's kind of working. If everyone else is capped at seven, <laughs> then it can win the game, I guess. Uh, yeah, but that's a I huge just gamble think... to take. Yeah, I mean, look—if Russia never gets a fleet in the Black Sea, you can't lose Bulgaria, right? You're not you're not gonna lose Bulgaria at least. You can have guesses in con. Oh no, this is a house of cards because Russia is not going to kill Austria for a little bit until they think they can get more than you. Uh oh. I wonder if. Yeah, if Russia backs out and goes back round to Armenia slash Syria, it could fall apart. It feels like that might take too long. Um, yeah, because then Ionian gets into Aegean by the time Ukraine reaches Armenia. Yeah. And... This is why the fleet is necessary instead of an army. The only other attack they can they can really mount on you is supporting Serbia into Bulgaria, but even then, then you just that loses Trieste, Trieste, right? Yeah, so it it does feel like this is secure for the moment. But then you're not getting anything extra. Right? Yeah, you're not you're not going up. You've got eight centers, and right now that's tied for first with Russia, who is also on eight, with France and Germany but on Russia seven. Russia can probably get something, right? But yeah, if Russia manages to pick up anything anywhere, that is not enough. <laughs> I mean, relying on eight centers for a board top is, is so risky. <laughs> but then I don't disagree with this fleet build. I... It feels like you kind of have to put this fleet on the board to defend Tunis in case uh, in case France goes to defend Mid Atlantic Ocean and Russia doesn't bounce them out, right? Uh, maybe that's not the case because if uh, France defends Mid Atlantic Ocean like that, and Russia doesn't bounce them out. They still need to hold Mid Atlantic Ocean to make sure that Russia doesn't get in, unless Russia yeah, moves away. You you just have to be defending it. And so if, if, yeah, if you can get North Atlantic Ocean and Norwegian Sea, you have a lot more flexibility, of course. But... Okay, here's my pitch for a French play right now. Um, okay. If you assume that there is some possibility that Russia doesn't bounce you out of Mid-Atlantic Ocean, you're moving English Channel back to Mid-Atlantic Ocean to defend, because you kind of have to, uh, but they think that pulling your fleet out of English Channel actually helps them, which I think is a possibility here. Um, they might just want your fleet out of there. Then you also move Marseille to Gascony. And then you can defend Mid Atlantic Ocean and convoy... Uh, if Italy hasn't built this fleet, right? Then you can convoy Gascony to North Africa and grab Tunis as a last minute um, thing to get you over the line. I love it. I love it. I love Marseille to Gascony in conjunction with English Channel to Mid-Atlantic. Your army Marseille is not doing anything. You don't need it for Burgundy, really. I don't think Germany's going after Burgundy. So, yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, but it, it doesn't work with this uh, fleet build in Naples. <laughs> well, I think we can expect Naples to be moving into Ionian. And then... Do you, I think you need to keep it in Gascony for a little bit. You need to be support holding Burgundy and then be using Mid-Atlantic Ocean to be doing other stuff. Maybe trying to convoy Gascony up into Liverpool or Wales or something, and then boom, you just bring it back down to North Africa next year. I, I think that's a really good point. Mm. But yeah, uh, but I I don't think it works here. I think that Italy has too many fleets and they're going to cover it with something. <laughs> it is like it's well, a play that only works if you don't have anything that's uh, that would. Um, if the other power doesn't have anything at all to defend, because you're only committing one unit to taking it, right? And it's not like that unit can even do anything else if it doesn't take it. It just gets stuck in North Africa. Um, so you kind of need an assurance that there won't be anything in Ionian or Turanian when you do it. 
though, I mean, I'm not sure that we're necessarily only going to take it with the one unit. I think if we convoy the armor to North Africa, we are committing to back it up by moving Mid-Atlantic Ocean into Western Bed. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that is true. You do need North something. Africa keeps tapping, so the Ionian bottleneck is there because it has to keep blocking Tunis, and when it doesn't, then okay, you walk in, or he moves to Trenian, and then you just take Tunis and you hold it for the rest of the game. So, that I makes think that sense. is the <laughs> There we go. We've landed on a, a good solution between us here. Um, well, well, we'll see whether they go for that, I guess. Uh, we've got power rankings to do this phase. Who do you think is most likely to win this game? We're in the final two years. I think this power rankings isn't uh, going to be like who's the most powerful anymore. It is just who do you think is most likely to win this game through to least likely to win this game. I mean, I'll take one of them out of the equation immediately. Austria is in last place. <laughs> the, so that Austria is, is not uh, winning this game. That is uh, definite. Um, it's interesting. You see king makers in these kind of games quite often on top boards. Here we've only got the one left, and everyone else I think has a pretty decent shot at getting that win because it's eight eight seven seven. Um, I think France has the worst chance remaining. Right. Do you want to explain in, that? In only two years, I don't see France gaining more than one center. There's right. too much British defense, right? Russia has three units there to defend the northern centers in England. Um, Germany's on lockdown. You're not going to get into Holland, Brewer, Munich. You don't have the North Sea anymore, and Germany's not going to let it go. Where do you get your next thought? Yeah, Eight dots yeah. is not enough to win. You can maybe get Tunis, but you can't get to nine. Therefore, France cannot win. France is out. I, I think I agree. Um, it's important to note also France was the first pick on power selection, so they lose every tiebreak, um, which is quite important when you're looking at one sense of gaps, right? <laughs> Tunis yeah, this is kind of their only bet for an expansion. I agree completely. Uh so France second to last. That leaves uh, Germany, Italy, Russia. I think it's going to come down to Italy or Russia, and it's going to come down to who Austria chooses to support. Okay. So you're putting Germany in third place then? Yes. Okay. I... <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the exact tiebreak order was. Um, I feel like I had it somewhere listed in our chats. Let me... Okay. So the tiebreak order. Um, Austria wins all tiebreaks. Doesn't matter, of course. Turkey was next. Also out. Germany next. So Germany wins tiebreaks against any other player on this board. Um, then Italy. Uh, then Russia. And then France. Um, as the... So France is the lowest tie break. They lose every tie. Uh, and again, only because this game is ending in two years. I love the French position if we were to expect this game to continue going on for a couple more years, but only two years is just not enough time. You have to get thoughts, and there's just not enough thoughts for France to gain easily. Yes, I agree. Um, so yes, considering that tie break order, we've got Germany top in tie break, uh, Italy next, then Russia. Um, who do you view as the best... Uh, chance of winning here. And you, you've mentioned it would be whoever Austria throws to. Let's assume Austria doesn't throw to anyone. Who do you uh, uh, favor? Is France allowed to throw to Germany? Uh, I guess France could. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and say we're assuming no one is going to throw to anyone when we're doing this power ranking. Because, like, sometimes it's obvious that someone is going to throw to someone else if they've been care-bearing all game or something. But this game, at the end of this, <laughs> I think it, it's not obvious that anyone here is going to throw or king-make, even if they don't have okay. a chance themselves. Okay, I'm going to roll a six-sided dice on a one or a two, Germany... <laughs> on a three or four, Italy on a five or a six, Russia. Okay. Okay, go for it. Um, you're rolling the dice now. And it was a one. I believe that was Germany. I think that was Germany, yes. So I will put Germany in first place. <laughs> uh, 
If we're putting Germany in first place, should I just put them in the tiebreak order? Yeah. So Germany has the best tiebreak, then Italy has the second best tiebreak, and uh, Russia has the... Th Wait, is that right? Yeah. Russia has the third best tiebreak. Um, and then France has the worst month, one among the players who can still win. So there's That's our good. power rankings. We have Germany in first place, determined by the exceedingly uh, accurate power of Ezio's coin. Not Ezio's coin, Ezio's dice. Um, Italy in second, uh, determined by the also accurate prediction power of tiebreak order. Uh, Russia in third, and France in fourth. But really, this is so close, it's impossible to tell between those top three, I think. And even then, France could still win if something happens with uh, the annoys Germany, perhaps, or annoys Russia, and ends up making them want to throw. Yeah, but again, I think that's not likely to happen at this stage in the game. Yeah. Uh, shall we go ahead to Spring 1915? Yeah, let's see it. Alright, 1915. Italy in the Black Sea. <laughs> Okay, so Austria remains defending against Italy, and Russia is attacking Italy as hard as possible. All right, Ukraine to Sevastopol, we expect to go to Armenia, pressure on Smyrna, but Italy made it into the Black Sea. Yes. Oh. Was it always the best place to go into the Black Sea? I, I guess maybe not if they thought that um, Bulgaria was going to get attacked by two, but uh, yeah. this I think this was an excellent play there. Um, getting into Black Sea pins everything down. Although it probably won't make any gains <laughs> from what I can see. Um, uh, shall we talk about what's going on in the West? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I love this attempted convoy into Yorkshire. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I love it, but it didn't work. So interestingly, they, it looks like it was misordered anyway. North Sea convoys Den Denmark to Liverpool, uh, which is oh. why the Russian unit got into Yorkshire. Um, but it wouldn't have worked regardless because it would have been bounced out right by the Russian attack. Uh, got it. Oops. But I think you're correct that it, it's a it's a good move here. It's the chance for. Uh, for Germany to manage to get one, right? Which is exactly what they want to do. Um, they they need to find it somewhere. Failed, to it's tough. Yes. Because now Russia is the one pressuring Norway. You kind of need to be holding on with Skag. And suddenly and you're on that the scary. Of... Yeah, so like Denmark can walk into Sweden and Finland, but we can't get there in time anymore. All right, remember when I said I loved the convoy into Yorkshire? I'm kind of hating it now. <laughs> well, I mean, it didn't work, yeah, so therefore... It's... Liverpool's always going to Yorkshire, right? What else is Liverpool... Oh, no, I'd have to hold! No, yeah. Because Wales is... Wales is there, no, this was... I'm back to loving it. All right, back to loving it. Yep, 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 we're good, we're good. Yeah. Good move. Uh, <laughs> I'm a huge fan. Huge fan. Yes, I think this, uh, this disengagement between France and, um, and Russia has benefited both of them quite a lot. Uh... Being able to pull uh, English Channel back to Middle Atlantic successfully and have no immediate threat on London that can actually take London. Um, plus, for Russia, they they now have a good threat on Norway. Um, yeah, and if um, they can get into North Sea, then they can take Skag and they're guaranteed to take Norway or cut Skag. Or even just getting France into North Sea, there's a chance then that France can get into Holland or something. So. Yeah. Probably not, though. Almost certainly not, in fact. Yeah, there's no way that's going to happen. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, actually, looking at this, I think France should have gone Wales to Liverpool if they knew this was happening. Um, I mean, if France knew the moves that Russia had put in here, yeah, I think France, like, absolutely oh, actually, just walks into the North Atlantic Ocean. Never mind, because it only Liverpool only went because of the missile. To, so you would have to know. Yeah, that. but London could have supported it. Oh, yes. Ooh, that would have been a fun one. <laughs> uh, support Liverpool out to Yorkshire, grab Liverpool behind. Um, and then, like, Convoy Pickardy to Wales, maybe? Yeah. That would have seemed like a solid one. 
Um, but they do have the chance on Tunis potentially now. Uh, they can go uh, Mid Atlantic to Western Med, maybe pull English back to Mid Atlantic if they're feeling bold. Yeah, it's just that again. We're we're just praying here. Yes. I, I like getting the convoy much more because I want to keep two fleets and I want to take it with an army and a fleet because it's just less committal. But at this point, and even still, they're they're only getting the one and they only get up to eight. And as we've established with tiebreaker, they can't win with eight. So I don't, I don't think this is gonna. I don't think it matters really. Yeah. All right. Well. Um, anything else to talk about here? I feel like that kind of covers everything that's going on right now. <laughs> uh, I think we can go to the fall. Yeah, let's go to fall nineteen fifteen. Ooh. German pullback into barons. That's an interesting one. I think that's actually really smart. That is the one center that they have a chance of taking right now uh, without having to give up Norway, or potentially give up Norway. Just put pressure on St. Petersburg. As much as possible, yeah. Man, Russia must be really hating the fact that they moved Norwegian out now. Yeah, when France didn't go after Wales and Liverpool, um, like we were so worried about, France just didn't. And so now Norwegian decline looks really bad because you don't need any more units over there. Yes. And now St. Petersburg is lost. Yeah, otherwise you would have a guest to keep St. Petersburg. But now you have to rely on French assistance to... Uh, Why would France ever do that? Um, French maybe... is the North Sea. They can maybe take Holland, right? Yeah. Yeah, France is, always, maybe... France is always going to prioritize their own growth here, obviously. Um, they have to try and get to that winning point. I think they probably want to keep Germany down just because Germany has the best... Well, I say Germany has the best tiebreaker, but actually uh, <laughs> Russia also beats France on the tiebreaker. Everyone beats France on the tiebreaker, so that doesn't matter at all to France, right? <laughs> um, I would assume so. Yeah, so we end up having... Um, Oh my god. Did I? Yeah, are you looking at Black Sea right now? <laughs> yeah, I just left it smeared out of Ankara. I also just saw that. Did he forget that he's only built fleets? <laughs> That's not an army. That can't do that. That's why that move failed. He could have lost Constantinople and not taken Ankara at the same time. Oh god. Man, this one... So, with knowing that Italy has done this, if Russia moves to Constantinople here, I think it might just blow up Italy's chances of winning the game. Maybe. Thankfully, it didn't happen, we didn't know, and this is more reasonable. But what I think is super interesting and telling is that we've seen two misorders in the last two turns, and I think these are actually clear misorders. I don't think um, Denmark to Yorkshire ever gets... Like, I don't think there's any intentional for that and we just saw Smyrna to Ankara, right, with the fleet, which isn't necessarily a misorder, but we really see the nerves. Yes. Just even these fantastic champion players just at the end of the game with everything on the line um, are just freaking out. Yep. This is, I think, so, I actually, I can't remember whether this was the case in the final as well, um, but in the semi-final rounds, once they hit 1912, the timer went down from 15 minutes to 10 minutes. Uh, to speed up the rest of the game. It may have been the case in this one as well, in which case that would explain this to some extent as well. Um, yeah, you lose just a little <laughs> bit of checking time. You lose the checking time, and like this is the biggest game of the year. This is huge. There's a huge amount of pressure, and there are four people in contention. This is like the closest game that's <laughs> being played in the yeah. year. <laughs> yeah, people are going to be under extreme pressure right now. And forgetting that Smyrna as a fleet is potentially one of those things that's... Uh... And what's crazy is this was, I think, the first year in the game no supply centers changed hands. Oh yeah, nothing nothing went anywhere. I think we had one of those earlier where we skipped the build phase, right? Um, yes. And we were surprised by it because all of the others had just been by default something. <laughs> so so was, it, was it that no supply centers changed hands or was it just that it ended up being neutral? 
Uh, maybe it was just neutral. I don't know. I don't. Oh yeah, no, no supply centers changed hands. This was in fall of 1913. There were no, no supply centers changing hand. Uh, so this is the second time in the game, but it goes to show that it has been an intense game. <laughs> that every year there has been progress made by someone or, or another up until this final time where everyone is scrambling. Um, yeah. I think the move of this year is Norway to Barents, or at least the move of this phase, even. Um, yeah. That is... I mean, it, it really only threatens... It threatens one center, right? But that one center could win Germany the game. Uh, Unlikely, but potentially. Well, I mean, so... Germany has the tiebreak over the other powers, right? They have seven centers now. If they get up to eight and no one else gains a center, then they win. Um, so it could, it could make it. <laughs> it could make the difference. Uh, it's, it might. It might. It certainly might. Absolutely. Absolutely, that's true. All right. So we're gonna skip winter here. I assume I didn't see anything yeah. get disbanded. Uh, shall we move to spring? Yeah. All right. Spring 1916. St. Petersburg off the board. Germany goes up one. And now we see it. Italy is going to get Ankara. Italy convoys into Smyrna and gets Smyrna to Constantinople. Oh, that is huge. Yeah. And Ankara misguessed here. If Ankara taps Smyrna, then no problems. But instead, it didn't. Yeah. I mean, they're. Is this, there is still a guess even if they uh, bounce Smyrna out? Because they have to either defend Ankara with Armenia or defend Sevastopol. Um, but this still is a guess. now... True. But guess is better than guaranteed, and this is guaranteed. This is a guarantee, so this means that Italy is 100% going plus Ankara, which takes them up one and will put them on nine centers, assuming they don't lose anything. Is there a chance that they lose there's, there's no, because Adriatic supports Venice, and Aegean attacks Bulgaria with support from Greece. Uh, can Aegean do that without risking uh, the, the retreat into... Wait, no, there's no retreat. Black Sea okay. supports Khan into Ankh, Smyrna supports Khan into Ankh. Oh no, but then if we go with that order set only, then Armenia can support Ankh into Smyrna. Right. Oh, it is kind of a guess here, yes, if they are using a GM for something else. So, does it come down to Austria here? Because the, the threat is if uh, Russia gets support into Bulgaria, right? And that support has to come from Serbia. Yeah, I think Austria can threaten a guess. Yes. Um, and then the, so the other things that are happening, if you look in the north here, actually, I, I didn't even look at France's moves, because we haven't been really considering France as a massive threat to win, but they did just walk into Liverpool and Edinburgh. Um, yes. Which is huge. <laughs> uh, if they gained both of those, that would put them on nine. Um, but they also lost London at the same time. Yep. <laughs> Well, okay, so Russia is definitely out of contention right now, right? There is no way... Russia has Russia... lost. They've lost St. Pete. They're going to probably lose Ankh. They're down another one in the British mainland. Russia's out. Yes. Uh, so even if Russia is fighting back against Italy in the south, and we're saying that everything relies on... It is based around whether Russia is getting Bulgaria or whatever in this guess, what Russia can do there is give Germany or France the opportunity to win instead of Italy. I think. Um, so, <laughs> it's a weird kind of kingmaker situation, where in this case, I think I would, um, as Russia, probably still try to do that, because it's putting me on the most number of sensors that I can get. So I wouldn't really classify it as kingmaking. I would be trying to play for my best uh, ending. Yeah, very reasonable. Uh... I want to see if France has a chance, if that's the case. Um, France goes up to eight here. Can they retake London? No. Yes. Yes, they can, because they can cut Yorkshire with Edinburgh. But then that's a guess. Yeah, and then I think, like, 
there might be risking something else. Maybe not. Because uh, the army's in London. It's a fleet in Yorkshire. Maybe they can't actually do anything else. Yeah, I think they, they risk Edinburgh by attacking London, but that's where the gas comes in. Belgium is secure, right? Um, because Germany played defensively this turn. Amusing, interestingly, if Germany had supported themselves into Burgundy this turn, I think Germany actually just wins? <laughs> Um, um, wait, they don't take, uh, they get Belgium. Which would put them on 9, right? Which is even with Italy, but they have the tiebreak. Wait, not necessarily. North Sea cuts Holland, right? Oh, okay, yes. Picardy still supports uh, um, Belgium. Oh, but then you have a guess, right? Burgundy can still go to Paris. So you have a guess. They have a guess for 9. Okay. Germany does. But yeah, uh, so <laughs> this is all... Man, so that that's like beside the point because Germany didn't end up doing that, and I think this move set from Germany is super reasonable as well. I don't think you expect as aggressive an ending as this is from uh, France. I don't understand to why. Somehow, right? Yeah, I don't understand why Russia didn't block anything with Clyde. Um, were they thinking no one would be like nothing would attack them here, and so they were keeping it in a position where it could defend both, maybe? If yeah, exactly. If France only takes one of the two of them this turn, then Clyde can react to both. Yes, that makes sense. Whereas if you actually try and cover um, one of the two and you guess wrong, then suddenly you've moved out of position, and therefore yeah. you can't... Uh, yeah. So that makes sense, but France read that perfectly and managed to get into both of these. Um, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> this is the position we're in. It seems like Russia has to convince Austria to help them into Bulgaria in order for anyone except Italy to win this game. Um, but that won't be Russia or Austria if they do that. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely intense finish. Shall we see the final phase? Yeah, I guess Italy gets it, right? Well, uh, let's go ahead and see. Fall 1916. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Austria does not help the Russian. And actually, so, if Austria had helped the Russian, they would have gained Bulgaria here, which would have taken yes. uh, Italy down to 8, eight right? which would have been even with Germany, and therefore Germany would have won. But, I, I mean, I think it's totally fair for Austria to just go, no, I'm going to take an extra centre here, because that's that puts me on the best ending, right? It's like, you're asking me to choose who wins. I don't want to choose who wins. Um, In a way, which chooses who wins. Yes. <laughs> they have to choose who wins, regardless. But, uh, this is a fine way. But, it's a very reasonable decision. The most justifiable. Yes. And, I mean, absolutely amazing play all around, I think. What does uh, France end up on here? They manage to get Liverpool, they gain London, they lose Edinburgh, so they go up to eight? Yeah, plus one. Uh, Germany also ends on eight, and Italy just pips them both on nine. Um, I will... Uh, do you want to talk about... I feel like we already discussed pretty much all of these moves on the previous phase, because they were the possibilities, right? Yeah, there was a slightly different tactical approach to the... Um... Turkish situation that we were looking at. Um, they just had a G and cover Smyrna. Yes. Um, rather than taking from Khan. But, like, they could have taken from Khan and support held Smyrna, which have had the same effects. But this works, too. Yeah. Uh... Yep. I think that is... Well, that is the game. I will go ahead and move on to Winter 1916 so we can see the final position here. And the final supply center count, Italy 9, Germany 8, France 8, Austria 5, Russia 4. So actually, Russia goes down below Austria on the very final turn of this game, which obviously doesn't... It's not much of a difference, because this is winner takes the title, right? The person who comes in first is the only important position. Um, but it is interesting to see that that was exactly what we were talking about earlier with the Russian position being like the one most likely to be eliminated by the end of the game, because something like this can happen in one year. They just lose everything. Um, 
and completely yeah. implode. But yeah, massive congratulations to Brandon Fogel in Italy there, winning what I think was probably the best played game I've ever seen of Diplomacy all around. Um, yeah. I've seen games where someone has played an in absolutely incredible game and dominated. I've seen games that have been a back and forth uh, one where multiple people have done incredibly well. I don't think I've ever seen one where everyone in the game was playing their hearts out to this extent and playing at this kind of level. And this is exactly the kind of ending that like, I love <laughs> from that yeah. one that so many different powers had a chance. I love to see it at this high of a level at the final tournament, the biggest board. Yes. This is great. So it makes me kind of wish they could have a setup where they didn't have an end date. Because I feel like so much of this game got warped by this end date. But watching <laughs> these people play diplomacy without an end date to just say, hey, keep going until somebody wins. Again, it's it's just so difficult to do that for live events because you need people to commit to playing for... It already takes hours and hours. You can't expect them to set aside an entire weekend plus nights and stuff because who knows how long the game might last. But I feel like these people could play forever because they did such a good job constantly balancing the game. Yes. Well, I mean, okay, so you say you wish they could do that. Have you not learned your lesson from 30 hours of our coverage of that one no, game where they decided I haven't. to do that? Right? Because if we could see a 100-year game played at this level for 100 years, yeah, I'd talk about that game for 50 hours. Yes, okay, that is fair enough. I think the 100-year games had some very good players in them, but they weren't quite at this level. Um... This is... there, there was a huge disparity in skill in the 100 year game for sure. And yes. this one was just. Everyone was playing amazingly. Would be incredible to see. Uh, so, previous DBNIs didn't have an end date, I think. Uh, which. But they also didn't have the semi final format where everyone who came in was a board top of themselves. Uh, so, they didn't have the same kind of dynamic you had here where everyone was. No one really trusted one another, right? <laughs> everyone knew that everyone else had gotten there by being the... Well, by not being a Care Bear, right? <laughs> by taking advantage of everyone else. And therefore everyone was super, uh, super hyper aware of how threatening everyone else was. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it shows they selected good players in the invitational rounds. And then when you have a bunch of players that are a good diplomacy board, the people who win tournaments of diplomacy are going to be pretty good diplomacy players. And then you put all of these together specifically, and you just get the hyper distill. I think they did a fantastic job with this. Yes. Uh, so do you want to say anything else about the game here, or shall I uh, lead us out? I think you can lead us out. All right. Well, I did want to say, uh, once again, many thanks to everyone over at the Diplomacy Broadcast Network for saying okay to us covering this game. They already had a lot of coverage on this game, and you can go and see their video in the link in the description if you want to watch, I think, another seven hours of coverage if you haven't had enough of this game. It does include sideline commentary on what happened. Uh, and once again, huge thanks to them for putting on this tournament and for bringing these this level of players together. Absolute pleasure to commentate. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.